chat how's it going how are my npcs doing in chat today we've got some robots 
Hopefully not. Hopefully you're all real, okay? I always struggle with this, my sense of, you know, reality, whether I'm talking to uh, real people out there, which is my preferred mode of operations, or whether I'm dealing with uh, dream characters, uh, as, as once happened uh, during a very infamous uh, Peter Coffin stream. Yeah, we're, we're getting weird already. I hope you're ready to get weird. We are going to dive into the weird world of Steven Crowder. The weird world of Steven Crowder, and it only gets weirder. Right, because this is like legitimately the second major front in the Republican, I don't know if you want to call it a culture war. I guess we could call it a culture war just to piss them off. This is the real culture war. Like which right wing culture is going to take hold? Like who's gonna, who's gonna, they're all fighting each other. Like which leopard will eat which other leopard's face? This is leopard versus leopard. And they're all poorly programmed NPCs. I don't know. I don't know. First, I got to get some Void coffee so I start to make some sense instead of just talking garbage to all of you. Um, although I know you're kind of here for that. I don't know. You're all here for a bunch of different reasons, right? And I should probably talk to you more about that. More about what your expectations of the stream are. And I, how I can help you fulfill those deep desires. <laughs> How's everybody doing? You did the robot dance. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's helpful. Wait, Void coffee. Yes, thanks for rem reminding me, uh, Len. It's one thing to talk about coffee. It's another thing to drink it. You're real, but people often doubt it. Um, this is vibe though. Gokunaru, you should you should seriously go into music. Yeah, what are all the Crowder bots gonna do? I guess they're gonna I guess they're gonna cope. That's mostly what they do. You're feeling very real today, uh, says Tom Trask. Little robot as a tree. What's up, Rebecca Vaughn? Good to see you. Um, response five. We are well. No. Oh my God. We got the we got the NPCs in chat today. Um. Well, I mean, like according to according to Chud Logic, uh, you're all soy uh leftists. It's it must be very hard to uh be you because you must very be very uh miserable with all these rules to follow. Meanwhile, they don't notice like how much NPCs they are, how many rules that they have to follow. Just like the idea of like d d the first commandment, don't be soy. I don't, I don't know what soy is. They definitely don't know what soy is, um, but you're not supposed to be it. Soy is a bad thing. Soy is going to it's going to mess with your uh, masculine hormones, which are important. Uh, whether you are a Chad or a Stacy, you still have got to have those dominant that testosterone dominance in your um cerebral system if nothing else because that's uh, we worship we worship the phallus just like just like carl jung said we we all worship a, a phallus that uh dwells deep within a, a subterranean cave and is called anyway let's not let's not get into jung right now i'm not, not trying to be jordan peterson i'm not trying to be jordan peterson although i can do the peterson voice if you like yeah i i wanted to ask like uh, what is, uh, with the call quality? Wait, are you talking about Discord? Call quality? Or just, like, on phone? Do people still use phones? I get scared if somebody calls me without texting. I'll be honest, is that weird? Does that make me weird? You're a soy bot. What's up, Dame Owl? Good to see you. Oh my god, Crystal Safira. Moe, nope. Good to see you all here today. So yeah, we're going to be talking about, of course, the Steven Crowder thing. His uh, worlds are colliding. It's righty versus righty. And I, I love to see it. I love to see it. We've already had the conflict that blew up over Candace Owens. I feel like people are underselling like what's going on on the right right now in terms of their like multiple, like I'm saying multiple fronts in their like culture war, their civil culture war against each other to decide um are we a pro a party that is going to feign sympathy for palestinians in order to uh be anti in order to excuse our anti-semitism like candace owens or are we a party 
that is going to um that is going to brutally you know support every human rights violation that uh israel makes are we going to be a party of divorced dads that that you know always feel like they're aggrieved and have been have been done wrong or are we gonna um <sighs> They're making their choices, right? And not all of them are making the same choices. Not all of them are ending up in the same slots. And I feel like it really is kind of putting some, uh, putting some fractures in those uh, coalitions that, that are very, barely there to begin with, right? The whole problem with Trump is that although he's like Keffels, right? You know how Keffels is? Um, if you're on the outside of things looking in at Keffels, Keffels is pretty hard to uh, agree with, pretty hard to understand um pretty hard to like honestly right but if you're in that cult right you feel like you've been attacked by this outside enemy that's just unrelenting and nobody will understand everybody uh, turns into this big amalgamation chimera of you know everyone keffels has fought with it like one head is kiwi farms one head is the uh is, is keemstar uh one head is is <laughs> random like black person on twitter that keffels got in a a fight with right it's just it's so weird it's so weird how that works over there You hate phone calls, unlike the bird. The bird calls are good. The bird calls are nice. I don't. I need to be more of a bird person. Sorry, Jeff. I wasn't trying to do a Rick and Morty there, but I kind of did anyway. I kind of did anyway. But yeah, I like I was saying. I kind of want some feedback from you. Like I said, we're gonna cover Steven Crowder today. We're gonna take a look in at the Candace stuff. I have been waiting for a more substantial statement from either the Candace side of things or the Daily Wire side of things. And so far, it, it's it been lacking. I've got something for you on that front, though. Uh, I've got something from Ben Shapiro himself. Ben Shapiro jumped in with Pierce Morgan to have a conversation on, uh, well, not, well, you'll see, you'll see, right? Pierce wants to talk about Candace. We'll see if Ben wants to talk about Candace. And they're definitely both talking about Rabbi Shmuley, and what they're talking is, is you know, they're talking some shit about Shmuley. And I don't know, it's, it's speaking of people that are hard to like, hard to relate to, hard to believe they freaking exist. Rabbi Shmuley, I haven't even shown you the blow up that he did. In fact, some of this stuff, I don't know if I can show you. It's like TOS. There was a holiday recently, Purim, and uh, a lot of people dressed in costumes uh, during this holiday. And Rabbi Shmuley attended one such celebration with a very unique costume that I don't even know if I can show you. The whole costume is like a walking anti-Semitic trope, but it's supposed to be an own on Candace, right? It's not that he is like endorsing this shit, right? Even though he's friends with anti-Semites, even though he excuses anti-Semites, as long as they're pro-Israel. He's become Candace's Owen, Candace Owens' vision of, of a Jewish person, right? And it, it's just bad. It's really, really bad. Sometimes, look, parody is great, but there's some things that you can't parody. And I would say like blood libel. <laughs> Blood like it uh, look look maybe maybe somebody out there can make a funny joke about you know blood libel that's not stomach turning I don't, I don't know I can't imagine what that would be like but Rabbi Shmuley is definitely not that person there's a whole thing about like you know comedy if it, if comedy is about something that's really disturbing like that it better be really funny and it better be making a point like there better be like a right it, it can't just be like meaningless comedy of like edgelord jokes about like horrible um horrible stuff like blood libel <laughs> like that's just wrong i don't know i don't know some people do it some people do it like joe rogan would say i'm the npc here for not laughing at humor like that funny funny humor about uh about freaking you know pogroms and genocide no thank you no thank you i bet shmuley has skeletons in his closet may maybe even literally i don't know chad i'm not i'm just saying i'm just saying you were expecting blackface? I mean, I don't know. It's like the, uh, I won't say the equivalent. Oppressions are different and I don't want to like, you know, make us too strong of a, a parallel. Yeah, the parallel. Parallel is a better word uh, for 
uh, what Shmuley is, is, is doing. Um, but yeah, it's to own Candace Owens, right? And he thought he was gonna win! He thought people were gonna see his awesome trope costume. It, like, there's scenes of him, chat, like, what looks like grinding on kids, okay? Now, I even saying those words, like, makes me sick at my stomach. Like, what he's really doing, I think, is, like, the adult thing. Like, I don't know. Does anybody ever have... Do you have parents? Are you actual NPCs or do you have parents? Wait, do NPCs? Maybe maybe even robots have parents. I don't know. Is a robot's parent, like, the doctor... The doctor, the the scientist that created it? Like, like Hal? Is that how that works? But yeah, he is doing the thing that, like, if you all have parents, maybe your parent did this once. Like, you know, you sit in your parent's lap, fine, it works because you're a little kid, right? Your parent sits in your lap, obviously it's going to crush you. But sometimes parents will tease little kids by pretending to sit in their lap and not, like, take all their weight off of their... See, I'm having to describe this stuff instead of showing it to you because it's, like, borderline, like, I don't know, I don't know. Like, it's, it's borderline anti-Semitic, I, I guess, right? And it's... You know, the point is supposed to be that Candace Owens is anti-Semitic and, and to do this, Rabbi Shmuley becomes the trope, becomes the the freaking, a living, walking uh, version of that trope. So anyway, Rabbi Shmuley is doing that, is is like pretending to sit down on a kid's lap. And, but like, I mean, of course, like the, I mean, you, what, he, what he did was just like, I, I gotta say, the Groypers are eating good off of that shit. Like, they don't care. If he meant it ironically, they love that shit. They live for that shit. They are their their souls, their dark little frog souls are fed by that shit. Yeah. But do people know what I'm talking about when I say like that? This this is like have other people experienced this? Anybody ever have your parents pretend to sit in your lap? Because that's what he was doing, and like uh, he was rather drunk too. Yeah, that's the other problem. He's got like a cup, and. It's, it's like like a red um, cup, like a plastic cup with a um, straw in it. And he's like, mmm, Christian blood, mmm, so delicious, right? It, and anyway, it's just like, it's horrible, it's horrible, right? And I really don't want to show, but you, maybe you've seen this. But yeah, so so yeah, did Candace Owens win? Oh yeah, she, uh, it's incontrovertible at this point. Controvertible, as is the fact that I have somehow managed to come to stream once again. Oh no, have we are they back? Chat the ghosts. Wait, no, those are real. Omega Star, you Omega trolled me in a good way, though. I was about to turn the alerts off. I was like, oh no, not not ghost um, memberships. Those are real memberships. Those are real memberships. And if you're getting one of those real memberships right now, understand two things. One, you just got weaseled, okay? You can post weasels, you can post, post for your coffee. You got all the emotes. And two, you have Omega Star to thank for that that gift. Because it is a gift, and it's a really nice thing to do. So uh, if you can unlurk, if you can unlurk, uh, it would behoove you to show your gratitude towards Omega Star uh, by, by posting some weasels in chat. If you're a Peter Martin, uh, don't cry wolf. Oh, sorry. Don't cry, Wolf. Wait, how is the umlaut makes it like Wolf? Wait, so like, oh my god, I, I should know how umlauts work. I've worked with umlauts before. Anyway, don't cry, Wolf. Uh, Will for Florida. Oh uh, no, get back to the English pronunciation. Will Florida. Uh, Jester, Daryl Barnett. Is there one more person. Did I read everybody off? I think I did. Okay, yeah. All If you heard your name, if you heard your name, that means that you just got weasels. What happened to Crowder now? Well, he's been going through a divorce. We all know this, right? We all have probably seen the ring camera footage of Steven Crowder where he is like treating his wife Hillary like like shit. I guess soon to be uh, ex-wife uh, Hillary like, like shit, right? And um, 
I mean, there's been stuff brewing behind the scene, right? This is going to be a really contentious uh, divorce, and both sides are making accusations at each other. Uh, one famous Steven Crowder alum, a person named Not Gay Jared. I keep on wanting to say Not not Gay uh, Gerald. No, Ger Gerald actually is gay. No, no, what I mean is Gerald is not not gay. What, what I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, like, Everybody on Steven Crowder's show is like secretly, you know, gay or, or bi or something. That's not what I'm saying at all. All right. I'm saying that there's not gay Jared. And then there is Gerald. Who is not not gay. I, th 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 am I not doing a decent job or is my brain just like completely in a conniption fed? Uh, I can just say wolf. Oh, you I can just say wolf. Yeah, I'm not super worried about it. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. You're really sweet. You're really sweet. I'm always worried that I'll mispronounce somebody's name and offend them. And they'll be like, I can't believe she said my name like that. That's like, yo, I once had somebody in chat like that was like, yo, Lil Miss, you know, like the Lil Miss books, like L-I-L Miss, and their name was like Lil Miss something or other. And I was like, they, they, they followed me on, on Twitch and I was like, thank you for the follow, Lilms. I, I can't pronounce the rest of your name, but thank you so much, Lilms. That was really nice. Yeah, it's Little Miss, Little Miss. Uh, gay Gerald and not Gay Jared have different opin differing opinions. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Mars Falcon uh, Mars Falcon is getting into sort of the subject for this stream. We Like I said, we went over um, not Gay Gerald's video. Which, which I thought was weird because, you know, it, it it's not exactly conservative coded, right? A lot of the way that he's like, he's talking about himself in as a as a victim in a way that isn't, I guess, that common for conservatives. Some of them would call it cancel culture, victim culture, whatever. It's a little bit strange. Meanwhile, Crowder's trying to make himself the victim, right? They said that my dog was mean. Joe Lewis, Steven Crowder's dog, Joe Lewis. Steven Crowder names his name. His dog has a first name and a last name. Okay, uh, but but yeah, apparently, uh, you know, in the divorce pre or in the pr prior to the divorce proceedings, I, I think there was a, like a claim made that the dog was mean and the dog was not good at kit with kids. Like the dog needs to needs to not, uh, you know, be near the kids. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and he was, and he got an affidavit from the former owner of the dog saying, that dog is not mean. That dog is a sweetie. What the fuck? Like how, how, oh my God, receipts on whether a dog is mean. That's the weirdest thing ever. I hope she gets uh, custody of the dog and the car. Yeah. What is up with the fact that they only have one car? Steven Crowder, like, I mean, I don't know how rich is he a millionaire? He's gotta be like close to that. He pulls in a lot of money through that mug club. We should have a mug club. No, just kidding, Chad. Um. Yeah, just sign up with your email and I promise you won't get a ton of spam. Oh my God. I think that's what the deal is with the mug club. I think it's just an excuse for him to maintain a prodigious email list, which yeah, he does. Um, some conservatives don't want to come out of the closet. Yeah, I mean, it's weird that he would still try to stay in the... Well, you know, it's weird because like to, I think, um, an unbiased observer, uh, Steven Crowder has come out of the closet. Like, right. When he said, uh, you know, talked about the, uh, bisexual Mr. Hyde rearing his ugly head again. Right. Look, when you say that you've got a bisexual, like part to your personality that sometimes you, you transform into. Uh, to most people, that would mean you're probably not straight. But if you're in one of these people, if you're one of these people who thinks you can pray away the gay, maybe you just think, oh my gosh, I haven't been praying enough. If I ask Jesus, Jesus will take this away and make me normal. And that's not normal. Like, right? Like being bisexual actually is, is way more normal, I think, than anybody even realizes at this point, right? Uh, but that, you know, the, the whole being like, like thinking 
your bisexuality is something that God can uh, remove, that it's like a punishment for not praying hard enough, that I, I don't know, like a test of faith, whatever. I mean, that's not healthy. That's not normal. That That's scary. That's scary that there's still people walking out there like in 2024 being like, oh yeah, I got to keep my, uh, I got to, I got to deal with my bisexual demons again. They're not demons. They're, you're, you're just bisexual and it's, it's not a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be a problem if you didn't make your whole career of, out of homophobia. If you didn't trap yourself in this closet, R. Kelly's, oh my God, that's a bad reference, right? Um, from what I heard, a single car is, uh, so the spouse doesn't have independence. Yo, I've heard a lot of people say that, that that's a tactic of abusers, right? And like, look, I'm not making any, al I'm not, I'm not, everything is in under the rubric of allegedly, okay? Uh, I'm not making any claims here, especially to somebody as litigious as Mr. Uh, Crowder, but yeah, it, it does, like, I don't know how you look at that situation and read it as anything other than an abusive uh, situation that uh, Hillary Crowder was, was right to leave. Okay, so the one, one other thing that I wanted to ask you, right, is um, a question about content. So like I said, we're going to cover, um, we're going to cover a little bit of the Candace Owens thing today because there's a few things that have popped up about that. Most of what we're going to talk about today is actually Steven Crowder and, uh, the war, the war for Crowder, the war against Crowder. It's, it's like, it's wild. But, um, I'm just curious, like, for those of you who were there, here when I covered the story on Xena and Poppy. Uh, do you, we, we, I kind of, I kind of left you in the middle of things, right? So there's two, there was two main elements to the Xena and Poppy story. One was, um, you know, the false allegations Poppy had made in, uh, retribution, um, to her former par partner leaving her. And the second was actually about Poppy and Xena's adult child. A uh, person will be referring to as Spawn uh, because we're trying to maintain their anonymity. We don't want to, you know, Poppy's put their name out there. Um, so, you know, that sucks. But um, I want to do all that I can to protect the names of the innocent. And this person, by all accounts, is, uh, you know, just kind of another victim of, of Poppy and, and Xena and has a story that they want to tell. Right. So that's the part we didn't get to. We did. We didn't get to the part about uh, Spawn. But I'm kind of curious, uh, like, I mean, do people want to hear the rest of that story? Because there, there's even more now. There's even more. And it kind of fits more in line with my concern with Poppy, Poppy and Xena. Um, before I knew about all this was the way that they function as like attack dogs for. For the White Leaf Network. The way that they go after people uh in videos and you know essentially like the, serve their purpose right because you're, you're an orbiter of vosh you got to prove yourself useful how do you prove yourself useful if you're a small channel attack the real and perceived enemies of, of vosh uh, xander hall keffels etc and that's what they did for a really long time i'd also heard stories from people that were in that community about you know just a, an abusive out of control situation and I never knew if I was being used. I didn't want to put myself in a situation where I'm being used as somebody's retribution, you know, because sometimes people do kind of flip out on uh, content creators, you know, for, for no reason. Like there was a situation with Tipster recently that I didn't want to cover because it sounded like it was, you know, just uh, all that was happening was somebody that had modded for Tipster um, was being turned into a lol cow for all of the commentary community and th th although tipster yeah i have like i have talked about my issues with tipster i i've made fun of tipster but um nothing of substance was added in the in this situation so you know like i didn't want to jump to conclusions as far as like some of the worst um claims that i heard about poppy and xena i could never get you know confirmation on that um at one point when this stuff started to come out, I, uh, I prepared to do a video about it, 
but I backed out at the last second. Some of you might have noticed that, right? I, I kind of changed the thumbnail and uh, title and, and everything J just because like I didn't have the feeling that I was able to explain the situation in a way that would be easily understood. I didn't completely understand the situation myself and I can't go to stream, you know, all confused about something that I'm trying to shed light on. So I uh, ended up uh, not doing that. And, and now the story has, uh, you know, had uh, multiple leaks. I think maybe three or four uh, sets of, of leaks um, come out at this point, detailing uh, various aspects of the, you know, horrible, dreadful behavior of uh, these, you know, white leaf content creators. And uh, yeah, it turns out that where there was uh, smoke, there was indeed fire. But what I would need to know from you is if you're interested in hearing more about that, if you're interested in going a little bit deeper down that rabbit hole, just spent an hour talking to, oh my gosh. So that's a yes, please from Rebecca Vaughn. Oh yes, Ahoy X. I don't know if you're talking about X, the, uh, I still call it Twitter. <laughs> but, um, I do have a thread today. Okay. I don't know. I go back and forth as far as like whether I need to post a Twitter thread to let people know that I'm going live. Sometimes it's, it just doesn't seem all that helpful. Hey, that all depends on you. Look, you can turn this thread into a banger by going and interacting with it. There it is in Twitch. And ooh. here it is in YouTube. Are they fluffy? Wait, are what fluffy? Are we talking about weasels? I mean, I hope that weasels are fluffy in nature. Oh, sheep are fluffy. Okay, I see. So yeah, I'm pinning the um, the Twitter thread in both. If you want to uh, go in there and post some weasels, this is your chance. Oh no, actually, I might need some help. I might need some help on the Twitch side. It looks like it won't pin it for me. Oh well, if somebody else wants to pin it, um, yeah, it's weird about it's weird like that. Wait, how did the is an air mine in the weasel family? What is an air mine? Post air mines so that I know what an air mine is. of the world unite wait do, do we have oh no it's eating tiny food yo wait what is that a sandwich a sandwich and a what is what's the second thing is it a, a cake Oh my god, that's so cute. And it's on a little, its plate is a gambling chip. Oh my god. Ermines are mustelids, just like weasels and stoats. What about ferrets? Are ferrets mustelids? That's definitely like a sandwich, right? Oh no, it's a hot dog. Yeah, that's not like a, like a little hamster hot dog. And then I think the second thing is a hamster cake, maybe? Uh, Steven Crowder joins the staff at Beard Oil Monthly, along with Sh Rabbi Shmuley. Wait, they would use Ermine as the, as the fluff on a king's robe? I mean, like, what did I think that it was going to be? Yeah, it would be some, some fur that's from, like, an animal that's long. Go along the robe. But, like, I never knew that. What did I think it was? 
what would I have thought that was? Like, maybe a fox? I don't know. Yeah, but it makes sense. It makes sense that they're gonna use mustelids. Ferrets are, in fact, mustelids. Oh, they're illegal to um, own in the U.S. So stoats are illegal uh, to own in the U.S. as pets. But I mean, like so far, I've just gotten a little bit of feedback of people do want to go deeper into the uh, Poppy and uh, Xena thing. Like I did kind of leave you uh, right in the middle there and I feel bad about that. Uh, part of it was just that, I don't know. Um, it's like tough stuff to listen to. It's, t it's tough to stuff to watch. Like it, it is, I, I do think it's important to see what kind of garbage White Leaf is facilitating. Like the whole nature of that human clout centipede that they form, they're all just kind of there to back up each other's opinions. I think there's actually, Shakespeare, is there like a name for this in academia? You know when, okay, so if you read a, if you read a paper and it's got like, it's, it's sparse on citations, but then you look up those citations and they cite other people and then you look up those citations and they cite the first person. What is that called? What is that called? Like when it's it's not it, it's made to look like, you know, um, people are these people are not just publishing nonsense, right? That there there's 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 sources, there's backing. There's um there's a name for this, right? In in academia. It's like validation no it's not circular reasoning right it's like circular sources like circular circular validation it's not called circular validation though i can't remember what it is called citation circle jerk that is definitely the academic name for it mars falcon That's got to be the, that's got to be the citation misconduct. I mean, I'm going with citation circle jerk. That's really what they, they're, they're, they're doing. They're, they're getting their validation off each other and like no one else because what they're talking about is bullshit. I mean, these, these, these kind of academics that I'm talking about are the kinds that like, you know, are like anti-vaxxers or like uh, anti class you know what I mean? They're, they're offering some opinion that doesn't really have any backing that, that is based on nothing so they cite each other because there's nobody else to cite that's what white leaf is it gives the appearance that um these people must be okay right if you don't think that bosch is okay well then you must think that demon mama is okay and if you don't think that demon mama is okay well then you must think that shark is okay and if you don't think that shark is okay then you you must think that riverboat jack is okay right and it just goes on and on and on and there's like certainly somebody in this like you know, because they all cover for each other. They all, when something like this goes down, um, generally now this is like, this is a time where it's gotten too hot to handle. Poppy and Xena have become radioactive and they were actually dropped from the network, which is unprecedented. But trust when I say that they have been doing this bullshit for a long, long time and it's been talked about. It's been out on Twitter. It's been, it's been known. But, uh, you know, up until I think and, and like we did get confirmation, oh my God, I can't remember where it was from, but of what it specifically it was that, yeah. So I, I watched Luxander's uh, stream yesterday, a little bit of Luxander's stream. And um, the reason, Luxander's also in the White Leaf Network, right? So uh, according to Luxander, who, who may even be for all I know, like a voting member of uh, the White Forest thing, um, the, the rationale was that uh, Bosch's sysadmin felt that by making, by, by, by um, threatening to pursue legal action on their kid, that Poppy and Xena had broken the law, right? 
So the official the official reason is because like there's very few reasons if you read their uh, standard operating procedure There's like three possible reasons to lose your site One is that you say I don't know about this is what would the pre if you even go to white nervosa and you say hey white nervosa I was just wondering if I were to stop working with white leaf What would be the procedure for doing that then white leaf or white nervosa would be like look at your website and you bring it up and you'd be like, it's not working. And she'd be like, yeah, I shut it off. That's the procedure. You express any degree of, of uh, reticence about being part of this network. You express any desire or plan to leave. And that is how that is how you lose your website. And you don't lose, you don't have like a month to, to, to get things changed. You It's just like that. So like, that's the one, that's the first way. That's the first offense, right? Um, Second offense is doing something that violates the law. Now this makes me wonder, right? Because the other famous person that left the White Leaf Network, sorry, left the White Leaf Network, was yeeted from the White Leaf uh, Network, was forcefully ejected from the White Leaf Network, was of course Rose Wrist. Rose Wrist's crime was helping Destiny with a manifesto against Keffels, helping proofread said manifesto. And Road, Rose Wrist did lose his website uh, from, from that. That's, you know, kind of a controversy from about a, a year ago. Reference bias, huh? No, I'm talking about like the circular referencing. You know what I mean? Where there, there's there's not really, there, it's, it's like bad academics, not good academics. I don't know how to describe this. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's what the White Leaf Network uh, serves as, I think, a, like a valid, oh my God. See, I'm like trying to remember where I heard this from, though. Validation gang? Is there something called a validation gang? I feel like I might have heard this from Peter Coffin, though. Like, maybe before Peter Coffin uh, turned into a Nazbol, but uh, still, still. I get recommended a Destiny video where he talks about how Vosh uh, could have built a better support network to cushion him from debacles like th that's destiny's answer to this not that like yikes vosh was problematic i was right to bring him on stream to to you know expose him as the fucking creep and the predator that he was right and i should have done more that would be the correct response that would be the human response that would be the response that shows you that destiny's maybe like slightly better of a human being uh, then Vosh, unfortunately, that's not the, uh, that's not the response you get. The response from Destiny was like, haha, really sucks for you. God, if you'd still been an orbiter, we would have taken care of you just like we took care of Chud Logic. Just like we pulled Chud's bacon out of the fire, we would have been there to help you. Yeah, apparently Destiny does not see anything wrong in, uh, in Tacoma weeping, um, Orsa and Loli. Cult of personality, um, a validation cult. Yeah. Here's Morgan. That's your intro? Fucking Guitar Dad teaches you guitar. Who knew? Do you think Pierce Morgan is a Guitar Dad? Or do you think he just like wants to... Wants to show off some classic riffs in his intro? Oh, there he is. Ben Shabibo. What is up with Ben Shabibo? Cause like he's like he's like in his upper thirties, right? He's like is he thirty eight, thirty nine, something like that. And like I mean, you can tell, you know, you could he's got you know the the you know his face like, you know, it's it's not like he looks like like it's like okay, so here's what it is like. Despite the fact he looks like a child with a wrinkly face, like he doesn't look like an adult that has like matured into maturity. He. Like, there's something weirdly childlike about this guy, <laughs> in spite of, you know, the, the fact that, uh, like, there, there's something Peter Panish. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Ben Shapiro. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be mean here. 
Uh, can Whiteley vote out Vosh? Oh my god. Um, hmm. See, the thing about this, Jules, Jules poses a question, can Whiteley vote out Vosh? Uh, which, you know, I mean, look, a, a few more scandals like this, and, you know, he would be more of a liability, maybe, than a, uh, than a boon. Uh, that being said, he is definitely the anchor point uh, for their operation in, in terms of being... So what Whiteleaf is, uh, basically, is a uh, server, like a, a set of servers that facilitate uh, streamer websites and the code to operate those streamer websites to do the same things that uh, YouTube does. Like, if you become a member, you get, like, a little icon by your name. You're able to post weasels. You are able to see... Um, you know the some of the members only uh stuff right you know that that's like what youtube does but um what the white leaf website does is basically does that um on a website on their own website so that that way instead of youtube uh taking a large percentage of the money like they do with me uh if a, with a white leaf website um the the channel owner takes that and we don't we the, the thing is there's some stuff that it's opaque about like we don't know what the deals are between Vosh's sysadmin and those creators. We know that the that Vosh pays money, pays pays cash ostensibly to the um sysadmin himself, and that his um you know, you know, like the, the, the amount that he pays is able to provide for the servers and, and provide to, for what the rest of the network um does. The only clue that we've got about like how do the other people pay, right? Because I I get the sense that they don't like pay the same way that Vosh does, is that the fact that when my channel got the takedown notice, it didn't come from Xander Hall. It came from Vosh's sysadmin, right? And uh I mean that that implies that the sysadmin owns the content or the channel or something like that. I can't tell you for sure. And I don't want to say anything that's that's not true because uh, you know we don't want to find out if if they're actually litigious. Uh, the term "circular reference," aka "catch twenty two or "runaround," refers to any situation. Wait, let me put this up on stream. Random talk, but because this is good, um, refers to any situation in which two or more points in a communication chain link without uh, back to each other without resolution. Yeah, yeah, it's like a circular reference in, in terms of, you know, they're they're vouching, they're vouching uh, for each other, right? If you don't, and this is what I find is that most of the time, you know, even if people are skeptical on Vosh, um, skeptical on Demon Mama, skeptical on Xander Hall, there's like at least one person in there. They're, they're like, oh, Shark's okay though, and it's like they're kind, they're kind of, they're kind of missing some some lore about about Shark. Like I can tell you. Uh, as a former friend of of uh, Shark Three O Zero, he's not okay. He's he's like uh, not any better than the rest of them. I, I don't know why people think he is, but um, but that's how it works, right? Is that like you know when something really bad happens with with somebody in the White Leaf Network, there's always somebody in there to vouch or to vouch uh, that that it, in in fact, uh, Shark and Demon Mama apparently both did defense of of Vosh streams. Um, they've taken them down. They they changed their mind about it. They thought it uh, that it was a bad idea, and they were right. I mean, look at what happened to Keffels. Right, they're, they're those people that defended Vosh over the folders. They literally went to die on uh on like rhetorically speaking on Lily Hill. The academic term above. Okay, let's see if I can find it. False confirmation, circular, yeah, circular references. That's what I thought. Yeah, that makes sense. Circular references. Okay, yeah. It feels like figuring out the Trinity. Yeah, it is. Well, it's uh, on purpose, right? They they don't. They're not very transparent, right? It is a it is a clout network. It is a clout human centipede, and it's uh, you know they're they're there as as like a business proposition, right? Leftism has become um a business proposition. 
And the, and the biggest danger is that somebody in their network, somebody that they're getting their clout from, uh, might get exposed, particularly Vosh. And particularly because with Vosh, there is so much to expose. But what we're finding out lately is that it's not just about Vosh. And I mean, I could have told you that. In fact, I think I did uh, tell you that if you went back to my uh, Vosh um, coverage, you would hear me saying exactly that. Folks uh, keep referring to little Ben Shapiro as a whiz kid uh, because he used to hang out with R. Kelly until he aged into the... Oh my god, many people are saying this. Yeah, yeah, no, do, we can definitely find some circular references for that one. What is the deal with the Vosh cult? I mean, I don't know. All I can tell you is that a fish rots from the head down. If you got a rotten person like Vosh and, you know, you put out a request um, to defend him... And the, the, the payment is that you get to share with his audience, right? Who's going to take you up on that? Good people? Principled leftists? Or or rotten people? <laughs> like, and, and unfortunately, it's the latter. Um, Almost down to a T. Like, I mean, like, Lance got out of there, and, and I'm glad that he did. Um, I, I don't think he really... I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, take away Lance's agency. I mean, he made the choices that he made to join uh, White Leaf in the first place to associate with uh, people like Vosh and uh, Dylan Burns, but um, it does seem like he is at least able to get out of it now. There's raw sewage in England? Oh, with, with the idea that England uh, pumps the most raw sewage into rivers and seas. Oh, wait, no, this is like North... Wait, what the fuck? Is this an advertisement? One hundred and twenty nine percent more shit than the year before. Oh my god, this is a privatization issue, isn't it? Has doubled since 2023. Since privatization, water companies have slashed costs, uh, massively underinvested, and paid out huge dividends to... So wait, they uh, slashed cost in terms of to them, but like. Oh, God. Oh, God. So they privatize um, water. And then when they get into trouble, they want the they want to be bailed out by the taxpayers. Okay, I've been told not to watch, not to look at Sky News. Another Brexit benefit. No, look at this swan. Look at this poor swan. That shit is frothy. Look at the frothiness. Chat, that's, that swan is getting like poop froth. It's going to come out all poop frothed. Well, the sewage treatment plant behind us takes in the waste of uh, half a million people. And when it can't cope with it, it chucks it straight out here. And in the marine life, just beneath, beneath our feet, we're actually finding they're full of drugs. They're full of contraceptive pill. And so, yeah, we're not really. OK, so I'm, I was joking around about the poop because the water looked kind of frothy with that swan. Uh, but we're really talking about like medical waste, um, 
like industrial waste, stuff like that. Antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication. And every medical waste. Marine species that we've looked at so far is full of cocaine. Which means raw sewage is coming into this water. Okay, be careful when you say that, okay? Because there are certain people that when you say every single sp species in Britain is chocked full of cocaine, there are people that will decide to become hunters. They will take up hunting right then and there, and and it'll they'll get really serious about it. They'll be looking for the 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 cocaine bears and the cocaine deer, the cocaine uh, marmosets. People are gonna start fishing. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 not gonna think like about what else might be polluting uh, those animals. It's not just. Every fish is, yeah, exactly, Crotchy. Let's re make, repeat the same mistakes, um, privatization over and over again. That's so frustrating, isn't it? This is an expected uh, consequence of mostly conservative governments for the last 40 years. Uh, that is about to be changing, right? So in terms of the elections that are coming up, I understand that... not going to be the Tories. The Tories have gravely worn out their welcome. Changing to who? That's the question. Well, I don't know UK politics that well, but I do know that the two other main parties are the Liberals and uh, uh, do they, they don't call it New Labour anymore, do they? Is that the old name for Labour? Like, they just call it Labour, right? There's the liberal Democrats who are not like liberal. It doesn't mean the same thing as it does in the U.S. It's just like a centrist um, party, capitalist party. It's very likely that labor is going to form the. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. So it's very likely that labor is going to uh, form the next U.K. government. Now, labor's got problems. Uh, labor, much like the Democratic Party, um, often disappoints its uh, base. And, uh, you know, not uh, not free from turfs by any uh, means. Starmer is like the most Tory like labor leader that God, that's such mood. That is so, like that. This is the same thing that we deal with here. No, not Nick Fuentes. Wait. No, this guy is banned on Twitch. I'm not trying to watch him. Um, but there. Who is this? Owen Strachan. Okay, let's let's take a look at this. Um, anti-Semitism in our judaism is a false system um yeah i respect jews excuse I, I me jesus christ wow <laughs> wow wow um I want their spiritual good i hope i love jews i should we've got to i i don't believe you when you say that i don't believe that you love Jews as we love all unbelievers. Um, but I want to say as well, there is real and rank anti-Semitism in our world. And we have this fucking anti-Semite. Th this is how bad the anti-Semitism on the right has gotten that even anti-Semites are like, this is some stinky shit, though. Like, I, you know, like they, they keep their shit under wraps. They keep their shit in dog whistles. They're, they're not like pose that and where an Andrew Tate or a Fuentes is using the formulation Christ is King to signal a kind of white Christian civilization, Christian in air quotes, white Christian civilization is better than the Jewish cabal that truly runs the world or some fever dream like that. Right. We are out of that. We, it doesn't mean we give up on the phrase Christ is King, like you just said, but we're what? Oh my God. Oh my God. No, you, you, you should. Okay. Look, I could, okay. Here, like, look, I'm not allowed to show you uh, Nick Fuentes. I mean, I, I, Twitch probably doesn't care, but I don't want to risk it. 
Um, so um, we're not going to show it to you, but I, sh I could show you a clip of uh, Nick Fuentes saying something, you know, anti-Semitic, something about like Talmudic uh, Judaism, right? And the response from his audience is to erupt into cheering Christ is King, Christ is King, right? It's a, it's a Groiper slogan. That's what it is. And, um, you know, this jackass, right, that's that's able to realize, like, so here's what's weird, right? He knows that these Groipers exist. He knows that this is anti-Semitism, that he doesn't want to associate his his brand of, of Christian um, nationalism with, but, but he wants to keep saying Christ is king. You, you, you got to recognize, dude, uh, you know, because of the pro because the most people that are saying that are groipers if you say that you're just adding to that chorus and it doesn't even matter if you you don't have anything particularly anti-semitic in your mind because you're amplifying anti-semitism i don't know that's uh there's more of what i'm looking for is like twitter space this is the one i'm talking about i can't show it to you though because um but yeah, no, this has been a huge boon for this guy. This has been a huge, huge boon for Nick Fuentes. And like, look, if you don't think, wait, okay, so this is Nick Fuentes, right? If I type in, wait, this is Lauren Chen has a video. Nick Fuentes joined in the debate. Um, Oh shit, that's him. I didn't see him. He was hiding in the background chat, just like he does. Um So let's read this uh this um And I was trying to find there's a Twitter space. So um Apparently Jeremy Boring who I think is the yeah, the CEO of the Daily Wire. Right, there was a Twitter space that had um, Nick Fuentes in it. They were talking about this phrase, Christ is King, because what happened is Candace Owens, last week, MAGA celeb Candace Owens parted ways with the Daily Wire after criticizing Israel's genocidal war in Gaza in ways that frequently mobilized actual anti-Semitism. Um, yeah, here we go. In the public feuds with right-wing uh, Jews like Ben Shapiro and Shmuley, Botiak, um, Owens invoked a conspiratorial, invoked conspiratorial Zionist cabal, invoked, sorry, I think this is supposed to be a conspiratorial, sorry, <laughs> Owens invoked conspiratorial Zionist cabals, associated uh, Jewish people with sexual perversion and greed, and mobilized Christian superior supremacy by repeatedly directing Christ is King. A, gro a groiper slogan at Shapiro. Oh, yeah. So this is what it is like, right? This is uh, so this is from a little while ago, November 15th. This was, I think, after was it after her talk with Norman or before it? Anyway, there were already tensions. There were already tensions between Candace and and Shapiro. And if you don't know, like, um, like, OK, so so none of my like all my friends, all my all my homies hate Ben Shapiro, right? Ben Shapiro, like not. Um, you know, not a popular guy on the left, but did you know that he's also hated on the right? And he's hated for three main reasons. One, he did not support Donald Trump at first. All right. So they see him as a rhino. He's a Republican in uh, name only. You, you, two, two, um, he got the vaccine. He got the vaccine and he told other people to get the vaccine. He's been kind of cooling down on that and, and trying to back away from that. But, you know, he did that. People noticed, right, that got him in hot water with conservatives. And and three, he's a Jewish man. And a large contingent of the right is mask off anti-Semite uh, at this point, right? So, um, yeah, this conflict with Ben Shapiro, uh, he says, Candace, if you feel... Um, she made a, oh God, there's, there's, this is mis missing context, right? But, but the context before this is that Candace Owens, um, quoted a Bible verse or something like that. I think it was from Psalms and it sounded like a subtweet. It felt like a subtweet. It was probably a subtweet. I'm being completely honest with you here. 
where when I say that Ben Shapiro is right, that the tweet that she made was about him. But look at what she does. And this is why Candace Owens is more talented as a propagandist than anybody at the Daily Wire, than most people on the right. Um, you know, as far as like I'm, I'm telling you about this culture war that's going on the right, um, she's on the winning side. She's on, the, uh, and unfortunately, that's the side with Nick Fuentes in it, right? So um, yeah, Ben Shapiro's been getting like, you know, clowned, been getting, you know, attacked by, uh, in, a, well, in a lot of cases by Groypers, uh, mainly because of him being Jewish, right? Um, not, not for the right reasons. Cause there's a, there's a lot not to like about Ben Shapiro. Um, so anyway, um, he says, Candace, if you feel like taking money from the daily wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means quit. So he's like, get the fuck out of here and look at how she turns this around. This is brilliant. You are utterly out of line for suggesting that I cannot quote biblical scripture. Oh my God. You see what she's signaling to her, her groiped up audience? This Jewish guy doesn't like me quoting the Bible. But guess what, Ben Shapiro? The Bible is not about you. <laughs> like, right? Look, you know who the Bible is about, though? If I can take a little quick deviation here. This guy. Wait. This guy. This guy right here, Donald Trump. Starting the week by comparing himself to Jesus. Uh, received this morning. Beautiful. Thank you. It's ironic that Christ walked through his greatest persecution this very week. This very week where they are trying to steal your property from you. Just like Jesus. He's looking up at the cross and saying he's just like me. He's just like Mises. That's Trump, right? You have to see this verse and there it is. So, um, wait, Psalm? That's weird. That's like before the New Testament. Anyway, um, uh, God, it's a great Christian tradition to pretend to look back at the Old Testament and, and try pretend to see uh, Jesus uh, foretold in it. It's not, not actually there. It's not actually there, but whatever. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so so come and kind of mask off with his Messiah complex and look at this. Look what he's selling you. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood. Who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this. God bless. It's not just the Bible, chat. It's the Bible. It's like the book. Don't Mormons do something like this? Like, right? They've got like a... Well, I mean, obviously, they have the Book of Mormon, which is like a scripture apart from the Bible. But they also have like more stuff than that. Like, there's more... They keep on adding on. They keep on adding on. Uh, and... Uh, but like, this is what Trump's doing is like, yeah, the Bible, that's pretty good. Also the U S constitution, also the declaration of independence, also the song, God bless the USA, like the USA Bible. And just, I mean, this has become like, um, what is it like? What do you call those things? Like relics, right? Instead of it being about like, you know, Christianity is about forgiveness and love and you know, whatever Christianity is about, like it's about the Bible and it's about, <laughs> it's about the, your country. It's about the constitution, not for the, not for the actual, like, you know, what's in the constitution, not even for like who the founders actually were, which were people that set up a government, uh, you know, designed to be secular, designed to have a, um, you know, no established, um, official religion right uh but no we're gonna we're gonna retcon that we're gonna do a little retcon and be like no they were all christians so they they must uh be you know evangelical weirdos like us they you know they, they were kind of the opposite they were kind of the opposite but no we're gonna we're gonna take the constitution we're gonna fold it into the bible we're gonna get you a copy of lee greenwood's song proud to be an american where at least i know i'm free very important and very important to me i want to have a lot of people have it 
You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. You gotta, it's good for your heart and soul, yeah. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights. But I read them. I read them. I've read them. Rights you have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing. Religion and Christianity. From this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. <coughs> We've Excuse lost me. religion in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. I have many. In fact, in fact, my home is completely composed of Bibles at this point. I've had them redo my home, take out all the gold, and put in Bibles. So I got Bibles for my furniture. I got Bibles for my bed. It's just Bibles. Yeah, the pillow itself. The my I got Mike pillow to uh, grind up a Bible, grind up the pages, and stuff my pillow with it so I can sleep all uh, night on a holy, the holy relic of the holy pillow. It's a lot of people. It can, it, osmosis into my into my head, like it's all ground up, so it's you know easily digestible every night. Favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important. It's so missing, but it's going to come back and it's going to come back strong. Just yeah, remember, this is the guy that they asked what his favorite book of the Bible is. And he was like, I like all of them. You can't ask me to choose a favorite. That's like asking me to choose a favorite child. Like our country is going to. It's not going to be Don Jr. Come back strong. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God. Content? Trump, that's my job. What are you talking about? Content? The Bible is content? The, are, are you going to react to it? Like, what? what's... The Bible is content? We got to protect content that supports God and Jesus. And we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God and we got to defend God because it's not like he's God or something. You can defend himself and you could like zap everybody with lightning bolts uh, who's pissing him off. No, we got to defend God because God is itty bitty tiny weenie God. It's like it's the size of Trump's micro penis. In fact, God uh, in Trump's uh, in the Trump verse probably is Trump's micro penis. Public square and not allow the media or the left wing. What, yeah, we, we started this whole story, th this whole stream out with me talking about Carl Jung's uh, strange dream of going to a subterranean uh, cave and uh, being presented with a, a phallus and being told that this phallus was the, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. That's a. Uh, and now, now we found out that like the myth is true. It's it's the uh, the son of man here. Oh my God, chat! I have heard way too much about this messianic like Trump uh, worship that they're doing. Right? There's literally Christians out there that are like, yeah, Trump is the second coming, right? And whereas Jesus was the son of God, Trump is the son of man. And whereas Jesus preached nonviolence, Trump is like all about violence. And it, it's just, it's weird shit. It's, it's truly strange shit once you start to get into that rabbit hole. Um, I like the Bible, especially uh, Pikachu and Psycho Duck. <laughs> Silent censor or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. Perhaps. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, Chat. get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and... The legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation. If I told you I could give you a copy of the King James translation of the Holy Bible, complete with all the documents that it should have with it, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the uh, song um, Proud to be an American, God Bless the USA by uh, Lee Green Greenwood, how much would you pay for an amazing bargain like this? $100? $200? A thousand dollars? 
don't answer yet because if you call in the next 30 minutes you'll also receive like a, trump will sign the bible for you to bring our great nation back and to make he'll autograph the bible america great again i'm proud to partner with lee in this offering he's a very special man both as a talent but maybe even more so as a human being he's very very special and I think you all should. The last time he said very, very special people was about the January 6thers. Get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible Now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. So if you haven't guessed already, this is fundraising. Trump is not doing great all right this pretend billionaire is running out of money getting you know sued for huge lawsuits ha having huge judgments against him that uh you know he's he's only able to maybe pay now because he's got 10 extra days and they've reduced his uh his his bond um to to half of that but you know I'm like he's going to have to play, if they if they don't uh overturn the case on appeal he's going to have to pay like that 400 something you know almost half a billion which he apparently he does not have right and he's he doesn't have you know he's not fundraising uh he, like Biden is kicking his ass at fundraising um he's had to skip um you know, events at swing states, right? He's kind of running out of money. And he tried his gold sneakers. I don't think that worked. He tried his Trump NFT cards. I don't think that worked. So now he's trying to sell you. You know, you might have the Bible at home, but do you have the Trump Bible? Does it have God bless the USA? Does it have the Constitution? Does it have the Bill of Rights? If not, then you need to buy this stuff. And probably even if you do, you need to buy this stuff because Trump needs your money. And he's run out of scams. Oh no, oh no. Okay, we got, what is this? Pornography. Let's talk about the reality. You just said that the Jewish people battle pornography. You're the guy on Howard Stern doing all this wild stuff. You're the guy in videos you release yourself. It looks like your grandson or some kid that you're, table dancing on grinding on him you're grabbing i think it's your granddaughter it does we'll look look oh no oh no you're talking about my penis on air and and it, now that to, to be fair we're talking alex jones's penis to be specific so okay small, uh, and all the rest of this stuff and, and you're sitting there our, oh no this is what i'm talking about chat this is what i'm talking about do you see this costume he's got a shirt that's made of money it's got cat it's written in red puff paint i guess it's supposed to look like blood uh, the Candace Owens Jew, right, is is what's written on his shirt. Uh, he has filth written on his head. He's got like two like Israeli flag, ta you know, temporary tattoos on his face. Um, and am I missing anything? Oh yeah, the you know prosthetic, uh, giant nose prosthetic to look more like a like a like an anti-Semitic uh, trope. And and he's got this um, his got his this drink right here. <laughs> But now there are freaking communists PC. radicals. Thank you for invading my chat today. Much appreciated. Good to have you here. Hunter's hog is bigger than Jones's Johnson. I don't know. Why did I even have to think about this? Look, like, uh, like I, I just never want to have to think about the fact that, you know, Alex Jones has got a sex parts. That's, uh, you know, that's, I could just go without ever thinking of that, right? Um, but yeah, so in this this cup, He's going around, he's walking around, um, talking to the children, and he's like, are you Jewish children? Are there any Christian children around here? I gotta get some blood <laughs> for this cup, right? He's just, he's horrible, horrible, horrible man. He's so bad that Alex Jones can, like, look good next, dunking on him. Like, that's, that's how... Guy for 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 you know being let, let's just say wild i wasn't going to raise the fact that you got kosher dildos and butt plugs i would ask her are you wearing one now and then you I'll tell me <laughs> do you have a butt plug right now um may i answer yeah go ahead mr butt plug go ahead mr butt plug may i answer okay do you have a model called the holiness I... the holiness what the fuck wait is, is does has he been to the website is there actually a model called the holiness 
Oh my god. So yeah, that that went on. I don't know. I don't know. I guess if you're interested, we could uh, look into that more. He's is he at his gym? I think he just worked out. This guy's always he's good for these like impromptu um, videos that he makes. Hi, everyone. This is a personal message to Ben Shapiro. You know, Ben, when you first started in media, a lot of people compared the two of us. We were probably the only people on people on national television who had yarmulkes. People were, I'm, I'm older than you. People said you were following in my footsteps and building a name for yourself. I knew that was never the case because I... Okay, I'm going to be honest. Up until, um, up until, you know, shortly after October 7th, I had never heard of Rabbi Shmuley before. Now, granted, my, my understanding of him is he's the kind of guy that grifts around, uh, you know, evangelical, uh, you know, right wing Christian Zionist sort of spaces. So I'm not his demographic. Right. I'm not I'm not who he's going for. But I just I anyway, he's like, yeah, I, people were saying that you were following in my footsteps. Um, what? I never sought to be a conservative media pundit. I wasn't interested in talking about the slip of the Democrat of the day or is Biden, you know, should he be impeached or, you know, I wasn't into that. I was into promoting universal Jewish values, but you wore a yarmulke and you were on national TV and that was the Kiddush Hashem. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think it's time for you to do a reappraisal? Wait, wait, your wait. professional work, the Daily Wire in your life? If I feel like I've heard that phrase before, let's go back. Oh no, I pressed the wrong button. Doom, doom, doom. Jewish values, but you wore a yarmulke and you were on national TV and that was the Kiddush Hashem. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think it's time for you to do a reappraisal of your professional work, the Daily Wire in your life? If I would have been told when you first started that you would one day run a media company that employed for two years, past two years, a woman who emerged as the foremost female anti-Semite in America, a woman who defended Kanye's love of- Oh my God, this is what's so fucked up. Like, look, Rabbi Shmuley, I just showed you him, like, just acting like an absolute, I don't know what, I don't know what the world word for it is, right? Um, Shapiro's gonna have some choice words for this guy later when we watch the, uh, Pierce Morgan, uh, interview with Ben Shapiro, but, um, look, th this guy's a wreck. This guy's a garbage dump. This, I, I don't know what to say, right? But he is actually got a point. One that no, he. I'm not. I'm, you don't, in fact, have to hand it to him, and I'm. I'm not going to make that mistake of having to hand it to him. What I mean is, he's close to the truth here, and and the truth being that the Daily Wire did not have a problem with some of the most grotesque and and mask off examples of Candace Owens' anti-Semitism. They employed Candace Owens, might I remind you, after she made her statement about maybe Hitler wasn't. Wouldn't have been so bad if he didn't invade other countries, right? So, in other words, the stuff that he did in Germany, i.e. the Holocaust, that, that's not a problem. That's not something that Candace Owens identifies as, as being uh, bad necessarily, right? So, I mean, there's, there's a lot that she said. I mean, she, she did her thing with, you know, she was the foremost um, defender of Kanye. None of that stuff got her canned at the Daily Wire. It's only after, you know, she went on with Norm Finkelstein, only after she's you know, essentially espousing like a centrist viewpoint when it comes to Gaza. It's not, she's not like some brave, you know, she, she's not, you know, at the forefront of, of um, you know, Palestinian freedom, right? She's basically, you know, she, she's basically both sides in it, right? But that's too much for Shapiro. That's too much for the Daily Wire. And this is what finally got her fired. Not real anti-Semitism, but Rabbi Shmuley is like the, the worst person to talk about this. This is the guy that when Robert F. Kennedy was caught uh, hypothesizing theory building that maybe the, vi the the vaccine was built in a way to, um, you know, target uh, certain groups and to leave other groups, i.e., you know, in particular, uh, Ashkenazi Jews untouched, right? When, when he's spouting off at this weird, like, anti-Semitic, you know, theory involving a, a pandemic, right? Shmuley was there to say this guy did nothing wrong. This guy supports Israel, and so therefore he's okay. He's okay in my book. He's not an anti-Semite because would an anti-Semite support Israel? Um, sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. Lots of anti-Semites 
uh, do support Israel, and uh, they they love the idea that you know maybe even Jews and their nation would uh, would one day uh, move to Israel because they're anti-Semitic and they don't like Jewish people, right? They're this is the um, you know strange bedfellows um, phenomenon that's going on here uh, between uh, people like uh, Rabbi Shmuley and actual anti-Semites. So he's got no room to talk either, but he's you know he's he's close to the truth when it comes to Ben Shapiro, when it comes to calling them out, when 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 you when he says that like them firing. Candace Owens this late, this late after knowing this much about how anti-Semitic she is, it's just it's it it just paints them as an enormous hypocrites. Wrong button. Hitler. Right button. A woman who defended Kanye's accusation. Let's go back here. If I would have been told when you first started that you would one day run a media company that employed for two years, past two years. A woman who emerged as the foremost female anti-Semite in America. A woman who defended Kanye's love of Hitler. A woman who defended Kanye's accusations that Jews love money and Jews are parasites and leeches. You paid for all that, and then it only got worse. A woman who accuses rabbis, me, of murdering black celebrities, Michael Jackson, or trying to kill her. A woman who engages in the worst anti-Semitic tropes. Yeah, so if you missed it, she uh, implied that Michael Jackson's death was, I don't know, somehow caused by Jewish people uh, in his life. Um, that Jews run sex rings and Jews blackmail. Like that it wasn't just like a overdose, like, you know, the official story. She's got a conspiracy theory about Michael Jackson. Uh, she's got a conspiracy theory that she got from Kanye people, etc. A woman who accused your beloved Israel of genocide. Through all that, not only did you not fire her, and by the way, I'm, I'm not part of the cancel culture. I believe in the First Amendment. I'm a libertarian in my beliefs, but there are lines. Loving Hitler, loving those who love Hitler. No, I'm sorry. That genocide is the ultimate red line. But you didn't even speak out against her only once. And now look at I thought that the anti-Semitic issues with the Daily Wire were not necessarily. I mean, so just to just to do a little. Um, oh, God, what do they call it? Little readers out out of context here. Um, actually, Shapiro did say something in November. Uh, I think he might have even said something before november if i'm not mistaken but yeah no they were they were slow to react and and they hired her after knowing how anti-semitic she was the endemic i thought that they were limited to your cowardice on candace owens and her vitriolic disgusting anti-semitism accumulating in probably your need to fire her after she liked to tweet saying that i rabbi shemuli am drunk on christian blood the ultimate anti-semitic blood libel now i see the problems are endemic today your ceo What's his name? Jeremy Boring. Name very apt. <laughs> Actually, I mean, again, he's not wrong. Called me a whore. Really? You know, anti-Semitism flourishes on the Daily Wire. Misogyny, that kind of slut shaming men or women. Whore. Is that why you were? It's it's weird. It's weird how he's like a such a right winger, uh, but he wants to. He there's some things about liberalism that he likes, right? Like, yeah, don't don't slut shame. Yamaka and created a media company to engage in the kind of misogyny that had Candace Owens attacking a 70-year-old mother of three, the first lady of France, and trying to look at her genitalia to see if she was a man or a woman. Is that why you created it? Is the money worth it, Ben? I don't even know what he's talking about at this point. Omega-5, uh, Omega-star, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Grey Knight, Peep Across... Infallible Foul, Jim Williams, Peter Hopkins, Michael S. No, sorry. Uh, wait, am I missing somebody? No, that's everybody. Yeah, you you all just got weaseled. You all just got weaseled. And, uh, you know, if you can de-lurk yourself, uh, this is a good time to uh, thank Omega Star by posting some of those weasels in the chat. What does it profit a man to gain the world? and sell his soul. You know who said that? It was Jesus, it was a Jew. And I quote that specifically because so many of your followers are Christian. What do you gain from the money made by the Daily Wire if your money comes at the, comes at the expense of allowing your media outlet to become a sewer, 
a cesspit of anti-Semitism, Jew hatred, blood libels, hatred of Israel. So did it end with Candace Owens? It doesn't look like it because just today you're just. Oh shit, you know, I was talking about this too, right? Um, so I don't know for sure, but there are two Daily Wire hosts other than Candace Owens, who I can think of kind of drink from the same, you know, Christian nationalist trough, right? And, and that those being uh, Matt Walsh and uh, Michael Knowles, right? These are two people that have, you know, signaled, you know, approval of, of, of things like, you know, genocide against trans people, right? This is, you know, two, two people that are very much um, on the uh, Project 2025 train uh, knowingly. Disgusting CEO called. He's talking about the theory uh, of uh, transvestigating Macron's wife, put a legal target on the Daily Wire and force. Uh, oh, okay. Wait, I have heard. You're not. I've, I've heard a few people talk about this theory. This is the theory that Zara's talking about. That the theory is that it wasn't actually about either the anti Semitism or about, um, you know, Candace um, signaling kind of a lukewarm support. Uh, for Palestine, it, it's actually about the um, legal liability that the Daily Wire um, gets from Candace Owens making claims that Macron's wife is actually trans. This seventy-year-old, um, you know, first lady of France is is apparently a trans woman, according to uh, Candace Owens. But but of course, that's not how she says it. Uh, put a legal target on the Daily Wire to force the hand so she could get out of her contract. Interesting. And and we still don't know much about the. Um, well, it, it, again, we're gonna take a look and see if Ben Shapiro can shed any light uh, on us, uh, uh, like for us about uh, Candace Owens and uh, why exactly she was fired. Uh, she, he does get asked those questions by Pierce Morgan. Money is what he gains. Ego strokes are what he gains. False sense of self-worth is what he gains, uh, Mr. Shmuley. Same as you. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, Shmuley is a huge uh, hypocrite for a lot of this stuff. This too, a whore. He could have said many things about Shmuley. Short, fat. I mean, people do say that I get around, but I don't know about calling me a whore. Ugly, no, but a whore because misogyny is rife. You no, know, he gets he gets around his 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 marital bedroom is what I was saying, Chad. Not at the Daily Wire. Why else would you guys give a damn about the First Lady of France and try to humiliate that poor woman? And by the way, I really hope she comes after you. She has the resources that I don't. She has state resources, personal resources, because it's probably going to end up on her Wikipedia page that you guys. You know what's funny though is with the transvestigations, usually they they leave themselves an out. Usually they say it in a way where they they. At least it seems like maybe they don't have the same legal liability. Now, of course, in the UK, all bets would be off, right? Uh, British laws definitely support the accuser of a defamation case more than the accused, right? It's the opposite in the United States and somewhere, you know, similar similar in Canada, right? But um, I mean, I don't I don't know how this works. This is international law, like France to. The U.S. I don't know how this would work, but yeah, yeah, maybe he's right. At the Daily Wire, disgustingly, he spelunks in the marital caves. Yeah, disgustingly, um, try to prove that she was a man. You know how humiliating that is for her children. You're a father, Ben. Can you imagine if someone said that Ben Shapiro is really a woman, and that he has female genitals, and tried to prove it? You have a lot of haters out there. You have no idea what they might. Oh my God. Say about you. How gross would that be? But you paid for that. You funded all that, and now you're funding Jeremy Boring calling me a whore, a media whore. It's interesting to see who is the media whore here. Did I fund Candace Owens when she accused Israel of genocide? No, you did then. Did I fund Candace Owens when she said that Kanye can love Hitler and he's not an anti-Semite? No, you did Ben. Did I fund Candace Owens when she said that Jews are murderers and killers? No, I didn't, you did Ben. Who is the media whore here? But I don't use terminology like that. To all of my friends who actually fund this, to all of my friends who actually are uh, pay them the exorbitant monthly memberships at the Daily Wire. Do you realize what you guys are facilitating? Misogyny, attacking 70 year old women, attacking the Jewish people, attacking rabbis. Again, I'm not saying I'm above criticism, but whore, really? Always a misogynistic label.
The Daily Wire is becoming a cesspit. All with someone wearing a yarmulke. Yeah, it, I don't know. For some reason, it's funny to me to see, hear a, a conservative talk about anti or like talk about misogyny, right? The one place that you'll maybe hear this is from Terps. The, the one thing that you'll maybe hear this is, is when they'll, you know, if you're if you're in favor of uh, trans women being able to uh, participate in sports, uh, you, you might get called uh, misogynistic, right? But of course, they don't believe that. Of course, they don't mean that. Of course, they're okay with uh, other forms of misogyny. And it's a chil Hashem. It's a desecration of God's name. So I have two things to say. Number one, for those of you who support the Daily Wire, I'm not saying to stop, but stop for now. Take a pause and say that after the firing of Candace Owens, we want to make sure that anti-Semitism is not endemic in, at the Daily Wire. Sadly, at this point, I would say that uh, Rabbi Shmuley is uh, fully lol cowed, which is to say that if I look in these comments, I'm going to find haters and 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 little, very few supporters right so he's he's acting like hey you know if you're following me if you're a fan of me if you you, you know right maybe think about giving it a rest don't watch the daily wire anymore let's do a little boycott see how they like that right they're not going to notice it rabbi shmuley they're not going to notice it at all just because a guy with the amica runs it does not mean that it's not endemic we've had plenty of 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 jews who have been the only thing that's kind of saving him is that the anti-semites hate ben shapiro as well so trade their people. him fighting with ben shapiro i don't know maybe that's the best move for him number two i want to say ben shapiro you blew your cory booker moment cory booker was you blew cory oh cory booker moment okay as close to me as a brother i loved him he's not an anti-semite he loves israel he loves the jewish people but he was a political coward when Obama pushed him to vote for the Iran deal that would give these murderers and killers $150 billion, which somehow ultimately en ended up in their coffers um, for the October 7th massacre, I'm sure, I broke with him publicly. I passed my Cory Booker challenge, and he was a senator. You failed your Candace Owens challenge. And she's not a senator. She's a nothing. She's just a hater who hates women. She hates the black community. She said that George Floyd died of fentanyl. It was clear George Floyd was killed by a police officer. And that's what the American justice system also said. She's a, a black hater, a Jew hater, and she kind of hates you too. Be that as it may, that's the second point. Wait, kind of hates Ben Shapiro? Oh no, she hates Ben Shapiro. Third point, Ben and especially German. That's not a kinda, that's point. not a... I am hereby putting you on notice. Do not delete a single video of Candace or of yours on your website. Our attorneys today were already checking through and we've seen that you've deleted many. Don't delete any emails. Don't delete any exchanges between Candace and yourselves about me or about anyone else. Any of that will be considered tampering with evidence. You will be held accountable for defamation, libel. I'm sorry. You want to disagree with, with, with a rabbi, me, or anyone else, you have the right to. You want to defame me and say that Jews are murderers, killers, that we blackmail black artists, that we, uh, that we get, that, that you want to promote lies, that we drink Christian blood, that is a violation of American law of libel defamation, and you will pay for it. But Ben, ultimately, there's only one judge. He's up there. Okay, listen, listen. That if you're getting portrayed as a comic book villain, maybe like the words "you will pay for it" are, are not the ones that you want to choose. Just using the complaints about misogyny as a means to an end, sadly. that you wear for those of you who don't know yamaka means you're a malka i fear the king i fear how much fear of the king how much fear of god do you have then when for the past two years you funded facilitated paid for your outlet the daily war becoming one of the foremost purveyors of anti-semitism in america you know people like david zaslov david zaslov arguably is the most powerful media executive in america he's a uh, chairman and chief executive of time warner um discovery He's a friend of sorts because I once worked for him uh, as the host of Shalom in the Home. He came with me to Auschwitz. Could you imagine if he had Candace Owens working for him on CNN? I assume he would have fired her the first time she said it's okay to protect people who love Hitler. But you didn't then. Um, Rupert Murdoch is a great lover of the Jewish people. There are other things about him that well, people don't agree with, but he's always stood by Israel. Could you imagine if he had a Candace Owens? And he's a conservative outlet. Only you, Ben Shapiro, did that. And all of you Jewish followers or Christian followers of Ben Shapiro, who are paying the money that allowed Candace Owens to spew this stuff, need to rethink your monthly subscriptions. And finally, to Jeremy Boring, you called me a whore today. Who's the whore, Jeremy? I don't oh use God. language like that, but who's the whore? 
the rabbi who called out the queen of anti-Semitism on your airwaves or the man who paid her? Okay, okay. So we got a little uh, reading readers out of context here. Um, uh, the, the tweet, uh, Mr. Boring, only refers to Shmuley uh, being an attention whore. He doesn't say that uh, Jewish people are, you know. As I've avoided commenting on publicly on Rabbi Shmuley because, as far as I can tell, this man is an attention whore of the highest order. Oh, so this is a flashback. So yeah, I was talking about Matt Walsh and I was talking about uh, Michael Knowles as far as being maybe a little further down the Christian nationalist rabbit hole as some of the other people in the Daily Wire uh, potentially uh, do not want to get put on the wrong side of the culture war that's going on in the right right now, right? They're, they have more affinity, more in common with, uh, you know, count on the audience of uh, of Nick Fuentes and the Groypers, right? Um, and uh... But at the same time, I think one thing, the people that you're talking about, one thing that uh, annoys them is when they see, I think, I don't remember who tweeted, someone tweeted something like, if you're an American patriot, it means you're pro-Israel or something like that. Yeah. Um, right. th this, this idea that like, it is your patriotic duty to have this particular feeling about another country, no matter what the other country is. I don't care what country it is. Um, so that, that goes too far on that side of it. And I think they're kind of reacting. It's kind of what you're saying. Yep. They're reacting to that. I do think, um, I, so I, I do so think that I, there is something patriotic about supporting our allies because... So this is Standis, uh, this is Standis Owens. This is somebody that was in the, uh, in the Twitter space with Nick Fuentes and that Jeremy Boring uh, came into and inexplicably complimented uh, Nick Fuentes for his communication style, but also said that there were things that he was saying that were concerning, and just in a weird way where you couldn't tell, like, are you wait, are you concerned about what Nick Fuentes is concerned about? Or are you concerned about Nick Fuentes? I think he meant concerned about Nick Fuentes, but he was so reticent to to really take on these people because they have the power on the right, right? The Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring. Uh, this is this is Jeremy Jeremy Boring right here. Uh, they are on the the wrong side of this issues number wise numbers wise right so Matt Walsh you know saying that like you know I don't think that like you have a duty to support uh, Israel to form alliances and having formed those alliances and and if we're all operating in a kind of good faith where those alliances are this got deleted though apparently concerned then there is a kind of patriotic yeah but you don't have a but but you, don't, I you, you don't have a patriotic agree. you don't have a patriotic. <laughs> I you do not have a patriotic duty to, to support, support any Turkey. country Turkey that is not your own. Well, it's, I, so, I, I, so I will say that that I think that what that statement is missing is the the phrase at the end right now. Okay, so I don't think that you have a patriotic duty to eternally support any other country because circumstances change. The country, I mean, how many times have we seen alliances change and people end up right. on the other side of those alliances? But the the idea that in a conflict between a democratic ally and an actual terror group mm -hmm. that it, that it doesn't connect to any sort of, we're not talking about nationalism now, which is just attachment to country. We're talking about patriotism, which goes to underlying principle, that you have no duty at all to, to support a fellow democracy that is an ally in its own battle for survival. That seems to me to, to raise some the, patriotism principles the in the same way that raise patriotism principles to say that if Hitler were about to overrun Britain, people who are saying, well, you know what, it, it, it doesn't implicate the United States at all, or patriotism at all, to watch Hitler overrun Britain. And it seems like it kind of implicates patriotism to watch Hitler overrun Britain. And, and again, I don't think that, they, that Matt Walsh is standing on any sort of principle or is saying this out of concern for the Palestinian people. I think it is 100% um, that, that he likely holds some anti-Semitic views, that, again, allegedly, uh, but, but just based on... Um, his uh, his religious affiliation. Uh, it's 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 more likely than you think. Yeah, there's the Nick Fuentes thing, and then Candace Owens has been eating on this Christ is King thing. Okay, so Jeremy Boring. Uh, oh.
I hate that Twitter lets people write books. How is saying Christ is King anti-Semitic the same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it's used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism? It's uh, like saying, how does a shovel become a murder weapon when it is used to murder someone? It isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Saying Christ is King is not innately anti-Semitic. It's uh, all about how you say it. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist if I say it to my three-year-old when she is refusing to eat her dinner. If I start saying it in response to uh, X post by Twitter post by black commentators I don't like, it has taken on a meaning beyond what is innate. In other words, it is connotatively, he is, motherfucker is out here yapping about denotation and connotation on Twitter.com. It is connotatively racist, not denotatively racist. So uh, to Christ is King, may, though uh, Christ is King may be anti Semitic in a connotation. Well, not in it. Uh, you can't fucking like. I mean, the 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 ability to post like essays like this on X on on Twitter uh, that comes with a blue check. I think I think has given people the feeling that they can actually be like listened to through this stuff, and and they they can't. I mean, it's not like nobody's gonna read this. Um. Anyway. Um. Yeah. It doesn't even show up unless you click uh, show more. So. Uh. That's. Jeremy Boring, uh, of course, you know, tweeted out Daily Wire and Candace Owens have uh, ended their relationship. Here's Dave Rubin on Candace. Uh, first off, um, the cleanest way I can tell you this is that when, when Candace started getting real famous and the Kanye thing happened and everything else, one day out of nowhere, she unfollowed me on Twitter. So I had sort of helped her get to a certain extent. And then she unfollowed a bunch of people. Like she had a bunch of people that she followed. And then, and then she unfollowed me. So I took that sort of as like a mark of just like, and I'm not trying to create shit here. I really am not actually. Uh, but I just kind of took that of a mark of like, oh, like there is a limit to our friendship. Like it was sort of transactional for you to a degree. Then, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she changed her phone number. Oh yeah. She didn't tell hey, me. Hey, Soul Life, you're right. You're right. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Um, yeah, yeah. She was a very different person until she found her groove as far as the, her, you know her grift right it's hard to tell it's hard to tell what if uh, anything kenda Owens actually believes in right uh so i and i needed to contact her about something and i had to go around away so it's like i don't know if, if you were friends with someone would you be doing that but again i'm not doing this for drama purposes i'm doing this to clean up some of the nonsense around this now have i agreed with her positions on israel and gaza obviously not obviously not She's gotten into it uh, with me on Twitter a couple times. I, I would say in a fairly disrespectful way when, it, when if you are friends with someone, you can take it offline and deal with it that way. So that's really what I meant by that. Um, by the way, I take no pleasure in that. Yeah, Leonidas, I would agree. I, I'm just telling you the reality as it is. I would also say that, you know, one of the things that I think helped me stay sane throughout all this, because, you know, friends come and go and fame comes and go and clicks come and go and all of that stuff, is that I have friends from before all this. Um, so yeah, there's David, Dave Rubin. Uh, oh yeah. I like zoned out. I can't, I can't watch Dave Rubin. Apparently he's too boring to about black outlets or black media. Outlets. Here's, um, usually... so this is a uh, limey giving her two cents about the people, uh, trotting out, uh, Candace Owens. So she has made some statements that seem to be an attempt for her to retcon her anti-blackness away. And I mean, maybe it's from, you know, cutting ties with the Daily Wire and, and knowing that, you know, she's going to need uh, support. Uh, I don't know, you know, like like how people are, are taking it, uh, if, if people are buying it. You know, I, I do see some people taking her support for Palestine a little bit more seriously than even what she's saying, because if you read what she's saying, she's not she's not like supporting uh, you know, Palestine, she's just being, um, you know, just kind of a centrist. She's just writing the fence about this one. But uh, for the Daily Wire, that is uh, that's out of line. You, you saw what they did with Matt Walsh. They shut him right down, you know, when he was. And, and again, just like Candace, just like Matt Walsh, I think Candace's, um, you know, support for Palestine has a lot more uh, to do with anti-Semitism than it does uh, with any uh, more any moral, you know, issues with the, the war crimes that are going on right now in Gaza. Anyway, let's see what uh, Limey has to say. I 
I usually really don't like to say too much about black outlets or black media outlets when I see them doing problematic because I really try to give grace to the black people on these outlets who feel pushed and pulled in different directions by corporate interests and yada yada yada. And so I don't be trying to say nothing too much when I see all these black outlets rolling out these right wing fucking nut jobs and pundits and shit. But these bringing out Candace Owens should be ashamed of their fucking selves. Candace Owens is an entire white supremacist. And worse than that, she's a fucking grifter because she doesn't believe the shit she says. This is a woman who wanted to be on the left. And when that didn't work for her, she pivoted right, married a white, yep. white man, and then spends all of her fucking time blaming black people for every tragedy that happens. Look this woman up. Look at what this woman has had to say about George Floyd, about Ahmaud Arbery, about Breonna Taylor. This is a fucking clan member. And during election season, this is who you see? Your black outlets rolling out. It's a damn fucking shame. It was the worst part. The only reason she's even bothering to go on this little fucking press tour and all these black outlets is because the Daily Wire has dropped her ass. That's why. Because her right wing money is starting to dry up just a little, little, little bit. Her relationships are being strained. And that's the only reason she bothered to fucking roll her ass on over there to act like she give a fuck about what I hate, what I hate is a bunch of black outlets and black media personalities who have audiences, black audiences and community who trust them. That's who the fuck they trotting out for. Like, what does it say about us that a black woman could spend all her time being a fucking white supremacist, a right wing talking point and like a, a right wing talking head and just like, yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine. After years, years of actively harming the black community day in, day out. Yeah, yeah, come up on here. Let's crack little jokes. It's a fucking shame. Yeah, anyway, yeah, oh, Kenneth, uh, I think, uh, went on the, the Breakfast Club, uh, uh recently. Uh, um, I usually really don't. The cleanest way I can tell you. No, okay, let's get away from, uh, Nick. Slippery Nick. Booger Nick. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So Pierce Morgan versus Ben Shapiro. There's not much versus here, but we'll see what there is between these two. See if sparks fly. You're going to co-host a fundraiser for Donald Trump. Yesterday, Trump said this. Uh, you have to finish up your war. You have to finish it up. You got to get it done. Did he mean Israel should be able to continue to try and eliminate all of Hamas? Or did he mean they should bring things to an end now and they should now move to try and find peace? The world does not seem to have the attention span to maintain any level of support for anyone, whether you're talking about Ukraine or whether you're talking about Israel, for a prolonged period of time in a war against a, a, a terrible enemy. And so when President Trump says something like, you need to finish this up, I think that he's speaking a baseline truth there. A majority of people in Israel want to get rid of Netanyahu. What the polls show is that Israelis would love to have another election, but they've had five elections in four years. It's, it's always sort of weird when people talk about Israel needs a new election. They have more new elections than Taylor Swift has outfit changes during one of her concerts. I am dressed up as a Candace. No. What is your reaction to that? Truly. I mean, the phrase in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilo Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. I was going to guess lol cow, but no, desecration of God's name is what that means. Do you think he should be given airtime? anymore and that sort of behavior is is just what he is he is that that's the kind of virality that shmuley has right it's the it's the very lowest form of virality of like i am going to make myself a, a fucking clown and uh and see if i can get some attention this is like the disgusting in any context frankly i don't know an orthodox jew who feels differently about that what is up with his music that not one candace owens who's now left daily wire was she fired Okay, enough of the sizzle reel. President enough Biden of the sizzle reel. President Netanyahu has collapsed over the rising Palestinian death toll. Now Donald Trump has warned it's time for Israel to finish up the war as it hemorrhages international support. So can and should Israel press on alone to discuss this and much more? I'm joined by the Daily Wire's editor emeritus and host of the Why? United States of Biden on Daily Wire. Why is Crowder here? Ben Shapiro. Ben, great to see you. Hey, good to see you, Pierce. How are you? You know, hanging in. How are you? <laughs> Awful wonder how many people ask you that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get that too much. So I was kind of surprised by the question, uh, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to come to uh, some stuff that's involved you recently. But let's start with Israel. Um, you're going to co-host a fundraiser for Donald Trump. 
Crowder is coming up. Okay, we're going to cover uh, Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, uh, get that out of the way first. And then we're going to look into the war that's going on. So like I said, there's a, so there's a culture war, a civil war, whatever the hell you want to call it in the right wing right now. There's two fronts to that. One is uh, Candace Owens, uh, Ben Shapiro, Daily Wire. The other is Steven Crowder versus Hillary Crowder. And yes, I do mean the divorce of Steven Crowder. That That's what's going on. That's what's been politicized. So um, yeah, the personal is, is political, especially when it comes to right wing drama, I guess. Yesterday, Trump. I got to pee. Be right back. That being said, uh, you have to finish up your war. Oh, yeah, wait, this is interesting. You got to get it done. And uh... so what do you think he meant there? You got to finish up your war. You got to finish it up. Get it done. Right, there's two interpretations here. One is that Trump is saying that Trump is saying, you know, what what's kind of hard to deny at this point, which is that this incursion into Gaza has been horrible for Israel's public image, horrible for Israel's diplomatic standing in the in the world, right? And that uh, you know, also bad for the United States is Trump is Trump giving up the ghost as far as supporting. Uh, Israel's uh, war crimes here, or is it more like something like, no, they got to finish. They got to, they got to go in and get those last terrorists. They got to, is he saying they got to go into Rafa, right? You could take it either way. And maybe they did this on purpose. Maybe, they, maybe Trump wanted to be able to have two ways that he could be understood so that he can uh, take the upside to both and, and the downside to neither. I don't know, Chad, you tell me what you think. Uh, I'm sure I will be that. right I back after course. I have emptied my bladder. Uh, and I will say, Israel has to be very careful because you're losing a lot of the world. You're losing a lot of support. But you have to finish up. You have to get the job done. And you have to get on to peace. What did you make of what he said there? There's been a bit of disagreement about what he intended to mean. Did he mean Israel should be able to continue to try and eliminate all of Hamas, whatever it takes to finish that job? Or did he mean they should, they should bring things to an end now? They've done enough and they should now move to try and find peace. So I actually did host, co-host a, a fundraiser with President Trump last week, and we did briefly speak about this topic. My impression is that President Trump is saying what is certainly true here, which is that the, the clock has been ticking on Israel literally since October 7th in terms of finishing up its operation. The world does not seem to have the attention span to maintain any level of support for anyone, whether you're talking about Ukraine or whether you're talking about Israel, for a prolonged period of time in a war against a, a, a terrible enemy. And so when President Trump says something like, you need to finish this up, I think that he's speaking a baseline truth there, which is that Israel does need to hurry and, and finish this up. And frankly, they should have been moving faster in the first place. I think it's more of a PR point than it is an idea that Israel should, should stop, for example, by, by not going into Rafah. I, I don't think that's what President Trump is saying there. Do you feel comfortable, but we've talked about this war a lot. Do you feel comfortable about a full assault on Rafah if one and a half million people remain in that vicinity, including majority women and children? Because it would obviously be, in that instance, devastating in terms of civilian casualties and would pour even more pressure on Israel and lose them even more support. I mean, do you, do you think this is the right strategy? Well, I think that Israel is, is pretty united in its belief that it is. And Israel, I think, is best positioned to adjudicate its own interests when it comes to things like, like you're talking about, whether it's international support or the future of, of the Gaza Strip. My understanding is, from, from all of the public discussions that have been happening, that there's significant discussion about how to try to move civilians out of the way. One of the big problems has been that Egypt won't open the gate, even temporarily, to allow enough civilians outside of Rafah so that Israel can perform operations inside of Rafah. Apparently, there are four Hamas battalions that are currently located inside of Rafah. I'm sure that if the United States or the international community could offer Israel some sort of Harry Potter spell to disappear all of the Hamas terrorists inside Rafah, I'm sure Israel would take it. The last thing Israel wants to do is maximize civilian casualties. What's been perfectly obvious is that Hamas has precisely the opposite view. They would love to maximize civilian casualties because the, the increasing civilian death toll, as you've pointed out, has been the single factor that's been leading to increased pressure on Israel to leave Hamas alone. What do you make of Biden... Uh really turning on Netanyahu. I mean, this, this right, we are back. not to veto we are so back. revolution is the latest escalation, really, in the American administration under Biden reining back its support of Israel. How significant is that? And what do you think about Biden doing this? I mean, obviously, I think that he's morally wrong to, to abstain from a resolution that seems to disconnect 
the hostage situation from the ceasefire, all of the versions the United States had been pushing prior suggested that in order for a ceasefire to be called for or attained, there had to be a release of the hostages. This particular version of- Yeah, so the U.S.'s uh, ceasefire proposal was bullshit. Was bullshit. It, w it wasn't really a ceasefire um, proposal at all. And uh, that's why it got rejected in the UN. And uh, I think the one that passed was actually a uh, Russia and China backed resolution, which, um, you know, called simply called for an end to the conflict and for the hostages to be returned. That's uh, and then that actually passed not because the United States endorsed it, but because the United States abstained from it. And that is. That's more than we've seen from the U.S. Um, as far as as far as, you know, um, not backing this kind of stuff. UN resolution sort of separates off the two issues, doesn't mention Hamas, doesn't mention October 7th. That's that's the point of contention with regard to the UN Security Council resolution the United States abstained from. As far as the sort of increased pressure that, that Biden or Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader here, have been putting on the Netanyahu administration, frankly, I think it's it's political dishonesty. I think that there, there are a lot of members of the Democratic Party who are very critical of Israel's government full scale. They're trying to put it on Netanyahu because they realize that a lot of the sort of liberal Jewish base in the United States that votes Democrat supports Israel, but also doesn't like Netanyahu very much. But they're ignoring the central reality in Israel, which is that there is full scale public support for going into Rafah from right, left and center. The current government of the state of Israel is a war cabinet, including the chief rival to Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh, yeah, I think I know what you're saying, uh, Gus. Yeah. So the the, the whole um, proposal that they're they're the, what Israel seems to be saying is that like, well, that's not our fault. It's Egypt. Egypt should open their uh, borders, open their gates. Right. And and let the Palestinians like, you know, then then they can go in and, and finish off Hamas in um, Rafa and, and like, right. So they always want to they always want to blame somebody else for the civilian um, casualties or for the immiseration and starvation of uh, the Palestinian uh, people, including like, you know, a lot of children that's going on right now. And um, yeah, like the the reason that that doesn't work is because it, it's very likely that they wouldn't be allowed back. It would be a means, uh, you know, put like a, a humanitarian open of the Egyptian uh, border uh, would not be temporary. It would be permanent. Th those people would not be allowed back into their homes. Netanyahu Benny Gantz, who just vote, who just visited the United States, and in fact was treated to much of the same language by the Biden administration. So, so to suggest that it's sort of Netanyahu's own political domestic manipulations leading to his desire to go into Rafa, Netanyahu is in fact correct when he suggests that there is broad public support for going into Rafa. And in fact, if the current war cabinet does not go into Rafa, there's a very solid chance that the government of Israel falls in their new elections. I mean, th that is true about the support, definitely. But it's also true that a majority of people in Israel want to get rid of Netanyahu. So this is a support for- But not during the, not during, not during the actual conflict, right? What the polls right. show is- And not for the right reasons either. It has to do with stuff that Netanyahu did before October 7th. That Israelis would love to have another election but not right at the moment, meaning that they've had five elections in four years. It's, it's always sort of weird when people talk about Israel needs a new election. They have more new elections than Taylor Swift has outfit changes during one of her concerts. It's not as though there's a lack of elections. I do find it sort of strange that there's always a call for new elections in Israel, which again, has many, many elections. I have yet to hear for a call for elections in say the West Bank or Gaza Strip where there has not been an election since 2005. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because everybody understands if there were an election in the Gaza Strip or West Bank, Hamas would actually win. What I don't understand about Israel's and why is that? What? Why? Why? Why would it be that a militant faction that is seen as uh, as as taking on the forces that have killed tens of thousands of people, including like you know majority of of women and children? Why is it that 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 would be? That that political faction would win over a political faction that was um, talking about compromise, that was viewed themselves as as being somewhat compromised. Why 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 do you suppose that is Ben? Strategy is how they perceive actual victory. Yes, you can take out the thirty to thirty five thousand Hamas terrorists. Yeah, maybe they can do that, and maybe in the process of that they kill tens of thousands more civilians and have to deal with the. Uh, with the uh, contention that that will cause worldwide. And maybe Israelis don't care about that part as long as they get rid of Hamas. So let's get to an end game where Hamas has gone. Why does leveling Gaza and killing so many civilians, why would that give anyone an Israel? Yeah, good point, Bella. Like, like talking about holding an election in Gaza right now, 
what are you talking about? Every civic institution, and I, and I mean as far as infrastructure, I mean as far, as far as buildings, and and as far as you know, the 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 institution itself has been decimated and destroyed. I mean, doctors have been targeted, journalists have been targeted, um, you know, you know, government, um, like offices targeted. How are they going to run an election? What are you even talking about, Ben? Well, any kind of comfort that that would that would kill off the ideology that fueled Hamas, that it wouldn't actually just lead to an increase in that ideology, more hatred towards Israelis, more hatred towards Jewish people. I've never quite understood what the end game looks like here for Israel that makes Israel more secure. Well, I mean, the end game presumably is security, not a sort of dynamic ideological scoring among a population that right now overwhelmingly supports the October 7th attacks and prior to October 7th, overwhelmingly supported terror attacks against the state of Israel and overwhelmingly supported the destruction of the state of Israel. The sort of idea that more conciliation from Israel was bringing about peaceful conditions with the Palestinian Authority or with Hamas has been obviously proved false by the fact that Israel literally withdrew all IDF forces from the Gaza Strip in 2005. Hamas took control. They spent the last 20 years turning it into a giant terror base. From the Israeli perspective, my assumption is that what they are figuring is degrade Hamas's military capacity such that they cannot be an offensive threat to the state of Israel, and then try to enact some sort of military control of the area sufficient to prevent any future threat from arising from that area. I'm sure that Israel would love to hand the area over to Egypt. Egypt says no. Egypt doesn't want any part of it. Israel would love to hand it over to Jordan. Jordan says no. Jordan Again. doesn't want any part of it. Israel's tried to hand it over to the Saudis, to the UAE, to the United States, to literally anyone. No one wants to run that area specifically because the population is already quite radicalized and was radicalized before October 7th. And so what you're probably going to end up with, and I said this, I think, the first time I appeared on the show, which was shortly after October 7th in, in this context, what you're probably going to end up with is some form of joint military rule in the Gaza Strip in which Israel has the intelligence capacity to go in and conduct raids in, in terror hotbeds the same way that they do right now, for example, in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, places like Janine, places like Nablus. The IDF is constantly attempting to go in and root out terror cells in these particular areas. One of the big flaws that led to October 7th was the fact that Israel had no forces on the ground and no actual intelligence capability inside the Gaza Strip. One of the consequences of this war has been a lot of very high passions on both sides, a lot of angry disagreements. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave her for- Here we go. Here we go. This is the part we want to know about. What's your answer, Ben? I'm not going to speak to this topic. Topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight. Just say don't push. Just do the Jimmy Lee, Ben, and say don't don't push. Insight into why she. He doesn't like follow up questions. Departed. No hints. No nothing. I'm not going to speak. Don't to push. Can, can I ask? Can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no. I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um. Again, you can ask. You can ask. <laughs> what is? What a little troll. <laughs> I mean, I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them, however contentious. I mean, su suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position with The Daily Wire. I'm a co-founder of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. Oh, my God. I've never oh, my God. This is not an argument that I'm used to hearing from a right winger. Right. This is usually the argument that they're, they're they, 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 they call anything and everything like even like, OK, to a right winger. Me vociferously disagreeing with Ben's opinion on something, and saying in a way that do, that doesn't like, you know, cut Ben the benefit of the doubt. That is that is a violation of the freedom of speech, right? If I make him look uh, bad because of his 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 viewpoint, I've violated his freedom. Like they'll call anything a violation of uh, freedom of speech, but in this case, uh, they're the ones who who want to assert the fact that like it's our platform, and you know we got to put. We're not the government. We're not. Candace can say whatever she wants. She just can't do it on 
our platform. Candace or anyone else for that matter to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, it's, I'm just not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments had been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, Piers. No comment. Okay. Rabbi Shmuley. No comment, dude. Comment on Rabbi Shmuley. Jeremy has actually That's a mood. Rabbi Shmuley. So I've avoided commenting publicly on Rabbi Shmuley because as far as I can tell, the man is an attention whore of the highest order. Is that the general position of the company on Mr. Shmuley? I mean, that, that, that's my personal position for sure. I mean, I, I think that, you know, Rabbi Shmuley happens to be a person with whom I agree on some matters related to, say, Middle East policy. And uh, I, I also believe that his devotion to camera and notoriety have made him do some untethered things in, in recent days. I mean, there's a clip, I'm just going to play it, and you can comment or otherwise, but it was extraordinary to me. We've had him on this show a few times, but I found this really quite extraordinary. Let's take a look. Forum is a day of celebration. We feel bad for Candace Owens that she lost her job. So I figure with her image of what Jews are supposed to look like, why not val at least validate her? I am dressed up as a Candace Owens Jew. Now, this is not a Christian child, this is a Jewish child. But if it would be, I got my Christian blood. Mmm, spicy, delicious. I got my Jewish nose. I have filth, because Jews are all filth. And more than anything else, what does AD have? Money! I mean, what is your reaction to that, to that clip? I mean, the phrase in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilol Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. And that sort of behavior is, is disgusting in any context. Uh, and uh, frankly, I don't know an Orthodox Jew who feels differently about that, not one. Do you think he should be given airtime anymore, Rabbi Shmuley? I mean, I'm not going to make decisions about who should air him and, and who should not. Uh, what I will say is that the, that, that sort of behavior is untethered from reality and, and makes a mockery of much of the uh, the mission Wait, for, for people like me. What was he doing there? Because, like, the one person that I can think of that has platformed Rabbi Shmuley perhaps more than anyone else is Pierce Morgan. Was that bait? Was that, like, do you think that we've been maybe a little bit irresponsible by platforming? Do you want to argue, you, you who have already violated Candace Owens' freedom of speech by firing her, do you want to, do you want to also, uh, I don't know. It, so it sounds like he's trying to bait him. He's just, he's a debate bro. Pierce Morgan debate bro. Which includes fighting anti-Semitism. Yeah, but I get a lot of people, actually, after his most recent appearance here, just saying, this guy does not speak for most Jewish people like me. And they, they write in their droves and they say, please stop having someone on the... Well, I mean, that, I mean what he's like doing a... there certainly doesn't speak for literally any Jew that, I can, that I've heard of right. or know. I mean, I can't speak to his positions on Israel again. You know, my positions on Israel speak for my positions on Israel, but that's a different story from dressing up in a Sturmer costume uh, to, to mock anti-Semitism. I think that that's quite you know, counterproductive and, and especially given the, the online discourse pretty, pretty negative in, in pretty much every way I can think of. Yeah. Russia and what happened there was a terror attack by ISIS-K. Um, people have made some parallels i said look there's a massive terror attack. okay so massively uns unsatisfying right we get a little bit of tea about rabbi shmuley i guess because he's such an easy dunk i guess because he's just a lol cow at this point that like what's ben shapiro gonna do like you know he's not worried about you know he's worried about the beef with candace owens it's not going well for him uh chat i predicted this i said that when can't when and if and when because I, I i predicted that it was just a matter of time uh, Candace Owens leaves the Daily Wire, she's going to do so with a large chunk of their audience. And I think she's done exactly that. It, it sh He doesn't want to talk about it because this shit is harming his company. And anything that he says is going to be, exp is going to be, you know, it it's going to be um, exploited by, by his, uh, his enemy now, Candace Owens. Like, right, she's... It, She's just a better operator at this stuff. She knows what she's doing. She understands propaganda. She understands optics. She she's she's playing, you know, eight dimensional chess compared to Ben Shapiro and the rest of the Daily Wire. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe that's the smart thing to do. I mean, I would love to, <laughs> I would love to have more tea, but we're not going to get it today. Not from Ben Shapiro, at least.
attack on the heart of Russia in Moscow, uh, 130 people brutally murdered. Putin uh, and the Kremlin know where these terrorists came from and of a specific area. Would it be logical, given the way that Israel responded to uh, the Hamas attack on October the 7th, for Putin to go and do the same thing that Israel's done in Gaza to the area where these terrorists came from? I mean, so first of all, Putin has done that historically many times over, whether you're talking about Chechnya or whether you're talking about other areas. Uh, as far, and nobody okay, I feel like that's, that's pretty much all there is to glean from uh, this particular piece of content. Let's see, um, the only other thing I want to try to find is maybe Jeremy Boring on that Twitter space. I mean, they talk in this interview about, let's see, Rabbi Shmuley, Moscow terror attack, conspiracy theories, and the internet, Don Lemon and Elon Musk, uh, Baltimore Bridge epidemic, uh, you know, Baltimore Bridge incident, fentanyl. Oh, he rehashes the, uh, do you want to see that? He They rehash their discussion of guns. I don't think it's very interesting. I mean, you, you know what these two, you know, how they feel about uh, guns already. You know, Pierce Morgan is no one's liberal, no one's lefty, not by any stretch of the imagination, at least not in the UK. Uh, but, you know, even he, when he looks at the United States and sees like just constant, uh, you know, mass shootings, school shootings, all kinds of fucked up shit, right? He says, why is America doing this to itself? It doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't it make more sense since guns are uh, you know, like, and he, well, I don't know. Let's just, oh God, I don't know, Chad. It, it feels like I'm, yeah, no, we've got a limited amount of time. I gotta, I gotta, I would love to get into that. But yeah, basically, you know, it's the same. Uh, they're trying to rehash the debate this time with uh, Ben Shapiro or with, with Pierce saying, you think that fentanyl is bad and therefore it shouldn't be allowed in the country. But when you said that guns you know, there was a problem with guns in the United States. Why then do you think that maybe those should not be allowed in the country either? And and, she, and his answer is that, well, our Constitution guarantees us a right to, uh, to firearms and our Constitution does not guarantee ourselves the right to fentanyl. Thank you very much, uh, Pierce. Get, get spanked, basically. He does. He actually says that. Chat. You'll have to trust me. He says get spanked. Okay, I don't know. I've got a choice of evils here, chat. Because we are about to get into the Steven Crowder material. We're about to transition over into, into a new subject. Are you ready? Uh, ben Shapiro has cited court cases by neo-Nazis uh, that graffiti swastikas on synagogues because uh, Ben Shapiro told us they are not... Nazis listen to Shapiro. That's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, I, look, when you bring together Matt Walsh and uh, Michael Knowles, even if Ben Shapiro wasn't in, in and of himself attracting the far right, and I think he is, I think I, I think he is like he's like, you know, is he their favorite? Uh, you know, are they, no, but but he was what they had. He was their gathering point. This was their community. And, um, you know, bringing in Candace also probably a gambit for maybe, uh, you know, bringing, you know, bringing in uh, more elements of that far right community. And she, you know, she, she entered peacefully enough, but she did not leave peacefully. And there's a, just a huge hole ripped in the daily wire. They are bleeding members. They are bleeding support. You know, it's, it's essentially, they are being declared the rhinos. They are the, um, you know, they are the liberals uh, to the, to the, to the Nazis and, and the um, Christian nationalists of the Candace Owen Owen's contingent, so. I've been transitioning for the past four years, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're already there. Already there in the new topic of, of Steven Crowder. So we touched on this topic yesterday. Actually, I feel like we more than touched on it. Yeah, yesterday was supposed to be about Keffels. Keffels kind of got upstaged by Steven Crowder, right? 
as far as is who's got the juicy drama as far as who is the little cow it's it's definitely uh it's definitely looking like uh like steven crowder uh but you know i mean like there, there's a battle there too there's two different sides there are people supporting uh steven crowder and again like i can't emphasize enough how much of a motivating factor how much of a um how much of the glue of the movement of the new right wing movement is like divorced dads and the court didn't treat me fairly and uh the left wing tells me that i'm a misogynist and that women experience misogyny and yet here i am you know not getting custody of my kids or whatever right it's it's the it's this weird you know they have a story about the court system they have a story about divorce court they share it with each other and they recognize each other as right wingers i don't know it's it's this uh it's a phenomenon that's going on uh right now and it is actually like i it sounds weird because i'm talking about something like kind of cultural kind of personal and i'm relating it to something political but the personal is political it, 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 it it's very rude and the culture is upstream of politics so we're gonna look into this it's it's interesting in more than just a uh look there's one element and i don't blame you if you're here if you're here to see the drama of of chud versus chud okay you're gonna see that that's what we've got they're fighting it out now steven crowder uh, in his marriage is the battleground that's the that's the battleground we saw yesterday some wild stuff and i kind of wanted to follow up on that um so we saw we heard that somehow not gay jared had got a hold of the address where steven crowder's kids stayed or were staying while he had custody or i don't know how that works right uh some place where the kids were right and that um that, that somehow that he he's he's implying that not gay jared is like the only one because they've done everything that they can um in terms of gerald gerald yeah we got gerald don't get him mixed up right because gerald is not not gay okay but jared is not gay so we got not gay jared and then we got not not gay gerald gerald is the guy that came out uh yesterday apparently steven crowder for whatever reason decided not to appear on his own stream on his own channel and instead we got gerald a very boring video by gerald trying to defend uh steven crowder but also releasing what looked like receipts with the claim that there's a big ass conspiracy of uh you know kind of like the the big ass conspiracy against poppy and xena if you listen to their streams uh lately there's a big conspiracy out there of people that are trying to bring uh down uh steven crowder that 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 essentially the law strategy of uh, Hillary Crowder, uh, Stephen's ex-wife, is one of optics, is one of PR, and making Stephen's PR so bad that he has to come to them. He has to come to uh, her legal team begging, begging to make it stop, rather than trying to win the court case, according to uh, Gerald. Gerald, is it Gerald? Gerald's the guy from uh, The Witcher, right? That's Gerald, Gerald the White or whatever. Am I right, Chad? Do I know video games? Am I even close? But we're, I think his name is Gerald. I think it's not not gay Gerald, and uh, not so not gay uh, Jared is is on Team Hillary. Uh, not not gay Gerald is on Team Steven Crowder. Team Crowder. I thought Crowder brought himself down. Wow, this conspiracy goes all the way to the top. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to believe, but I did want to like take a look at those um though because they got they do have receipts. They showed receipts. Here's what's annoying though. Let me see if I can pull up that video again. Can I leave it out? Crowder in deep shit. That's a majority report. I'm going to pull it up again, unfortunately. Here we go. Let's go. New story. Okay. 
God, I can't help but scroll my feed a little bit to just be like, what else is going on? Has anything... Oh, no, the Chapo boys have something to say about this? Oh, no, Chad, I wanted to transition to stories, but now, for some reason, I don't, I don't even know. For some reason, Chapo... I, I guess it's because we've been let down by so many people, like, in terms of... Uh, you know, uh, Vosh and stuff like that, that like Chapo seems like not so bad. I used to think they were kind of doomery, like that, that like, like I enjoy, you know, the humor and stuff. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, edgy. Sometimes it's, you know, kind of, kind of punches down still. Um, I didn't enjoy that part, but um, I always sort of felt after listening to Chapo, I didn't feel motivated to do anything. I felt, you know, just disillusioned and like, you know, a lot of the the humor is just like, we live in hell world. This is the worst of all timelines. But um, anyway, they have something uh, real short and sweet to say here about Candace Owens leaving the Daily Wire. I got to see what it is, Chad. I got, I can't, I can't help myself. Will not be making it into the land of milk and honey. Here's someone who will not be making it into the land of milk and honey and will not be uh, with Hashem uh, when she dies. And that's Candace Owens, who has finally got around to being fired from the Daily Wire for hating Jews. And I just got to say, I give the Daily Wire a lot of credit for hiring her in the first place. <laughs> it rocks. Uh, and uh, I'm a fan of hers now. It says oh, no. that prominent right wing commentator Candace Owens has left the Daily Wire, the website founded by conservative commentator Ben Shapiro, after months of promoting anti Semitic ideas. In a statement posted to social media Friday morning, Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring said the company and the pundit have ended their relationship. <laughs> it says in a Thursday appearance on the Breakfast Club radio show, Owens acknowledged her strained relationship with Shapiro, but claimed that Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. Meanwhile, uh, Owens began to use her Daily Wire platform to promote anti-Semitism, claiming this month on her show that secret Jewish gangs terrorized Hollywood and recently favorited a tweet repeating a lie about Jews drinking Christian's blood. And I just love the idea about uh, Jewish gangs terrorizing Hollywood. It's like, you know, uh, Noah, Baumbach, Noah Baumbach is doing like O Block shit to <laughs> Ben Stiller. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's kind of like not kidding, though. It's so weird to see anti-Semitism, like the black form of anti-Semitism for a white audience. Yeah. I don't know how it's really supposed to work, because when it's like the, the black Israelite type of shit, that's for a black audience. But when it's for a white nationalist audience, you're saying you're basically saying all the stuff you don't like about black people is Jews fault. <laughs> and I, I just don't know if that's going to work because I saw I saw a thread the other day where that CCG Brandon guy it was actually Melanie Mack getting yelled at for promoting that CCG Brandon guy. And it was someone saying, like, why are you promoting this ghetto thug and his jungle ghetto music and all this garbage? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they just, that's the audience, like no matter how respectful or whatever you want to be like, they're going to that's the reaction you're going to get. It's a, it's a real with the Daily Wire and Candace Owens, though. It's a real like a uh, scorpion and a fro the frog situation because it's like they hired her because they wanted a non-white person to say bigoted racist things. But, you know, you're halfway across the river. Israel starts killing a shitload of people. Eventually, you're going to get stung by the uh, the bigotry that cuts your way if you're Ben Shapiro. Uh, yeah, an, 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 an uneasy alliance between them uh, from the beginning, needless to say. But uh, best of luck to both of them. It just uh, it's like awkward in general to try to do anti-Semitism in America, like doing it in Europe where they have like a tradition. Do, do, there's like, a, you know, there's a cultural tradition and memory of it. Yeah, that makes sense. You can do that there. Americans like they almost like don't know enough to be anti-Semitic. There's too much lore. <laughs> it's like it's like trying to get it's like trying to get like a 60 year old to get really mad about something that happened in Sonic. <laughs> yeah, it's you kind You're of talking uh, about the, the Dreyfus affair or something like or, you know, yeah, yeah to truly understand it, then you end up just becoming jewish i think like if you <laughs> yeah. learn all of the stuff yeah you're reading all of the torah you're learning all about like post-structuralist feminism and academia and going back to like maimonides and all this shit you're, you're kind of just like how are you any different than the person you're making fun of <laughs> okay so yeah that's um 
That's your chapo for today. No, just kidding. Um, let's see. I got distracted, didn't I? We were looking for Steven Crowder. Okay, goddammit. That's why I got distracted, Shadda. Like, low-key, like, maybe part of me is like, uh, Steven Crowder. Okay, we're gonna look at it. I wanted to show you something. So the video that we watched yesterday, don't worry, we're not gonna watch it again. You know, the Malcolm in the middle, um, like, opening that they've got there with the, uh, Lupin the Third, um, art sort of mixed into here. But wait. Oh, I don't see it now. I thought that I was told, okay, uh, wow. I was told that there, there was something on here where it was like sources available. Yeah, no, get to taste show notes with sources, right? And this is his website and like, there aren't any, right? So there, within this video, we see documents, we see pictures. One of the pictures that's uh, most interesting is a picture of a potato with a threat written on it. I thought it was a sweet potato. Uh, I think that uh, the serfs reported it was a potato. It looked like it looked like a sweet, but that's a big potato, right? That's a large potato. I, I thought it was a white sweet potato. Apparently, maybe it was just a potato potato that was really large. It doesn't matter, chat. What matters is that like there was apparently a threat written on that. Um, and then the assertion was made by uh, not not gay Gerald that this was mailed to Steven Crowder where his kids were staying in a, an address that they made sure that no one knew about, but that somehow not gay Jared had gotten a hold of the address and was sending them a terroristic threat on a potato. Like I thought it was a recipe, but I don't know. But, but, Anyway, we, we, like, I don't want to watch this thing again because this guy's boring. He's more boring than Jeremy boring. There we go. That's what we want. We want the receipts. No, no, give me the receipts. Give me the, yep, that, right there. All right. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to make this, like, super high resolution. It already is super high resolution. Oh, this is so frustrating. Right? Because they're showing these receipts, but. Here, let's make this bigger. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Can you read it, chat? I, I swear to God, this is 1080. Like, I feel it feels like they don't really want you to look. It, they want you to know that they've got receipts. That's what they want, okay? They don't really want to share those receipts with you. They don't want to show it to you in context, right? They make it very hard to actually look up. And they, even though they're, the, the description says sources available, on website, they're not. They're just not there, right? What I you know, what I, I was looking for are like a uh, you know, friend a friend of mine. Uh, I DM'd you the receipts in high resolution. Thank you, Zara. Damn. Look, I wasn't even expecting that, right? I thought we were kind of cooked for that. Oh, okay. Wow. Zara's been doing some work behind the scenes here. Damn. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. Okay, that's this is so good. Look, I'm a proper drama streamer, thanks to Zara. Do people still say that about me? I bet they do. It was it was a bad thing um, back in the day. Now everyone's a drama streamer. Okay, well, just a second, chat. I'm opening these up all in the background so that I can pull them one after the other and show you uh, the receipts that Steven Crowder's side is offering. And again, you can thank Zara for this, because I would not have this. I would not have this if it was not for Zara. Thank you so much for finding this. In high resolution, no less, right? Because like I'm saying, like, this is what they give you as far as the receipts. I don't get the feeling that they really want you to look at their receipts. I get the feeling that they want you to know that they have receipts and that you're supposed to think that they are telling the truth because they have a receipt. Oh, hell yeah, there's the potato. Oh, I can't believe that's not a sweet potato. I, I still think it's a sweet potato. I'll have to ask Lance. We need to get Lance on here. 
Can somebody go get Lance for me? No, just kidding. I'm sure Lance is busy today. Um, but like, I would love to know if he if he has more information on exactly what kind of tuber uh, or rhizome uh, we're looking at. Are we? Yeah, because like that that makes all the difference in the world. If you've read a thousand plateaus, you know all about that. You know all about the difference between a a tumor and a uh, and a rhizome. Okay, just a little bit more chat. There's so many documents. So many documents. Sarah just hit me with the mother load of documents. This is just this is so good. We got all the receipts, chat. I don't even know if they actually are. This is what I want to look at, though. I don't know how much of receipts these receipts are. Let's take a little little investigation. Let's do a little do a little research here. Open up the Oh my god, so many receipts. Two more receipts. Here we go. Open. And open. All right, we'll look at these in in order. Now I have the theme song to Malcolm in the Middle chat. I have it stuck in my head. Do you know the song I'm talking about? Like that you're not the boss of me now and you're not so big or something. Okay, so here we got the receipts. All sources available in the description and louder with Crowder.com. Yeah, so they weren't in their description, but it did say that, like, it did give a link to louder with Crowder. I don't know. Zara, did you find those? Were those receipts there? If you need context for the reasoning of the receipts, you can uh, see I linked uh, above receipts, the context captions for each one. Ooh, okay, wait. I linked above the receipts. Okay, above the receipts. The receipts. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is Gerald Morgan. Not, not gay Gerald. Okay, okay. So, so this is where, this is where they came from, I'm guessing. The thread of one uh, Gerald A. Morgan. Junior Gerald A. Morgan. I'm sorry, chat. Look, I'm somebody that like enjoys certain names, thinks certain names are just inherently funny and uh, not in a mean way. OK, Gerald A. Morgan Jr. It's just it's just so perfect that this guy's name is Gerald. Oh, and that's the whole that's the whole video. So this wasn't just on. Yeah, they're, they're putting it up on. They're doing the uh, Elon Musk thing. They're putting it on up on X, too. So, um, yeah, this is where uh, the context comes from. So where the screenshots come from, I see. Okay, so this first one is per Hillary's father, uh, in Hillary's group uh, thread, group text thread. Here's the message uh, liked by Hillary. Okay, so wait. Group text thread. I'm sorry, why does that not look like a text to me? Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, uh, here's the message uh, liked by Hillary. The extortion scheme involved... Okay, so this is a message sent by Hillary's father, I guess? Extortion scheme involved assembling a team to destabilize Stephen. Let's, uh, let's see what, what was done to... Destabilize um, Stephen here. I see. Okay. Okay, so from the father, name redacted. Source app, native messages, okay. They understand right-wing media. They are familiar with who Steven is and that world and... This is Steven's dad. Oh, I forgot about this. This is, He's on the team. He was an employee of Steven. His job was to procure guests 
for Steven. And um, he, uh, there's reports that Steven was kind of like dressing his own dad down on the job. So uh, maybe they, wait, no, this is Hillary's father. Sorry, sorry. This is Hillary's father. I'm pretty sure. Father is Hillary Crowder's father. Sorry. Sorry, I got excited there for a second. I was like, oh, is this, is this like Crowder family, uh, you know, drama here? No, it's a, uh, well, I mean, kind of, right? You know, it's like a, it's in-law drama is what we're doing here. We're, we're doing in-law drama. Who knew, chat? You're getting in-law drama today. All right. Um, they're familiar with who Steven is and that, and that world and things that would destabilize him. So yeah, in other words, if you're not familiar with right-wing media, you might say Steven Crowder is a homophobe and right-wing media does not care. But if you, if you are familiar, then you know, you know what you can say to anyway, or uh, will commit uh, to investing the necessary time, thoughtful considerations. So uh, not gay Jared alluded to documents, alluded to personal communications as having been demanded by the court pursuant to, I think, some kind of legal action that uh, that the uh, Steven Crowder uh, was was undertaking. Now, they say that they didn't take undertake any illegal action, but like, how did they end up with these messages? Right. This is the message from uh, Hillary's uh, father. And it does look like plaintiff's original petition. Yeah, I don't know what they're fucking. Oh, wait, wait, are they telling on themselves here? I swear to God, this guy said. Like, like, like he made it sound like at least at the very least that like there were no legal, you know, that, that they were, they were not pursuing any kind of litigation. And yet here we go with plaintiff's original petition. I don't know how you square that circle. I, I think that, I think they're kind of telling on themselves here. I think they honestly were not really. Like, like I said, they just wanted to show you they had receipts. Right. But when you look at the receipts and you ask yourself, what what are these receipts? Where do they come from? It starts to it starts to kind of support um, Jared's uh, story, at least in a small way. OK, or we'll commit to investing the necessary time, thoughtful consideration and judgment to become sufficiently familiar with that world. In order that they become they understand a uh, type of team I want. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. OK, so he's talking about the type of legal team that he wants for Hillary in the divorce. I think that's what's going on. Okay, so uh, a, a team that's gonna understand right-wing media. It's gonna understand uh, PR and it's gonna understand what is bad PR for Steven Crowder or the, the kind of team that will um, learn and uh, become familiar with, right? That makes sense. In order that they may become intellectually and emotionally invested in Hillary's circumstances. Uh, they are experts on narcissists. Oh, have they watched enough YouTube videos on narcissists? They, do they understand the difference between a dark empath and a regular empath and a and a narcissist? Do, do they do, do they know the Pokemon fucking system of magic that is the online discussion of of narcissists and how everything that's wrong with your life? You can blame on them because you're an empath. I can tell. I can tell just by looking at you. You're a good empath. You're always getting used and abused by these narcissists who are like half of the people in your fucking life. Every little interpersonal problem you have is because the other person is a goddamn narcissist. But if you watch these videos, you're gonna understand how to deal with them. Yeah, yeah. So we're into the narcissism discourse. That's wonderful. This is the place that I I feel most at home. Um, you know, casting uh <laughs> casting all my enemies as narcissist. Anyway and or will read the view of selected articles to fully understand the narcissism and the impact uh, of the spouse of a narcissist. Yo, the South, like, who is, did, can anybody name that person? There's like one particular like doctor that, that I think she's a doctor, or a, psych, a psychotherapist or something, but she's got a series of videos. It's all about the narcissist. Like she makes video after video after video about how you, the empath can deal well, you're a good person. You feel other people's pain. You care about other people. It's not a narcissist, not so much. So you gotta learn. You gotta watch these ladies' videos to find out like how you're gonna deal with this this, this narcissist, which is like a comic book villain. You have got your very own Dio Brando in your life, and like how are you gonna become the you know how are you gonna become? I shouldn't say Joseph Joestar. How are you gonna become 
how are you gonna rise to the i don't know i don't know <laughs> more cluster b personality disorders demonization what is does anybody know who i'm talking about there's a certain content creator that makes just a ton of these videos that that and if you ever watch one of those videos she's gonna be all over your recommended so don't do it um anyway let's let's finish up this <laughs> these receipts here um ma, ma, ma. uh they like my creative okay so blah, blah 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 they have a personal interest we're talking about the law team that he wants for his daughter right they have a personal interest in me and my case in compassion uh to my situation they like my creative ideas and family involvement they think outside the box they are welcome uh to the ideas of you they are they think they they are welcome to the ideas of using media. Oh, okay. So this is what he's trying to show. This is what not not gay Gerald Gerald wants us to see. Brian Friedman, uh, PR, etc. They also provide uh, their own strengths and ideas that are outside the box. Fully understand and agree with Hillary's goals and expectations from the outcome of this divorce, and are are reasonable and attainable. Oh, that's not good, right? You want a lawyer that will tell you what you, what what they think, not a lawyer that's gonna agree with what you think just to get your money. That's uh, I, I don't know about this, uh, uh, Hillary's father, um, not necessarily according to Texas, because like you, if if they weren't uh reasonable and attainable, right? If you if you were gonna get shut down in this case, you'd want your lawyers to tell you that probably before you spent too much money. Just my thought. Uh, by employing a media slash Brian Friedman and uh, can anybody tell me about Brian Friedman? I feel like we talked about him yesterday. It, this is like an attorney who is um, part of some case that they mentioned. Your PR assets will be assimilated. Resistance is future. Mars Falcon remembers. Mars Falcon remembers yesterday. Yeah, I f I can't remember what the what the like there was some famous case that this guy was a part of where I think he was like defending somebody that was a piece of shit or something like that. I can't remember, but I guess. So is this like an attorney or a PR uh, person that he has in mind? PR strategy that will significantly threaten his public persona and brand. Persona. Sorry. I got a little excited. Uh, wari wa nanji, nanji wa wari. Um, anyway, we're gonna some of our personas here. We're gonna get through this segment, which we we need to. We, we gotta get through the segment. Okay, so here is February seventeenth, two thousand twenty-three, about a year and some change ago. Hillary met Jared. Uh, Hillary and Jared met in Atlanta to discuss. Okay, so this is showing that they've. This is showing them uh, coordinating. So like literally, like. So there, there. It says all sources available in the description and at, available in at louderwithcrowder.com. I I don't know though. From what I heard from Zira, right? There's not a lot more of it. That like as far as sources, you know, there's not like. I mean, it's it's from a um, I'm guessing that see it says down here plaintiff's original petition on the first document, right? So these are things that were requested in some kind of discovery process, and they're you know they're like um, they're like you know they're they're text messages. And this is what uh, not gay Jared was talking about yesterday when he said that, um, you know, that, that personal communication had been like requested. He'd have to turn that over. So may maybe part of the fact that that he knew that they had this stuff might have contributed into him uh, needing to come out and tell his side of the story because he knew that it was possible now for Crowder to. I don't know spitballing here uh hey i have tickets for the aquarium at 2 p.m this is from oh it doesn't say who it's from i guess this is hillary and this is not gay jared 
uh, we'll pick y'all up at the airport. I figure we could take you uh, to check uh, in to your hotel if you wanted to grab food before getting to the fish. Getting to the fish. Oh, the fish at the aquarium. Okay. Uh, oh, that's so sweet. Thanks. Perfect. And then there's a picture of... Is this Jared and... Is that Hillary? I can't remember what Hillary looks like. Anyway. I guess this is putting... Um, yeah, Hillary and Jared uh, in Atlanta. Um, so, so we knew they, we know they met, we know they went to the aquarium and we know they ate something together. Okay. So what's this? Uh, per Jared's text, any scenario where Hillary and I team up is the end of him. Steven Knight, uh, Steven, um, Crowder, not universe, not Steven universe chat. We're talking about Steven Crowder. Uh, it's the worst nightmare. Watch your real fear enter the eyes. Watch the real fear enter the eyes when Tim asks the question. Okay, what is this? To further defendant's personal desire to keep Crowder away from his own children, defendant helped Hillary craft and further uh, the extortion scheme by providing false and disparaging stories, closely held beliefs about Crowder and louder with Crowder. Uh, this is from the father? From I don't know, actually, no, wait. The defendant. Gatsby Cat, thank you for the resubscribe. Louder with Crowder LLC sued Hillary Cloud Crowder and uh, several more people. Thank you, Zara, in October 2020, October 9th, 2023. Okay, and so that's why the records, the, the receipts are coming from uh, the previous year. Aw, thank you so much for the resubscribe. Good to see you. Oh my god, you're in the middle of an ad break. I've been so bad to Twitch. We're, we're on hour three. Oh my god, chat. We're on an hour three, and I'm not giving you your, your warning ahead of time that there's going to be an ad break. I'm so bad. Okay. We'll wait till we'll wait till the Twitch people come back to chat. The ones that got a three-minute ad break, which is terrible. Terrible. Anyway. Any scenario where Hillary and I team up... Okay, this is Gerald. Any scenario where Hillary and I team up is the end of him. It's his worst nightmare. Watch the real fear enter his eyes when t <laughs> when Sam Cedar is on the other <laughs> end of the, uh, of the conversation and not Ethan Klein, no. Uh, watch the real fear enter his eyes when Tim asks the question. Wait, who's Tim? Okay, so I think there's a scenario where several of us would be willing to attest to all of that. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. So this is what he's using to say, like, this asshole is trying to keep me away from my kids, right? But it sounds to, like, to me, the, that really, really disturbs me. It sounds like he knows enough to say that, like, there's a reason to not want uh, Stephen Crowder to be around his uh, kids. And you can imagine what that reason is based on what we saw in that ring cam. Now, here's the other thing that I think that Jared was requesting was that they release the context for the messages or like the rest of the messages, right? Um, what we're seeing here is kind of a cherry picked set of, of what they found in Discovery by requisitioning these people's, um, you know, phone uh, text records. The whole scheme was to maximize profits that she couldn't get through the courts. Okay, so uh, Hillary Crowder, the financial offer was serious and the business valuator uh, and both was serious and the business valuator and both my attorneys agreed that financial offer was good. Five million. Also from Hillary Crowder. Um, also from Hillary Crow Crowder. But when it came to the children, uh, his offer was that I get all of June and some of July and two weeks of August and a week uh, in the fall up north. Wait, 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 whoa, wait. So wait, he's asking. It sounds like he's asking for is that primary custody like, right? So she would get the children in June, some of July, two weeks in August. So it's it's kind of like 
you know, a, a good portion of the summer, but that's not, you know, I mean, that, that's definitely like they would, I guess they would be going to school with, uh, with Steven Crowder or, you know, wherever he's at. And while that's better than I would get in court, while that's better than I would get in court, I want more freedom than that. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so per Hillary's father, uh, to Hillary, other family group, uh, in a group text, uh, the longer the divorce proceedings go on, the worse the outcome for Steven Crowder. Okay, so what is this? I can't tell who it's from. Uh, from her father, I guess, when he says per her father. Uh, good morning. Yesterday, Hillary and I met with the attorney, Mark and uh his team with the attorney mark the attorney comma mark and his team for one hour in uh, response to very specific questions here in my takeaway from the meeting uh here's my takeaway from the meeting uh please take the time to read thoughtfully consider as we advise hillary today during the mediation uh one hillary's choice of domicile and custody will be an uphill battle, but it is certainly possible outcome. Two, the longer the divorce proceedings go on, the worse outcome for Steven Crowder. Three, any agreement for temporary custody will become a marker and uh, set a standard for permanent custody. Four, Mark is okay if no agreement is reached today, and we will walk away. Five, the trial may go on for a year or more if Steven digs his heels in. Uh, six, psychological evaluation of Steven Crowder could be a six-month process. During that time, other productive legal work will go forward simultaneously. Seven, developing damages. Okay, PR assets should be pursued. That deliverable, it, uh, that deliverable, it is up to us, uh, not to, not the legal team. At the right time, Mark will show Steven Crowder the path to make it all go away. The judge who slapped Steven down and issued a visitation order will be the judge if the if this goes to trial. Other news, Blank and I uh, put an offer in on the house for Hillary and near her friend. Uh, our offer was cash and 30k was over asking. We were uh, outbid by with several other cash offers by 50k plus. I am working with the realtor today, uh, trying to see if we can find a nice apartment in the same vicinity. Finally, Hillary and I will like wait. I don't even know what you're seeing from this. Um, well, you are seeing the whole thing, pretty much. Finally, Hillary and I will be like your strategy of selling uh, the vision, uh, selling a vision to Steven Crowder of you raising the babies. And he is the he is the cool dad who the children have the fun with. You might. So he's kind of wanting the opposite. Sounds like he wants to give them, you know, the, for Hillary to have the children in summer and for him to have the children in the school year, maybe. Uh, you might suggest that it, to Mark that this vision is uh, an opening theme. And so they're sort of gauging, you know, the negotiation, both from like a tactical standpoint, but also from like a psychological uh, standpoint, like what kind of like a like almost a sales standpoint, like sell him the vision. Like you can see this, can't you, Stephen? Right. I I'm the kid's mom and you are the cool dad who they have all the fun with. It's going to be great. Can, can you see yourself in, in this, um, you know, divorce arrangement today? Uh, in hope of starting off with uh, something both parties agree on. Uh, seems like it would be a best case scenario for the children. Love, love, love. Heart, heart, heart. Um, so wait, she liked the liked Good Morning yesterday. OK, so yeah, I, th I think this is Hillary that liked it. OK, so let's see this right here. Developing damage is, is you know, that's what they're highlighting on. Yeah, yeah. And they're, the fact that they're using a uh, deliverable, you know, they're talking in like. PR assets should be pursued. 
Mr. Corazon initially arrogantly stated that at the right time, Mrs. Crowder's counsel would throw Mr. Crowder uh, the path to make it all go away. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so that's at the very end of the document. Okay. Next one. Remember the ring footage. Hillary deleted all other footage from the house uh, and the lake residence, which it was expressly barred by the court. Mrs. Crowder then intentionally deleted all other footage that depicted the marital home, as well as all footage of their vacation lake residence while under express orders from the court, court barring uh, such actions. I mean, that if that's, uh, what is this, all sources available? Plaintiff's amended petition. Okay, so this is their claim. This is not upheld by the court. The court has not rendered a judgment about, uh, you know, like like this. But that's that's their. Oh, thank you, Gatsby Cat. I love the stream and no comment check. Oh my God, chat. Let me check in with you. I'm glad uh, she gets 24k a month from Crowder in alimony or child support. But no one tells me uh, he makes. That tells me he makes a disgusting amount of money. Yeah, that would be what it's based on, right? All right, so let's get back to these. Oh my God, we got documents, we got documents. We got documents up the wazoo, up Waluigi's wazoo. Okay, so, um, but that's that's the claim. Um, Here's a tweet from Hillary Crowder. I feel like we've looked at this before. Uh, Here's her uh, profile twin mom rebuilding from the rubble. Uh, seeking opportunity 10k 10.4k followers nobody you follow no just kidding hopefully nobody i follow right uh looking for work that uh remote that is remote and flexible i'm open to anything particularly work that will allow me to be present at home with the twins thank you in advance to anyone who's willing to help me with this uh, pursuit by sharing this post looking forward to bringing my i mean is 10.4k a decent network could she find you know, expect to find work uh, with something like this. She got 1.5k likes. I don't know. Seems seems kind of. I don't know, Chad. I've never uh, never looked on Twitter for work before. I look forward to bringing my diligence, hard work ethic, creativity, and ability to think outside the box into whatever work environment I end up in. I know that I might get ripped apart in the comments, given that I am a mom of two small children. I mean, if anything, you're going to get ripped apart by Steven Crowder fans, I, I guess, right? Uh, please be respectful. Why, why would she get ripped apart for... Please be respectful and know that the plan was for our children to stay, have a stay-at-home mother. But unfortunately, I have been put in the position where that's no longer possible. Here is my LinkedIn. Uh, the email... Okay, anyway, this is... Uh... So you're trying to show here. Public claims about hardships, but she's paid 25K a month. Divorce proceedings ordered that Louder with Crowder LLC has to pay me $25,000 per month pursuant to a temporary order. Uh, during the duration of the divorce, Stephen tried to reduce that amount, but was unsuccessful. I can barely pay my uh, divorce attorneys, let alone the attorneys in this litigation with that amount. Oh, yeah. So there would be. So that's something to think about, right? She's getting twenty five thousand per month. She's also got how much in legal fees for a month per month. And given that she's against, you know, LWC LLC, Louder with Crowder uh, Limited Liability Corporation. That, that's uh. Could be a lot. I I don't know how much though. Uh, Hillary hired entertainment superstar. Law. Yeah, there's Brian Friedman. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's who they were talking about as part of her PR attack. So this is some like what PR savvy attorney. Friedman represented Trevor Bauer's false accuser. Does anybody remember this Trevor Bauer? It appears her lawyers had the evidence all the time, speaking specifically. It's a baseball player about the video of her laying in bed uh, next to me with no marks on her face uh, the morning after she claimed to have been brutally attacked 
an email containing that video was sent by her attorney, Brian Friedman, before... You, you, this is kind of a weak argument, though. Right? Like, you're just literally saying, like, her attorney had this one scumbag client. I, I, I would assume that most attorneys have had at least one scumbag client. I don't know. Am I, am I wrong? Is <laughs> uh, both Don Lemon and Tucker Carlson have retained attorney Brian Friedman in response to their firings. Friedman doesn't mess around. Friedman repped Megyn Kelly, Gabrielle. Okay, so yeah, definitely like a PR savvy attorney is what he sounds like. He also happens to be my attorney, says Yashar Ali. Same journalist who leaked the Ring video. Oh, okay. Wait, is this a conflict of interest or something? I don't get it. Hillary tried to have Joe Lewis. There's this Joe Lewis. This is Steven Crowder's dog. His dog's name is Joe Lewis, uh, removed by falsely claiming that Joe was dangerous. Defendant also uh, tried to have, uh, tried to remove. So all, all this is, is like, I, I feel like a plaintiff's petition. Right, this is what her, this is what his attorneys are claiming. Uh, defendants have also tried to remove Joe Lewis, the uh, beloved Argentinian doggo. And I, when I hear Argentinian doggo chat, we never really talked about this. Mile, the president of Argentina, uh, aka Ancap Man, he had a dog that he loved a long time ago, and it died because dogs have short lifespans. I don't know. I don't know. It might have died before. Anyway, uh, no, no worries, right? Because he got the dog cloned. He had the dog's DNA frozen, and he had a clone made. Of the dog, he had five clones made of the same dog, All right? So when I hear about an Argentinian doggo, wait, why is this in the plaintiff's petition? You're gonna call it a doggo? The beloved Argentinian doggo uh, from Mr. Crowder's possession by falsely maligning him as a dangerous and aggressive dog based on the complete fabrication, fabricated history of uh, from the previous. Oh, so they're the ones that had a previous owner history. But the previous owner has since signed an affidavit confirming the defendant's claim about Joe Lewis, the dog, uh, was conclusively false. So yeah, Joe Lewis did uh, nothing wrong, I guess. Uh, I'm pretty sure the doggo is the doggo is the breed name. Are you serious? Is this a real thing, chat? Can we confirm this? Yeah, yeah, this is what uh, Dirk Money Rich says. Pretty sure doggo is the breed name. Wait, so the dog, the breed of the dog is Argentinian Doggo? Anyway, back to the receipts. Back to so, so little time, so many receipts. Here we go. The potato! This is my favorite one. This is the, wait, no, please explain the potato to me. I don't understand the potato. Hillary sent the private and unlisted resident address to Jared shortly after Jared receives uh, Steven's personal address, Steven received this threatening message. So look, this isn't proof of anything, but it's being shown as like this, therefore this, right? I want uh, to at them that he actually lives at blank, 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 blank. And I can't tell. This almost seems like it's not an address, but rather like a area of town or a city or, or something like that. Uh, so please leave this house alone. He doesn't, he doesn't live there want to at them that he actually lives okay so this is hillary so wait, people are like harassing i don't know what this is like like there's a little bit more context that i need but i'm i, I mean i can guess maybe that uh they're like Somebody, them, like, I want to at them. So somebody's not leaving the house alone that she, like, 
maybe okay so she's in their house she's in their old house or something like that but he's somewhere else and uh somebody's doing something um at that house i'm trying to put this together he really didn't leave me uh you know like uh not not gay uh what's his name gerald didn't really leave me enough to understand it okay so there's a potato it says watch it and then uh, is that a name it's either a name or a slur right something that had to be redacted watch it something watch it and then there's directions for how to it, i think this is yeah how to cook the potato Microwave for 2.5 minutes. Poke it holes, wrap in paper. I st it still looks like a sweet potato to me, chat. It, it's always going to look like a sweet potato to me. So there we go. These are, I believe we've looked at all of the... Yeah, I'm just checking here make sure we're not missing anything yeah this is this is everything this is all the receipts that they had i don't know chat i am still not convinced especially this part especially the potato bomb like right i i don't i don't buy that i, I don't buy that so he's proved that hillary sent mentioned where he lives right we don't know how specific uh, since that part is redacted it doesn't look like there's room for like a whole ass address there though maybe there is maybe it's like 555 um ardent lane or something you know what i mean maybe it's just the address and they know where what town it's in so maybe maybe it's the you know the actual address but uh lives at yeah we, we don't know uh but we we know that hillary sent not gay Jer not gay jared this we know that this showed up so, oh wait we do not know shit about this i'm sorry but we don't even know that this showed up in the mail right this potato for all i know steven crowder side of, of the of the thing you know like this could be fabricated we don't really have a lot of uh you know if you want to use a handwriting expert to try to match this up with like not gay jared's um handwriting maybe maybe you've got a case maybe you've got a case but it's a pretty hard to be like no one else could have possibly known where steven crowder and his kids were living uh so therefore it must be <sighs> and who sends a potato with a thread on it that's so weird that's so bizarre so yeah this is the um this is the video you know it's supposed to have uh all sources available in the description and uh louder with uh they did exist on uh twitter at least all the all the images uh, i don't know about the sources and the wh whatever else was supposed to if there's anything else supposed to firm this up but uh, again chat uh, i wanted to take a look at their receipts make sure i'm not missing anything uh try to be as fair as possible about this and i feel like i did that Feel like i did exactly that so now it is time to take you on a magical adventure into the fighting that is going on over steven crowder and his marriage ending i present to you A list of right wing uh ne'er do wells, all all of them taking uh one side or the other on uh on the Steven Crowder thing. Surprising a number, support given like you know what was on the ring cam, uh given you know what's kind of known about Steven Crowder and his workplace and you know and, and what's um kind of alluded to by not gay Jared, uh it's it's surprising how many people are are, are taking his side but for the moment i i guess that's you know where the the cloud is not that it's not that it's that much cloud anymore let's unpack louder with crowder or at least let's try to so oh no Stephen crowder this asshole 
This asshole again, asshole justice warrior. Chat, that's asshole justice warrior. Probably the biggest pundit in the conservative space, or at least one of, I'd say he's like top. Okay, no, wait, is this right? Okay, uh, Chad, I gotta ask, am I just like, am I out of touch with the right wing ecosystem? Not all potatoes, right? Uh, this is proof of nothing. You can't ID a potato. They they wish they could ID a potato. If you bake potato, it will cook twice as fast. If you shove a nail, oh, okay, like a very clean nail. I'm assuming is Steven Crowder's uh, dog a Nazi clone from Argentina? That is the question that we're asking here. That that's the question that I'm here to ask. Uh, changing your last name after a divorce is more difficult than you think. Uh, especially if your accounts are, oh, under your married name, Hillary is uh, traditional, so she may keep it for the kids. Yeah, cooking instructions, right? A uh, 2.5 minutes, I know, that's, they're, they're, I, I think that's the real harm. They're trying to uh, harm Steven Crowder uh, by, by virtue of, uh, you know, giving him insufficient cooking time. They're trying to tell him to cook a potato for 2.5 minutes and eat it. That's that's not enough time. He's going to get potato poisoning. You ate a potato for for lunch today? Oh my god. Me too actually. Um I thought his name was Jack Twinkle, but yeah, it's actual racist warrior. Is Crowder's dog related to Miles? No. But they said Argentinian doggo, and that's what it made me think of. Because the only Argentinian doggo I know are the five doggos that are a clone of one dead doggo that uh, Mile, the president of Argentina, keeps as a pet. Like, could he just not? Like, could he, could he get the clones so that they're like a Cerebus or Cerberus? You know what I'm saying? Like, where it's like one body, but it's like five heads. I feel like that would be easier than. Um, than five dogs taking care of, right? At like one five headed Cerberus. Five for sure. He's had a pretty turbulent go of it over the past couple years with regard to just internal stuff going on. I mean, you have Dave Landau left and uh, on Michael Malice's podcast, he kind of aired some, some things, at least his side of it, didn't paint it as a very good work environment. You also have the DW contract fiasco that, you know, didn't really look good. I'm sorry. Every time somebody says DW, I think of uh, Arthur. Then we have uh, the, the news. Anybody the else? Divorce. Very sad, of course. But also there is footage leaked ring cam of him not being very charitable to his wife. Of course, we don't know. Not very charitable. We at least saw that. That's one way to put it. Footage doesn't put, paint him in a good light. Then announcements that the divorce had been very acrimonious. Oh, shit. Um, Spark the Blood says there's a doggo Argentino. That's really what it's called? Dog doggo Argentino? I've never heard of this. Five heads uh, sounds like too much for just one stomach. Oh, you're saying that each of the five heads would want to eat like a normal amount of food. But the stomach could only process one fifth of that. Uh, the total, you know, all the all the food is going into the. I was thinking that somehow it would eat less than five dogs. Not that Mile's uh, gonna care about that, right? He's gonna fix inflation, right? Latest thing now is Nake Jared Jared Matello. He goes by Jared Monroe on Twitter. Who, if you guys have been around. He he used to be almost like basically the co-host or at least yeah. Crowder's sidekick every show. I, I thought they were related for a while. That's how like <laughs> crucial he was to the show. Oh yeah, no, that's his dad. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, they they basically. Oh, wait, but isn't there something weird about about his dad that he like 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 the dad's like on the show sometimes, but he doesn't introduce him as his dad. He's just like this is so and so gave off the vibes of like we are like brothers. Um, like this is like our show together. They Ooh. seem really tight. Eventually Dave Mal says the brain is the highest energy demanding organ in the body. Therefore, they would need more than a normal dog. Eventually, Jared left the show, uh, didn't really say anything about it, which is obviously happens if it's just a job like you're you don't have to do that forever. 
Um, he hasn't really been in the public very recently, uh, but he a while ago was on what is it? Uh, Strange World with Quarter Black Garrett and Dave Landau announced that he would be launching his own show uh, in the foxhole, I believe, which is going to be focused on masculinity and um, just kind of like men's issues. He posted on X, though. Uh, when was this that it went up just like yesterday? yesterday? Yeah, the 26th yesterday. This video where he talks about ongoing legal issues that he's been having with his former employer. It's pretty clear who that former employer is, you know, uh, Louder with Crowder slash Steven Crowder. And um, he talks about... Basically, okay, do you want to try to summarize this video? There's a lot to it. Well, he he opens by saying that he received a cease and desist from Steven Crowder and well right. from his former employer, and he received a, a, a 202 petition, which is a petition for him to be deposed. And if you look at the documents that have been posted online, that includes 15 other people. And the 15th person is like unlimited numbers of unnamed people that Jared right. said like disparaging remarks to. And essentially, he he's he's making the case that the NDA is overly broad, very restrictive. It goes on in perpetuity, and just fighting the cease and desist and the and the deposition have put him in debt. And he's already been in debt from the time that he left Crowder. And post him leaving, he was blackballed. So he's raising money in a GoFundMe to pay for his prior or his already accrued legal expenses and his ongoing expenses which he was trying to file a counter motion to get out of the nda because he thinks it's like it's unconstitutional right so we do have the court documents that jared is referencing in his video uh shout out to pearl she's the one who i'm getting this from oh my so god you know pearl just pearly things here it says that crowder louder with crowder the organization is um, asking to depose Jared because it says, uh, da, 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 da. all right, that's a different thing. Um, well, anyway, to your point of who Jared is being asked to turn over his communications with and offer testimony about, it's communications with Dave Landau, Hillary Crowder, Brittany White Turner, Sven Tieterman, who I think might be a Sven computer. Yeah. If you guys have watched Steven's show, you'll know it was like, um, one of the little co-hosts part of the gang for a bit. Courtney Kirchhoff, who I think used to be part with Ladder with Crowder team, Edward Parker, Everett Wade. I don't know who those people are. Aaron Luna, Jeremy Boring, CEO of Daily Wire. Jeremy Boring spelled incorrectly. Yes, I did notice that. Natalie, Deborah, and Garrett. Na wait, Natalie, I mean, Deborah, boring. Morrison, Garrett Morrison, employees and or representatives of the Daily Wire and current and former employees of Ladder with Crowder and any other individual not currently known to whom respondent has made disparaging comments about Ladder with Crowder and or Crowder. So there's just like, basically, cr like Crowder's legal team is just asking for all communications, maybe that Jared has yeah. potentially brought them up for. And I also want to bring up this share this tab there we go um da, da, da. it's explained here da, 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 that they the parties executed a confidential separation agreement da, da, da. Da, da, da. Up, uh, upon respondents voluntary departure the parties entered in the agreement it contains a non-disparagement clause louder with crowder believes the respondent has been approaching various third parties and disparaging louder with crowder and crowder to tortuously interfere with LWC's continuing and prospective business relationships, thereby breaching the agreement. So the fact that they have included Daily Wire, it seems to me like they're Wait, almost they're alleging that maybe Jared was part of undermining the Crowder uh, Crowder Daily Wire deal. Ooh. Yeah. Wait, I, what? I think if you go I thought that was Crowder that undermined that, right? I re what I remember about the Daily Wire ladder with Crowder deal is that he wanted um uh he was offered 50 million and he wanted something closer to 100 million he's suing everyone yeah that that little cohorts like the do they have oompa loompa oh little co-hosts go through it it's something about like lost rumble earnings or trying to interview with their contract post that 
Like mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't, I, I, I haven't seen the uh, Daily Wire portion, but I watched their, um, the, the CEO's explanation of it. But es- essentially, he's saying he's alleging a conspiracy where Crowder's ex-wife or current wife that he's going through divorce with is at the top. That's roping in Jared, the Daily Wire, and all these other enemies of Crowder. But I thought I could be enemies wrong. I of Crowder to sabotage the enemies of Crowder, deal, not the um, not the Daily Wire deal. I thought that was passed because I think they filed this in October of 2023. But I, I could be wrong about the uh, the timing. Yeah, I think they did file this in like in 2023. But I think the fact that they're naming people from the Daily Wire right here. Let me see. Like, yeah, Jeremy Boring, CEO, and anyone from the Daily Wire. I don't know if he's trying to also allege that in addition to the Rumble thing, they were also trying to mess up the Daily Wire thing. I personally think that that they, those parties had a good enough time torpedoing it themselves. Uh, they didn't right. need outside help to do that. Uh, but it's pretty crazy. And, um, and like, by the way, in that whole fiasco, this was brought up by Candace Owens on oh, her cast appearance, and then Crowder said it was like an am- chat. It cuddled me. It cuddled. Did you see that? It cuddles you. Oh, that's the cutest. Anyway, amicable separation. When he was on, he said yes, that they did a did. farewell show, and like clearly, Is that's not the case. So like. This was a red flag for everyone when he said that. And like, you know, usually in an amicable separation, one person isn't barred from talking about that amicable separation. Right. Well, as as other people have mentioned, NDAs, non-competes, uh, those are actually very common in like entertainment contracts. They're really not. That's not unheard of. That's not unfair. I, I signed them before, but I've never seen someone taking taken to court and deposed over things that they potentially could have said or not because they don't know that's why they're being deposed behind the scenes that's unusual like i've never seen that before um you know oftentimes when we have like ndas and non-disparagement clauses especially in media it's for stuff you you're saying publicly the fact that they're asking to just have like all information very very unusual i've seen people say well if he potentially broke an NDA and he's seeking to get out of the NDA, like, dude, you signed this. It's just, you know, it's, it's not that big a deal. Like you shouldn't disparage anybody. There are other allegations beyond the restrictive NDA that Jared brings up in his video. Let's see if I can not be a boomer for two seconds. Share this tab. Mm -hmm. Um, Jared also mentions, he talks about a non-compete, which again, non-competes are not unusual. Uh, but the thing with non-competes are is that actually they're illegal in some states, like I think California. Right. Um, but the thing with non yeah, well, the thing with non-competes in the entertainment sphere is usually non-compete means that look, if you have a show with Daily Wire, you can't simultaneously have a show any with Blaze TV. Uh, and I think that's like that's pretty that understandable. That's not that restrictive. And you can have different ones where it's like, okay, you have a show with Blaze, but you also have like I I, I can put out YouTube videos, you know, and other streams on my own. She's got an issue with audio here. I, I don't know what like she's got something running in the background. I thought it was me for a second. Is this Pokemon with guns? This is not Pal World. This is Valheim, which I guess is kind of similar. I mean, like we that does look like a Pal, doesn't it? That, that definitely looks like a Pal. YouTube channel. This is like I, that very common. Jared. It's like the Viking version of Pal World. Talks about in his own video but a non-compete though, that actually, according to him, bars him from work in the industry entirely, even after the, uh, even after he no longer works with Crowder. So it is, and I will say it is common that you can have a non-compete that extends to maybe like three months after your contract is severed. So you can't, you know, in January be working for CNN and then February you have your own show on Fox. Usually there, it's true. There's like a little bit of a breathing room, maybe three max I've seen is six months. This extended to years and was completely industry wide, according to Jared. And and he also said, to be clear, that it wasn't even a regular non compete. It was a non solicitation agreement that right. Crowder's legal team said that they were going to argue could be interpreted as the broadest non compete. And I 
I don't know if you're going to play that part where he says, um, you know, what he tried to negotiate around that. Okay, let's let's see. A a man with his first child on the way, the um, small victory I got from it. The primary reason I signed the NDA was for a small carve out in the non-compete clause, which allowed me to freely seek employment using some of my skill sets at another specific company. Uh, at least I could feed my family. That provision, however, was a lie. Um, and upon starting my new job at the new said company, I was giving another one of these, a cease and desist, and uh, was promptly unlawfully terminated from that, that position. Ooh. I added thousands more to my legal debt trying to fight back. My wife was very pregnant by this time and without a financial safety net for groceries and a baby crib, much less a legal fund to file a countersuit, I simply had to let it go. Trusting God had a plan. Uh, Always trust God. At that point, I want to say that that's I'm what we learned today. Plan and what was intended God's got me. a plan. Okay, so sorry. According to Jared's video, he's dealing with NDA that Crowder is alleging he violated, uh, asking to be deposed, and uh, I don't think he like responded. And like that's obviously if someone is like launching legal papers that that caused some issues. The court has ruled that he does actually have to be deposed now at this point, I think. Right. But in that video, Jared also talks about the other forms of what he would classify, I guess, as lawfare that Crowder has been trying to launch against him. Now, earlier today, um, and this is why like, I, I didn't want to release the video I previously did, Crowder's team actually did respond. So they, they put out their own video uh, about it. Um, this is by Gerald Morgan. Uh, it's not actually Crowder on camera. Apparently they're going through mediation right now. Gerald is the CEO of Louder with Crowder. Also, sometimes he co-hosts. Yeah, this is, um, um and they, this is not, not gay Gerald. Yes. I mean, there's so much going on here. It's messy. It's messy. It so is hard to keep track of. Yeah. That actually the reason why they're trying to depose Jared is that apparently he and Hillary have been working behind the scenes to try to discredit Stephen in order to get more preferable divorce terms. Is that right? right? Yes, that's that's one among many of the things that they allege that that this is all. What do you think, chat? Any bets in chat? Not real bets, of course. Uh, we're not uh, we're not on kick. OK, so we're not I'm not asking you to make real bets. Uh, that would be illegal, but uh, possibly. I don't know. Um, but what's your what's your thought as far as um, who is uh, actual justice warrior going to side with? Who is Lauren Chen going to side with? Like where where will their sympathies lie at the end of this? What do you think, chat? But to be clear, it's not even just specifically preferable divorce terms. It's for more money from Steven Crowder as they repeated. Sounds like we got an answer for HAW at least says throughout the course of this. It's for more money, even though they show a message that I think shines some significant doubt on that because they show a message that says Hillary's Ooh, wait, no, maybe not. He's offering them more money than they would have gotten. But she replies that she wants more freedom. So it's possible without seeing the well, terms. Of now, the she said more freedom, but it sounded like she wanted more custody, right? It sounded like what he was offering her was to be the mom for the summer break. For part of summer break, not all of summer break, but for a lot of summer break, right? She would be the parent. And uh, so and I don't know if like freedom could also mean you know that the way that i i don't know that she just didn't like the terms of the custody split that that it would cause her to have to you know because like the idea is i guess she would have to go uh pick them up depending on you know where she lives um that could be pretty far away i, I don't know chad i'm not entirely sure about this that there's some kind of nda or whatever the equivalent is in divorce court that they're fighting over which would not be about more money it would be about more custody maybe yeah or, or well custody is like a different like I, I i don't know it could be about the custody honestly but like it, it Has seems he like read this? hillary is fighting for something else even according to the messages yeah. that they showed 
uh, that supposedly right. confirmed that he offered more money. But he repeatedly says throughout this that it's never enough for her. So I just found that weird because he's like, it's never enough. And then you see them and they read it. Hillary quotes it. She's like, I want more freedom. So right. I'm not money that. necessarily. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. So, uh, and they also like talk about like issues with dogs here. Um. There's, it's just, it seems like it's a very, very messy divorce and, Okay, right now Jared is crowdfunding legal fees. I think that he's managed to raise over seventy thousand dollars. Crowder just launched his own response, but I think it's important to understand that. So a lot of what's kind of being highlighted by Crowder's team here, they're using court documents that are, I think, public record right. to kind of show their side of the argument. Jared, if this NDA is as tight. As he that's as it seems to be confusing and, and Lauren would not be the first person to comment on this, right? If he's if the NDA is as tight as it's supposed to be, then how is he able to say what he's able to say? Now he didn't say louder with Crowder. He didn't say Steven Crowder. He said his former employer, who everyone immediately understood to be uh louder with Crowder. And there's definitely precedent before for people not necessarily referring to someone who ends up then suing them successfully for defamation. So you don't have to, you know. You don't have to name and shame in order to defame. Ah, what? What is up with the fact that law is just all about rhymes, right? If the jacket fits, you must not acquit. Name, shame, and fame, or name and you don't name and shame, but you can still defame. It's like just you know, it's Dr. Seuss. That's what it is. He he can't really respond with any of his receipts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, why don't why don't they show the NDA? Why don't they show yeah. like that? And by the way, the dog thing was another like, listen, I get everybody in America loves dogs. They're stupid about dogs. I, I understand that. But like Joe Lewis, it's apparently a big dog breed that could be dangerous to children. And I would think Jared not so subtly implies that. Uh, let's see. Not so subtly implies that Hillary wanted to keep kids away from Stephen entirely. Uh, worried about his abusiveness yeah we did see um we did see some messages to that effect now it didn't say abusiveness but it did say concern and the most obvious concern given that ring camera footage would be yeah abusiveness if i were like gonna if like if god forbid i had kids and i split with my fiance in the future and she had a, like a massive dog and i had small children i, I might want to bring that up that that's a risk how many times have we seen pit bulls like maul small children so it's like, oh, she's oh, you're gonna accept away... the pit mommies, Sean. Yeah, I know. Well, she's like, oh, she's gonna take there, there are like multiple like eggshells that he's walking on here, right? Dog, you know, but it's like, yeah. but if the dog is a danger to the kids and she cares about the kids, why why wouldn't she bring that up? Like there there was a lot of not addressing this the specific allegations. Like they didn't address that Talk Jared said the that they wanted ownership of his Twitter account, which by the way, right. Crowder was very offended. That the Daily Wire contract, which did not say that, supposedly said that, but Talk about the allegations that to Jared, they didn't address the uh, they didn't address the consistent legal bills or the blackballing him from you know the other company, but they threw out like the dog and like Hillary Crowder is greedy, oh, that's not and they said that Jared lied about being sued. I watched the fifteen minute video. Go find me the time code where he said he was already being sued. He didn't say that. He said that he's raising money to. Oh, his, okay. His, already accrued legal bills yeah already accrued legal bills it did sound like there was something happening like any in and indeed yeah there was like um some kind of discovery process going on like documents being requisite private communications um re being requisitioned and we saw a requisition deposed from him and we saw that with uh we saw some of those private records in what uh gerald not not gay gerald um, showed us uh, on Steven Crowder's uh, YouTube channel yesterday. And the suit going forward. But also, I do got to give full disclosure, I did donate to Jared's legal fund, specifically okay. $1 more than Ben. I mean, I think that maybe, is this the side that AJW is taking? Is AJW Team Hillary? It sounds like it. Shapiro did, because I thought that would be funny. Yeah, so... Oh, I mean, I $501, yeah. I, do, I will highlight that since... Jared came out with his video. He seems to be getting Jared? basically universal support. Oh, Jared. Uh, same with, you know, Hillary, 
Crowder's ex-wife. She's now kind of on social media where previously she was very, very behind the scenes. I've, I've met her before, but only because I was in Texas with Crowder's team at the time. Like she is not a public figure in any way in terms of like public opinion, th like not that this is definitive for anything, but it's just interesting to see that a lot of people. Oh my God. I hate these assholes around, around Jared and around Hillary. I haven't seen much of an outpouring of support. There are Steven, some, and we'll take a look at them. It's interesting that in Gerald's video, trying to defend, I guess, the Crowder's position, he didn't bring up the allegations of blackballing from the industry. He says, oh, well, we haven't spoken in six years, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say, like, no, we he can work and whatever. He never addressed that allegation, and it is, I mean, it's just fact that Jared hasn't been in media at all since his departure from Louder with Crowder, but right. now he is launching his own show. So like, thank you for the gift membership. Hot take Andy, if you're here, you just got weaseled. You just got weaseled. And if you are here uh, and you're not, you're able to not, you're able to de-lurk yourself, uh, post some weasels to thank Soul Life. Years and years and years after the fact. He, he also said like some things that are just patently absurd. Like he said, like, listen, sure. First of all, he owned up to everything that Jared said about the legal stuff. And he's like, but we haven't initiated litigation against Jared in weeks. It's like, but that's not a long Wait, time. Oh, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that in weeks. Oh my God. Chat, I thought he was saying that we didn't. That, that's why I was saying that these documents seem to dis seem to back up Jared, right? But no, he actually technically said we haven't initiated legal action against Jared in weeks, meaning that you know, I, maybe I just didn't catch that. Maybe he didn't want us to catch that. That's yeah. short. Like he said that in I've there. I've been weeks without a lawsuit. Also, by the way, everything in this is alleged, yeah. just in case yeah. anyone litigious is watching. That goes for me too. Yeah, but look, I don't like we don't know, but we have to gleam from all allegedly. He also, right. he also, he said this, and I, I can't believe that, like this came out of his mouth that he he's trying to keep the legal costs down for Jared. Like, you know, the oh, yeah. litigation that you put somebody through. Like, right. I, 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 that's not a real thing. And, and by the way, it's, he's the CEO of the business. So he has to advocate for the business. So a lot of people will like throw personal hate at him. I actually think that's totally unwarranted. He has to advocate this for his job. Business. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's not even good business strategy to keep litigation down. The whole point is you swarm them with litigation. So they shut up. Like that's the whole, that's the whole issue. Like if right. you make the cost of speaking out so high that they don't want to do it, then you're enforcing the NDA. So it doesn't even make a tactical business sense. But he said it because it makes it sound like they're nicer. They're being nicer about it than it seems like they actually are. Well, and something else with like regard to non-competes is that a lot of non-competes, even if you sign it, they're not actually enforceable. Like if you were to take it to court, if as an employer you say you can't work anywhere at all for two years, you would lose that. You can't just like contracts where you sign away your ability to work completely, they're not legally enforceable. But it seems like Jared is trying to say that this is exactly what Crowder's contract was, but you have the legal costs, like you said. So sometimes it might just be, and I think Jared kind of alludes to this, it's just cheaper to accept it, take it on the chin, find another job than like lose potentially tens of thousands, if not more, trying to take it to court. Um, so Jared was in his video. He didn't say he was being sued by Crowder. He is now currently being sued by Crowder. Um, I just don't want Steven Crowder anywhere near those kids. Jared Botello, also known as Jared Monroe, did say in, uh, yeah. in, in documents that they have. Uh, so now Crowder is suing Jared. Um, does that do you think that there is the potential for the fact that yeah it's just jared and hillary scorned by crowder they are malevolently trying to otherwise good guy Wait, did jared get gain. fired you see, that's the narrative or did crowder's he quit i mean i i think i think where they lose me on their narrative is the money issue because if they're mm -hmm. offering her more money than she would get in court it has to be some other term but like to be like 100% fair, we don't know what goes on inside a marriage. It is possible, like at least theoretically possible, that the wife in the scenario is trying to just damage the husband as much as possible. We've seen that, even if it doesn't make monetary sense, like 100%. Mm -hmm. But like when I'm looking at the evidence as presented, and they're not saying that they're just going after Crowder just to hurt Crowder. They're saying it's about the money when it seems like she's turning down money. And 
also like in the court filings from what i recall crowder's the one who wanted sole custody and she wanted joint custody so that's accurate so it's it's um it, it doesn't line up with the with the story so jared in the context of and i don't know the context i've never spoken to jared and i wouldn't have texted that because it just comes off so bad but like yes. in the context of crowder trying to get full custody like that makes a little that's a little softer of a message than if Hillary was trying to get full custody and Crowder was fighting for joint. Right. And I, I mean, to that quote, like you said, it sounds really bad. It, I, I don't know. Does Jared know, like if if someone is actually violent, I could see you saying, oh, I don't want that person around kids. That sounds terrifying. But we don't have any proof of that, I will say. But that's exactly why I think a lot of people now are like, all right, well, if neither party has anything to hide and Jared wants the NDA released and Crowder, they're all on the up and up, why not just release the NDA? Because Cernovich, whose background I think is law, he was saying, well, you guys could actually, you could just agree to lift. I also wonder, what are the re repro like, did he break the NDA? And if so, what are the repercussions going to be for that? Like, I don't know how this works, but... um. It, yeah, it's uh, like he wants to get out of his NDA, obviously, but um, a lot of people, including I think Lauren, uh, noted that if you're in an NDA, how are you able to say this stuff? How is that even? How is that even a thing? Crafting station needs a roof. Really? Okay. Um, it needs a roof. And we could see receipts. Uh, you know, this is all public. Ideally, I guess for the parties, it wouldn't be. But now that it is. It would potentially be a good way to clear clear your name. I mean, yeah, I, they, they, like it's hard to say I want transparency, but this guy's not allowed to talk. Like it's yeah. hard to say that we're doing this for our thirty employees as long as our thirty employees never say a word about this because we got them NDA'd up the you know what. Like so, it's right. it's, it's a weird, it's a bad arg, it's a bad position to argue from. But you know, my guess is if they're enforcing an NDA on him six years after he left. Like they're like they're they don't there's something that went down between the two they're falling out and they don't want that version out there whether it's the full true version or not because you know everybody has a side to a story right so right. you know but the problem is we can hear side A and we can't hear side B and I know side C somewhere in between is going to be the true version of the story but like we can't even hear part two of it so it's 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 I I, I don't trust the the uh the video it did not it did not change honestly it, it kind of affirmed some of the stuff that they were trying to like put down because they ignored things and there's like inconsistencies even in the evidence that they presented mm -hmm. well i think also relevant that i don't think we've mentioned yet is steven is in addition to now suing jared previously he already was suing his ex-wife and her family for i think a million potentially more in damages um, wait, and he's also or, wait, is like it, defamation. Is he also suing the Daily Wire? Yeah, whoever said that this guy is in a lot of litigation right now, you are correct. That's revenue, I think, kind of in connection with uh, the video, the ring video that was released where that, uh, the infamous one now. That's actually not Steven. That's this is what's weird about that. That's louder with Crowder is suing LWC uh, Hillary, some of her family members. And it's people are saying her best friend, but I'm going to say friend and attorney. So like that's that's the company suing them, which is really unusual. And it's not defamation. They're saying it's torturous, like interference, which is like interfering with their business. And right. I think it's from the video, but like that's very unusual for the business to sue somebody in the middle of a divorce. And if you already have the allegation of lawfare and like trying to overwhelm people in legal bills, you using the company to fi a file against her family and maybe her friend or and like maybe her best friend that's that's a little little uh red flag right well um pearl who is like you know we we're talking about like public opinion she has come out as like one of steven crowder's most vocal defendants um defenders sorry crowder case update hillary crowder is receiving twenty five thousand per month in child support steven crowder has been covering her legal fees thus far hillary reached out to steven's friends and co-workers in an attempt to uh just cuts off there jared is being sued because he was involving himself in a private divorce in which he was recruited by hillary crowder to assimilate negative pr assets to put pressure on steven in oh yeah in an attempt to extort him uh they're trying to put pressure on steven in the divorce this is messy this is like really messy <laughs> just to, to to be fair this is one of the things that uh, uh gerald actually explained pretty well in 
in the state of Texas, the estate has to pay for it. So because Hillary doesn't work, and she used to work, and she used to make more money than Crowder, but Crowder wanted her to be a stay-at-home mom, he's the only one in the estate that is making money for it. So yeah, like he has to pay for it. And as for the child support, I mean, you know, it's, what is it, 17% of your monthly income? I mean, that tells me Stephen Crowder's doing pretty well for himself. Um, and I believe, it, according to Gerald, it wasn't Hillary that was recruiting Gerald. Uh, uh, it wasn't Hillary that said that comment about their PR strategy. It was, that was uh, her father. Yeah, it was her father, which, you know, listen, like, yeah, dad's going to be protective. One isolated message. But to be fair, like, if I'm going up against a media personality, and I'm not a media personality. I, I'm. I gotta. I gotta prepare for that. You like, gotta think strategically. She hired an yeah. Basically. Board. Basically. So they gra they grabbed. You know the uh, correspondence. They they you know deposed um, Hillary and and not Gay Jared of the of their uh, personal correspondence, and then they're trying to make it. Look, oh, like oh, look at these people. They're they're strategizing. They're trying to fight against a much larger force. That's uh, that's somehow relatable to me, Chad, being accused of malfeasance over just trying to protect myself. That's uh, that's mood. That's mood, actually. Here to prepare for that. By the way, one of the other things that Gerald was upset about is that's the lawyer. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The woman too. that ruined Trevor uh, Bauer's career, which, by the way, that woman did ruin Trevor Bauer's career. But like, it's a celebrity attorney. Like she, like I want the best lawyer I could have. Mm -hmm. Like Crowder's lawyer is a lesbian. I'm not saying anything. I'm what? Saying. Well, something else that I wait. You know, what are you saying? I'm not saying anything. No, really. No, really. No, please tell me. And in the actual lawsuits or one of them, because there's there's a lot of legal documents that like, again, this is like a uh, this is a lot. Uh, he Crowder's team is trying to paint Hillary as like, well, you're the one who is trying to make this all public. They underscore the fact that she is the one who first filed for divorce and i think the case wasn't originally sealed um hillary for her part she says that she only filed for divorce because she found out that stephen had been talking to a divorce attorney it's just yeah this is a lot uh do you think that this is going to be affecting stephen's career i mean some might argue that the whole point of this all was to affect stephen's career what do you think? I mean, I've, I've, he's still getting like solid views. A lot of people would still yeah. be more than happy to have the views Stephen Crowder does. I think it's fair to say, though, that actually ever since the Daily Wire thing, his views have been lower. And I think public opinion has kind of been like, I'm a little wary of this guy. I, I would listen. I would hope I would have if I was if I was him, I would just try to like settle this like, you know, a, as quickly as possible. Maybe he did try that. Who knows? Um, I think, look, it can only damage him. Like if this stuff comes out like that is a true thing that they're bringing up um and like his attempts to like win in the court of public opinion have been you know it might fool like his core audience but it seems like it it kind of brings up more questions because she doesn't release stuff a bunch of people that are perceived to be on her side or on her side have ndas and it's just it's not a it's not a great look and like by the way this is one of the reasons why divorces are so unbelievably messy and nasty mm -hmm. especially when you have money so in that regard, I do feel bad for him just because, you know, person to person, I, I wouldn't want that to, you know, I wouldn't want my personal life regardless to be public. I feel bad for Hillary for the same reason. But, you know, like this is a situation that you put yourself in. Like if you have so many former employees that can't talk and the ones that can talk don't have nice things to say about you like that, that starts to form a pattern. I mean, number one on his list was Dave Landau and he didn't sign an NDA. And he hasn't stopped talking about like stuff related to Crowder. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Owen Benjamin, but he was another kind of. Yeah, we saw his uh, Crowders, and I don't tweets. think he signed an NDA either because he's also been speaking about similar behaviors on set, similar tactics. Uh, he, before Jared ever came out, was talking about the type of lawfare that Jared was being subjected to. So we have, I mean, Jared, we have Dave Landau, we have Owen Benjamin, Hillary Crowder now, and apparently like Sven Computer, he has not really said anything following his uh, abrupt departure from Crowder's show. Like that's why obviously I want to hear both perspective, but it's just, it seems like if like these at least 10 people who used to work with you or be involved in your personal life are now all conspiring against you. It's like, why have you made so many enemies in your personal life and former business? Like you run a YouTube show 
yeah. Th this is just, it's a, it's a lot. It's well, a lot. Why, why and do you I, hold secrets better? Here is my prediction, all right? There is a solid gold trove of content. Like, there is a vein, a thick, veiny, golden vein of content uh, in the story of what is Steven Crowder like in real life. That it's gonna rival some of the wildest stories you've heard about some of the most like ridiculous you know public figures in terms of you know like like the abuse thing of of, of Ellen right you're I mean it, it, there's something in there all right and if that gets cracked open I mean just just get ready for like five days of Crowder streams okay I'm just saying. The, the the national security and you love to see it when you're running a youtube show it's it's odd but i, you I love to say, see like, it again it couldn't have happened like, to a nicer guy part of what makes it difficult to believe the team crowder side is that hillary's income interesting so team hillary team hillary so far on the success of steven like mm -hmm. you know there's speculation that she's going to write a book which by the way that's the working title amazing he changed my mind or how Steven he changed so oh shots fired shots fired he changed my mind yeah i guess so damn uh that's not like a permanent source of income like she would be dependent on alimony from steven so like her damaging him financially like just it would like just to do it would make her insane especially when she's suing for joint custody not for sole custody so there's a lot of things that don't add up and like it's not just you know it's not just like i want to pick this side versus that side it's like you look at what the situation is you look at what you're presented thus far and you have to make a judgment mm -hmm. um grover rogers says come on this is a lot of time on crowder and his circle the daily wire candace owen split is way more interesting and topical crisis king so oh I no that's what they want to hear about that's what the fascists want to hear about did an entire like Four hours space. Like, I already did the Crisis King thing. I can't take any more Nazi shit today. Please let me talk about Steven Crowder. Let me talk about some drama for once. Oh my God. That's what she's that saying. Issue, that she's, is she's Twitter. all Nazi'd I'm out for today. Even Lawrence to it. Chen has her limits. I have another video on the, the core of the issue, Crisis King, also being edited. So I don't worry. I've also covered that quite extensively. Let's uh, catch up on some super chats. Charlie Rouse says, Lauren. Oh my God. Sean I am not going to sit here and watch them read super chats, chat. You know that you can support me in a bunch of different ways. And uh, I'm not mentioning, I, I, I'm, oh, this is the, I did it again. I did it again. Okay. So on Twitch, right? You might be getting hit by three minute ad breaks. You're like, what the fuck is that? What is going on? What's going on is that Qu Twitch requires me to run three minutes of ads an hour in order to keep you from having to watch like a really long ad break. When you first come in i don't want you to watch an ad break when you first come in but we do have to have them on the top of the hour that is unless you can be smart enough to get out of it how do you get out of it you ask i'm glad you asked you can get out of it for free or for five dollars for free with a uh prime sub if you have prime you get a free sub give it to the streamer of your choice if that happens to be me you will no longer see ads in my stream anymore right you can also pay for one for yourself i believe it's five dollars desktop six dollars on mobile or if you are very lucky and somebody in chat is feeling get generous, you might get gifted one. You know, don't beg for it. But the best, your best bet is to just be active in chat because that way, uh, you can you can humble flex that lack of a sub, and and maybe somebody will get you one. So that's a possibility too. Over the on the YouTube side, you can support me with uh super chat, super stickers, memberships. Uh, you can even gift memberships to uh one another, which is a very wholesome thing. Sort of passing on. Uh, you know, the ability to post weasels and the ability to get exclusive content to somebody else in chat. That is a very kind and uh, generous thing to do. And I appreciate it. And so do they, right? Um, you can also, yeah, use uh, uh, super chats, uh, super stickers, um, so that I don't get totally mogged on by the right wing creators that I am covering today. Um, is always a nice thing. Also great for my self-confidence. But, you know, even if you can't handle any of that, because, like, I get that times are tough and not everybody has the ability to contribute financially, you can contribute by hitting that like button. That like button is more powerful than you think. And also subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to me uh, already, what the fuck? What, what's even going on? What, explain yourself, right? Or just subscribe. And then you don't have to explain yourself because you will have already 
subscribe and you'll get a nice little communist invading radicals uh, stream alert for your trouble. Fiance catch baby fever, so he'll finally start wearing collared shirts and sensible shoes. Is that the determining factor to how a man dresses? It's just like as soon as you're a dad, you can't help it. The collared shirts, they just grow out of your existing yeah. shirts. I, I, I want to know how he knows what kind of shoes I wear. <laughs> who, who told him that? He's been following you all the events. He's looking at the photos. Spencer Harmon, Sono Banna in Nashville off of White Bridge Road. Best sushi in Nashville. Pricey but delicious. I will check it out. I really like all you can eat sushi places. Uh, us, like me, Liam, who my husband. Okay, they're literally sushi, talking about sushi. No, no, uh, chat. I'm not going to sit here. Sushi in Arizona, I think. Amphis. I'm not going to sit here and listen to her super chats. That's just, that's terrible. All right, let's go on to uh, Timcast. See what Timcast has to say about the situation. Uh, my guess is that they will have a different take, a different take than Lauren uh, Chen and actual Justice Warrior, who largely seem to be on Team Hillary. Let's check out Tim Apool now. The debate rages. On the debate rages the on how. Smelly as my beanie. Huh. I was in the wrong. Steven Crowder versus Jared Monroe versus his wife. It is a nasty legal proceeding. And there's a lot of... See, I told you, his beanie is nasty. ...information that's coming nasty out of arguments being made. So while I covered this story earlier today, now that many people have chimed in and given their opinions, I think it's worth addressing the opinions of many of these individuals. Oh, okay. This is meta. Because it's... A this is meta. I think we saw a little bit of this yesterday. I got the feeling that, uh, that he was on... Uh, a team Crowder, right? It's interesting. There is certainly a uh, pro Hillary Crowder. Wait, wait, side, wait. Okay. And even among conservatives. And okay, I gotta. I guess we should watch this one first. This must be the one he's alluding to. Try to watch him in order. I guess. Yesterday, a video from Jared Monroe, a former employee of Stephen Crowder's show. Sorry, chat. He, I got Crowder, all excited. Went public saying he was being legally abused because of a non-disparagement and non-disclosure agreement, and needed your help. So far, he's raised seventy-two thousand dollars with some very serious accusations against Stephen Crowder. Now, the latest news. Louder with Crowder has filed a lawsuit accusing Jared Monroe and Hillary Crowder of an extortion scheme. And uh, I got to say, it does not look good for Jared and Hillary Crowder. Notably, just. Oh, see back, where? Yep. Steve Team Crowder. Team that Crowder. She is in need of work and not doing so well financially. But according to court documents, Stephen Crowder has been ordered to pay her $25,000 per month for the last two years. So something doesn't seem to add up. Now, I don't know what Hillary Crowder, Stephen's ex-wife, uh, uh, how she would respond to those uh, reports. But I do think this is a very interesting story right now, considering, well, Stephen Crowder's trending. And uh, I've dealt with some legal issues uh, in the past. And, uh, you know, this this is big news in independent media. I'm not one to. Excuse me, sir. What did you just say? Did I hear him correctly, chat? Let's roll him back a little. Roll, roll him on back. Okay. Uh, I don't know say? what Hillary Crowder, Stephen's ex-wife, uh, uh, how she would respond to those uh, reports. But I do think this is a very interesting story right now, considering, well, Stephen Crowder's trending and uh, I've dealt with some legal issues uh, in the past. And, uh, you know, this this is big news in independent media. Oh, boy. I'm not one to pig typically oh, dive boy. into. Oh, boy. Big news. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Big news governor greg oh boy big news big news oh boy big news oh boy big news it's big news chat big to news these, uh, drama uh, uh, stories and typically i avoid them uh because i believe it's infinitely yeah he's he's not messy like like the rest of us um I'm terrified of listening to Pem Tool. Yeah. I wish she was less influential. Pig News. Yeah, Pig News. That's right. It's Dash Dabrowski. Don't you don't you all know Dash Dabrowski? Do you not follow Dash Dabrowski on TikTok? There was some kind of scandal where he was like getting paid by the DNC or something. I don't know. Uh but yeah, he's the Pig News guy. It's just like that. That's his reel. That's that's like if you go down his TikTok and just like 
through there, right? You'll hear, oh boy, oh boy, big news, big news. So every time somebody says big news, I think of Dash Dabrowski. Um, come on out of the trough, Tim Pool fanboys. The slop is a pouring. Big news. That's right. They're they're here for it. They're here for it. He says that he's not a messy bitch, chat. He says that he doesn't like drama. He says that he doesn't roll around in the mud. But really, what is Tim Pool other than the the world's biggest drama streamer? That's who he is. I mean, even if he doesn't realize it, we're all drama streamers now, Tim. We're all drama streamers. More, more important to talk about things like the bridge collapse or World War Three, and those are things I actually care about. But that being said, I can't deny it. I have a personal bias in this that uh, two things. First, my personal bias is I've dealt with legal issues in the past, and I I really want to understand how this stuff happens because I've had crazy stuff happen to me here at Timcast. I don't know who's right or who's wrong, Stephen Crowder or or Jared or Hillary Crowder. None of that matters. But uh, I feel I feel passionate. Yeah, he's about above it all. Like this, and I feel like I have insights which can help inform uh, uh, many people as to what may be going on. Though uh, far be it for me to know the truth, right? You've got warring, warring parties in this one. But I do think it's also fair to mention this is potentially shaping the landscape of independent media where we go from here. And Ladder with Crowder, of course, is one of the biggest shows on the Internet and uh, lends lends a lot to the stories like this, to the credibility of individuals who are challenging the establishment. And so for those reasons and primarily these assholes take themselves so fucking seriously. Um Mars Falcon says, uh, Poole is about to filter reality through his beanie and provide us with a staccato gibberish, with staccato gibberish, endless caveats, very little point. Points like basketballs he has. Oh, because the basketball doesn't have a point. Step on it. Step on up and get learned. Okay, so it's possible that Crowder used Jared and the NDA suit to force discovery so he can use it against his ex in the divorce? So you're saying to get information on his ex, he's deposing um, not gay Jared's, um, you know, personal communication. Is that, what, is that what I'm hearing? Tim has insights. That's right. <laughs> he thinks he's got insights. You might as well just pull that beanie all the way over your head, Tim. That's the kind of insights that you've got. My personal interest in the story, I give you this segment. Now, the other day we saw this fundraiser, GoFundMe. Monroe Family Legal Fund, free Jared Monroe, currently $72,857 raised. And, you know, I got to be honest, it really bums me out to see this. Not that Jared shouldn't be allowed to raise money, but that there are many people donating lots of money saying, I did not know Crowder was this bad. You don't know Crowder is bad. You don't know that Jared is bad. It's a legal dispute where everyone's got their perspective on it. And it may be that there are two individuals who are actually both good people who are at an impasse and both view themselves as morally right. This is typical. The issue is not that Jared raised money. It's that many people are throwing Crowder under the bus without actually knowing what's happening. And a lot of people it's are- It's cancel culture. I, I, I feel like a lot of people are jumping the gun and making assumptions about who they think is right on this one. But let's read the news from SCNR. Oh boy. Exclusive. Louder with Crowder files lawsuit accusing Jared Monroe and Hillary Crowder of Look extortion scheme. I just don't want Stephen Crowder anywhere near those kids. Jared Matello, also known as Jared Monroe, said also known as not gay Jared and Hillary Crowder. Uh, was it a text message or, or an email? Ladder with Crowder LLC, LWC, has filed a lawsuit against former employee Jared Matello, also known as Jared Monroe or not gay Jared, accusing him of engaging in an extortion scheme with Stephen Crowder's ex-wife, Hillary, and her family. Wait till, wait till you see some of the stuff that was published. Like apparently someone, I don't know if they threw a potato through his window or something. I, okay. Yes, that's the best interpretation I've heard so far. I thought he just got mailed a potato. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I love the idea that a potato got thrown through his window. So Matello's like, would that break up? Okay, so chat, you got to help me with physics here. Potato meets will a uh, window. Does the potato splatter or does the window shatter? I don't know. Raised, well, uh, as of the writing of this article, 66, but it's actually up to 72. <clears throat> Despite the seemingly sudden conflict between him and Crowder, Matello parted ways way back in August of 2018. At the time, he signed an agreement with the company that included a non-disparagement clause. Lotter with Crowder's lawsuit, which only names Matello, claims that this scheme began in 2022 when Stephen's ex-wife, Hillary Crowder, uh, Hillary Crowder, 
plotted to extort him for, quote, more money than Texas law would allow in their pending divorce proceedings. According to court filings obtained by SCNR, Stephen has been ordered to pay Hillary. Wait, so do you see the, the narrative? Like, so they talked a lot about like uh, the, the Hillary side of things, uh, trying to create a, me a media narrative, trying to use PR and stuff like this. Uh, also notice the narrative that Steven Crowder is trying to sell. It's the idea that this greedy bitch wants to take away your dog, wants to take away your hard-earned money. Like, right, this you can see who this is like appealing to. You can see, uh, you know, you can see what his strategy is here, right? How he's painting her in in terms of PR. dollars a month in support for the last two years. However, in a recent social media post seeking employment, she claims she can no longer afford to be a stay at home mother. Oh, this is interesting. Hillary Crowder posted looking for work that is remote with flexibility. I am open to anything, particularly work that allow me to be present at home with the twins. Thank you in advance to anyone that's willing to help me in this pursuit by sharing this post. I look forward to bringing my diligence, hard work, ethic, creativity and ability to think outside the box into whatever work environment I end up in. I know I may get ripped apart in the comments, given that I am a mom of two small children. Please be respectful and know that the plan that the plan I uh, the plan was for our children to have a stay at home mom. But unfortunately, I've been put in a position where that is no longer possible. Here's my LinkedIn, the emails to reach me. Now, did you uh, if she's getting twenty five thousand dollars a month, I mean, she can certainly afford to stay home. I don't know where she's living. A lot of the crowds, uh, uh, Crowder's lawyers allege that in August 2022, Hillary messaged relatives and a lawyer saying it was time this divorce went public and boasted that she held Stephen's reputation in her hands. See, the legal team. She's pushing it forward. She's dragging his name through the mud, right? This is this is what we're claimed. Hillary and her family were optimistic that making things public would create social media pressure and optics that would cause Louder with Crowder to force Crowder. Or to they thought they were over their heads in terms of being up against Steven Crowder's company, not just Steven Crowder. And they thought that maybe the only leverage that they had might be PR. I don't know. You tell me. Settle in the divorce proceedings. Defendants then implemented their full throated effort to engage in the negative media campaign to damage Louder with Crowder. Those are quotes from the suit, not from SCNR. In an email sent to family members on September 11th, 2022, Hillary's father, Tom Corzon, had detailed the type of team he wants to build to help his daughter in the divorce, specifically to destabilize his former son in law and oh. father of his grandchildren. They understand right wing media. God damn, this is so familiar. This is so familiar. Anyway, Chad, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm just let me say, let me like I've had a similar experience in terms of being accused of uh, trying to go after somebody's reputation or, or political career. Yeah, they are familiar with who Stephen is and and uh, who is who Stephen is and that world and the things that would destabilize him. So here's uh, uh, appears to be. Yeah. So he's reading off the same thing that we or, just no, read like a text, perhaps perhaps a text. It's a big it's a, ass I, I believe it's probably obtained through discovery. In legal proceedings. Yeah. My additional comments, the type of team I want, they understand right wing media. They're familiar with who Stephen is in that world and things that would destabilize him or will commit to investing the necessary time, thoughts, thoughtful consideration and judgment to become sufficiently familiar with that world in order that they become intellectually and emotionally invested in Hillary's circumstances. They are experts on narcissists and or will read and view selected articles to fully understand the narcissism and the impact on the spouse of a narcissist. They have so a in other interest. words, they'll be like, yes, I get that you're an empath and that Steven Crowder is the narcissist and he's really bad and we got to do everything we can uh, to make sure that he, anyway, anyway, this this part's embarrassing. Just in me and my case and compassion, uh, compassionate to my situation, they like my creative ideas and family involvement. They think outside the box and are welcome to the ideas of using the media, Brian Friedman, PR, etc. They also provide their own strategies and ideas that are outside the box. Fully understand and agree that Hillary's goals and expectations for the outcome of this divorce are reasonable and attainable, not necessarily according to Texas family law precedent, but by employing a media, Brian Friedman and PR strategy that will significantly threaten this public persona and brand. OK, um, I'm going to pause right here. I don't know that Stephen Crowder is an innocent guy. This is his side of legal documents. And certainly Jared Monroe has made accusations against him. However, that being said, 
Uh, what's the date on this? 2022 nine eleven. Here's the dad saying that effectively we want to get more out of this divorce than you would get in family law precedent. And by using a PR strategy to threaten and destabilize Steven Crowder, they could actually win. So I'm going to be honest. I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, bias that that or other, otherwise. The first thing I'll say about Jared Monroe's post is I said this yesterday. I've been involved in legal proceedings. You cannot do what he did. That's just it's plain. OK. Immediately, I'm like, mm, something doesn't seem right. If you're in, OK, here's 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 the challenge. I'll tell you this personal experience. I've been in several different legal proceeding, proceedings on the defense and the plaintiff sides of things. And uh, when you're involved in, in legal issues, and, and, and we know this is true with the likes of you know, James O'Keefe talks about this, you can't say anything. You can't. Carl Benjamin filed a law. Uh, with James O'Keefe. Okay, Hughes. so for anybody who doesn't know, James O'Keefe is the Project Veritas guy, one of the scummiest guys in uh, media. He did get eventually kicked out of uh, Project Veritas. He became too much of a liability, but he's, what he's known for is, you know, he's the reason that the community activist organization ACORN, which used to help poor people vote, it's no longer, I, I, don't, I don't, I think they shut down or they have, at the very least, they lost their funding. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, that was through a bullshit quote unquote investigation where James O'Keefe dressed up like a stereotypical pimp, like a ridiculous costume, as, as ridiculous as what um, Shmuley was wearing, right? Um, and went to an Acorn office with a, a woman who was dressed as a stereotypical, se a stereotypical sex worker. And they, they asked something like, you know, how do we get money? Or, you know, can we, I, I don't know. They were, they were, they were like asking, like, they were like, Hey, look, I'm a pimp and this is my hoe. And, uh, how do we, you know, like, right. They were trying to show that this uh, community activist organization would work with a, uh, a prostitute and a, and a pimp. Right. And, um, they, they didn't really know, like Acorn didn't really know what to do with them, but they, they doctored the tape and made it look like, you know, that they were, I don't know, like in league with them somehow to just paint them as a, a CD organization. And it worked, Chad. Obama actually, like, and the Democratic Congress, like, abandoned this major, like, community organizing um, group that, uh, that, that was, you know, had, had essentially helped him, helped him, um, you know, it helps uh, get Democratic voters and, and voters in general, like, to the poll, right? It's a, anyway, so it went down because of uh, James O'Keefe's lies, uh, you know, it wasn't really, uh, anything legal it was just like a, a pr perception that that acorn was a bad look and the democratic party and uh, particularly obama needed to distance themselves uh, from acorn right that was the first thing uh there was also a um ha the, an attempted i guess hack mary landrew a senator from uh, louisiana's uh phone system he actually uh he actually i think faced some legal consequences for that and there's been a few things, uh, you know, there was a, uh, an attempt to uh, seduce a journalist on a houseboat in order to embarrass her. I mean, just, just, he's a weird, fucked up guy. That's who James O'Keefe is. Anyway, uh, enough, uh, because enough derail. Because he uploaded a clip from our YouTube channel and he titled it something like the absolute awareness of liberals or something like this. She claimed it was infringement. She made video after video after oh, yeah. video. She so Ram's talking about uh, him using it, the money from Project Veritas to buy theater tickets. The other thing that James, yeah, so totally weird guy, right? The other passion of James O'Keefe's life, besides lying, is musical theater. And yeah, he did a performance of Oklahoma. And I mean, he doesn't have a bad voice. He's got a decent voice, right? But he used the some of that money to buy up tickets to like, you know, to kind of like, subsidize his theatrical career which you know really he's not yeah you know, i mean he's sounds okay but he's nothing special talking about it and everyone asked carl what's going on he's like i can't talk about it can't talk about it it's court carl won i believe he won uh, his his legal fees as well because it was fair use when you it, it it seems to me i typically find the people who are in the right are the ones who keep their mouths shut 
And the reason why is not that Stephen Crowder has kept his mouth shut completely. I'm not saying that. A lot of people have this belief that if you are honest and you're doing the right thing, you will win in the end. It's not always true. But there are people who are threatened that they're not going to win the legal battle. So they create public personal attacks. The fact that they decided to take a public strategy to harm Stephen Crowder and now what we're seeing with Jared Monroe, it seems to me like this. I don't know if you call it an extortion scheme, call it whatever you want. Perhaps it seems like they're outright saying in these messages. He doesn't want to say extortion scheme because that's a that's a legal claim and he can't back that up. You know, we probably wouldn't win based on Texas family law. But if we attack his his persona, lots of people will jump on board. It's going to damage him and cost him money. So he'll 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 bow out. That's what it seems like. Jared Monroe put up a legal fundraiser violating the NDA. He claims he needs help to get out of. So when I saw that, I said, no, he doesn't. He broke the NDA already. OK, so that so is a good point. Up. I don't know his circumstances. I'm not. There, there is. Anything. He did anything. Well, look, it doesn't necessarily add up like, I don't know. Maybe he broke his NDA, right? Maybe he's just a, a, that desperate. I, I don't know. But yeah, there's something else there, right? There, There's definitely something else there. Wrong. I don't know who's in the right or wrong. I'm saying, legally speaking, you can't go, I know I'm under an NDA, but my former employer, wink, wink, like you can't do that. That violates the NDA. And if he's willing to violate the NDA to raise $100,000, knowing a judge is going to drop the book on him, something doesn't make sense to me. Unless, I guess unless Stephen Crowder's right. And Jared Monroe knows that not only will he raise 100 grand, he's raised $72,000 already through GoFundMe of all places. But of all places, what do you he mean? does face in court, the end result, if it pulls money out of Crowder, gets him either an emotional satisfaction or a financial one. I don't know. All I can okay, say is. Okay, so he's. Tim is hypothesizing that Jared is just so, like, you know, emotionally invested, has so much, um, you know, hate or, or you know, for, for for Steven Crowder that he's willing to hurt himself uh, legally in order to hurt Crowder public perception wise, I guess it would be. I've been involved in legal battles and it is he's a veteran marriage. of legal when battles the judge screams in your face. How, you do dare not speak publicly about what's happening and the people who are attacking you know that they have nothing to lose. They can say literally anything they want. And with smiles on their faces, there will be a bunch of people who want to destroy you. And they try to use that. I've experienced something similar. When I see this happening to Crowder, I'm like, I got personal bias because I've experienced this. But I do think it's fair to say, I will point out my bias having experience with similar things. But I will also stress this again. Jeremy Monroe posted it as GoFundMe. He says, I need your help to stop the abuse. Tell me to protect my wife and children from, from financial ruin and fight back. How? By dissolving my unconstitutional NDA and non-disparagement. He already violated it. So any any money he gets in a legal battle, he's already on the hook for whatever penalties that may be. This lawsuit being filed by uh, a Crowder, I think, wh what's the what's the relief they're asking? Do we have the relief in here? I don't know what the relief is, but he's all like there. He's suing. Jared is being sued. This, this I, I don't get it. There is something. I, there's I, a missing I, I, piece. I don't understand. He's right about that. He's saying, help me fight this NDA as I make a 15 minute long video disparaging the person I'm claiming I'm not allowed to disparage. Whatever, whatever he's fighting, he's now already violated. The fight's over. The fight is done. The judge can now be like, you violated this. And so I suppose the argument is he takes the collateral damage, tries to challenge that as he's being uh, 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 reprimanded by the judge in this case for violating his NDA or whatever. And then he tries to get it dissolved after the fact. I don't know. There's more to it, by the way. I, I, I only read this one passage. This person, he continued, will fully understand and agree that Hillary's goals and expectations for the outcome of the divorce are reasonable and attainable, not necessarily according to Texas family law precedent, but by employing a media PR strategy, it will threaten his public persona. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. This leak, this, this message probably obtained through discovery. I don't know. Included in Crowder's lawsuit. And Crowder is not going to falsify court documents. This looks to be legitimate. They're, they're basically saying they're going to get more than they, they typically would get under law by, by attacking his company. And here is Jared Monroe uh, jumping on board. 
Friedman has a reputation for being very aggressive, particularly in the media, and securing multi-million dollar payouts for his clients. Hillary has retained Friedman as a public relations consultant. As of November 2023, she had already paid him between $20,000 and $25,000, though he does not appear to have any family law experience. Interesting. Then, of course, with the Asher Ali story and the, uh, the, the leaked video footage, we can see um, there's a video footage of Crowder and, uh, and, and Hillary arguing. When asked if the intent was to pursue a damaging PR strategy to create a, to, quote, create a circumstance of leverage that her attorney could use to show Stephen Crowder the path to make it all go away, Hillary claimed she could not speak to her father's messages. So in this deposition, the question was, and then number seven, developing damaging, OK, PR asset should be pursued that deliverable. It is up to us, not the legal team. In the right time, Mark will show Stephen Crowder the path to make it all go away. Do you see that? I do. OK, so was it the intent here to pursue the damaging PR strategy that your father previously referred to to create a circumstance of leverage that your attorney Mark could then use to show Stephen Crowder the path to make it all go away? Mr. Downing, objection to form. You can answer. I can't speak to my dad's text messages. Question by Mr. Wysocki. Well, you're you were part of this group, right? We can see up here. I can. I didn't write those words. Interesting. Hiller was asked to confirm if she wanted a team that would destabilize Stephen, and she said yes. So here's where it gets interesting. How does Jared get involved? Well, according to the lawsuit, Mattello met with Hillary in Atlanta, Georgia in February of 2023. It is unclear who initiated the meeting. Now, keep in mind, this is a year after, according to this lawsuit, Hillary's father said they wanted to put together this team that knew media and wanted to destroy Stephen Crowder. Here's a message. It's a dream team. Okay, so it does look like these are, these are texts, not emails. I think this is a scenario where several of us would be willing to attest to all of that. I don't know what they're referring to. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs me. Question. I'm not saying you have to like Stephen Crowder. By all means, please hate him. If that's your, your intent and that's what you've found. But I got to say, I feel a little... Um, I don't know, male bias forming. Oh my God, of course you do. You would, as a former employee. Of course you do. Interfere in the custody of a father and his kids. Now, for all we know, there's reason why people would be like, Crowder shouldn't be near his kids, I guess. Okay, so I but, don't know. I don't know. Is he missing the part where Crowder was asking for full custody too, right? Because like, you know, get between a guy and his kids. What about uh, what about a, a gal and her kids, right? That's not. Pending any legitimate evidence or claims or public presented anything. I think it is disgusting. And, uh, you know, I, I, I default instantly to the Stephen Crowder is the father. And of you should course not, you as a do. third party a year after they've initiated these 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 divorce. This no, divorce no. Thing. You know what he's saying? He's saying bros before hoes. That's what Tim Pool is saying right here. This is just bros before hoes. Hillary's father there should uh, contact Candace Owens. Candace Owens uh, will be more than happy to smear. Uh, he, no, so so Zara says Candace already moved on this. Uh, Zara, are you talking about that tweet? We I think we showed a tweet Interfere. last time of Candace Owens. But I find that despicable. I don't know if there's any. Uh, Here's another one to further defendants personal desire. So just so you know, Candace Owens has not been posting anything on her channel, at least that I could that I've seen um, since the uh, since getting fired by the Daily Wire. In fact, she might have to abandon that channel. Uh, she does have another channel with about a million subs, a lot less active than uh, than her, you know, Candace Owens live or whatever. But um, yeah, so uh, like if she's. If she's going to post video, I mean, it would have to be like on uh, on Twitter or something. Crowd away from his children. Defendant helped Hillary Kraft and further the extortion scheme by providing false and disparaging stories and closely held beliefs about Crowder and Louder with Crowder. Here's another message. Any scenario where Hillary and I team up is the end of him. It's his worst nightmare. Watch real fear enter his eyes when Tim asks this question. I don't know who Tim is. I don't know who Tim is either. Hillary also allegedly provided the disgruntled former employee with Stephen's unpublished home address. So these, I, I, I believe these these lawsuit fi uh, filings, they're all publicly. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You, you believe these lawsuit filings, right? So you were just telling us like, you know, we got to like innocent till proven guilty and, you know, don't be too quick to judge uh, Steve Crowder. But uh, definitely, definitely the other way around, we can uh, assume that the claims by Steven Crowder, LL, LWC, LLC's legal team, those those we can take to the bank. 
I know that Pearl Davis was bringing oh my up God. a lot of this stuff. And shout out to Fucking Pearl, Davis, Pearl. She said yesterday that she believes the ex-wife was orchestrating this. And she certainly got Steven Crowder's perspective perfectly before this was even public. The lawsuit states shortly after defendant received Crowder's personal address, Crowder received a threatening message. And here's a How potato. did Pearl become Where relevant says, again? Watch it. Effing watch it. The same line that Steven used in the leaked home security footage. So according to the lawsuit, uh, they say the uh, uh, more troublings, the threatening message was sent to the only remaining residents that had not been previously doxxed. Not only is the doxing incident a violation of their agreement, but threatened Crowder's personal home where Crowder's children reside part time. Mattello allegedly violated their NDA multiple times. So a lot of with Crowder had to cease and desist. And this is what Jared's saying. He's trying to stop me from talking to my friends. It seems that Jared is trying to communicate with uh, Stephen Crowder's ex-wife, who is currently in a legal battle with him. This is, in my opinion, improper. Oh my God, Tim, you're yapping too much. Yap, yap, yap. He, this guy does yap, doesn't he? We got a lot of other stuff to watch. Um, Zara just sent me this. This is from the Surfs. Stephen Crowder's ex-employee Jared Monroe is suing Stephen Crowder for abuse. Candace Owens adds uh, that she that she has information of spousal abuse as well. Crowder has previously made Jared dress in drag for his sketch. Yeah, he's made a lot of people. Um, in fact, I feel like Owen. What's the guy's name? Owen Benjamin posted something. Of like a sketch that they had to. Yeah, it was like a sketch where. Oh, no, maybe there wasn't drag in this one. OK, so there's uh, the, yeah, there's the Jared Monroe post. Oh, yeah, that's right. Candace was uh, she replied to the post. Wait till they find out what he's been doing to his wife. I never. So she she didn't say abuse, but yeah, I mean, like you want, we can guess that's what she's talking about. I never edited my opinion on Stephen Crowder because I knew that everything would eventually be revealed. And uh, this is like I said, she is the one of the smartest operators in this space. And that is not good. She is super far right. She is, you know, team Groyper, essentially. There's the, uh, the so this is a woman's march that Stephen Crowder and uh, his team uh, went to. And I think he kissed. Um, not gay Jared in this one. And after going to like said something like not gay Jared is a better kisser than I thought. There it is. There's the kiss. There's another kiss. OK. Oh, my God, look at this. OK, I'm not don't no no hate to, towards this person. All right. And like on Twitter, half the time you can't even tell for sure what a person's saying. But like, what exactly is going on with Candace? I thought she was a terrible person. Yeah, she is. They're both terrible people. Terrible people can hate each other. We need to get used to this concept. We need to get used to this concept. We got a we got a check mark in here. Oh, what about uh, dressing and drag in front of kids? Are you against that anyway? Um, so this uh. That's the response from Candace. Proper, especially with a non-disparagement and NDA. It seems like Jared is knowingly in violation of an agreement. I mean, perhaps he's saying he was pressured into doing it, but th there's a reason why these agreements exist. Oh and if you agree to them, then you need to resolve oh that boy. with the person, oh boy. not go to their ex-wife, say they Wrong shouldn't button. see their kids anymore, and do whatever else. I don't know. LWC subsequently filed a Rule 202 petition seeking Mattello's deposition and requested he produce documents relating to his alleged repeated violations. A Rule 202 petition is not a lawsuit, but it means to gather information before one is filed. The petition requested communications with Dave Landau, Hillary, Cla Hillary Crowder, Hillary's best friend, Brittany White Turner, several members of Hillary's family, oh, Daily yeah, good Wire point. founder Jeremy oh. Boring, Wrong employees button. and representatives of the Daily Wire, all current, current and former LWC employees and several others. Uh, let's read this uh, chat. Uh, Sarah says people on Twitter are incapable of seeing people as anything other than good on my team or in agreement about the sweet or bad. That's, you know, that's kind of what was going on with the white network, right? In terms of protecting like a, a real dangerous person like Poppy, like the uh, the white leaf network was doing, they were doing it because, you know, Poppy's on team uh, Vosh. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him, chat. Dash Dobrovsky's just like following me everywhere. As SCNR previously reported, on March 26, 2024, Mattello released a video claiming that he's being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer. He claimed that he was surprised to receive the cease and desist letter that required him to cease communications with his friends. I got to be honest, man, when uh, how about this? If on in, in February of 2023, you message someone saying you don't want a man to see his children and you have an ND, a non disparagement, it should not be a surprise to you that this man fighting to keep his children will do everything in his power to stop you from trying to take his children from him. That being said, everybody's arguing, my family, my kids, oh, geez. Free speech matters, and these kinds of NDAs, uh, NDAs right here stemming from this are unquestionably unconstitutional, Matello said. I will not live with the burden of this unconstitutional NDA over my head for the rest of my life, especially when this information I have can be used to aid other victims escape their own abusive situations, which is the context for which this former employer feels they caught me breaking my agreement. Well, I, I, I got to be honest. The documents filed by Crowder, not, not his opinion on them, but the, the, the texts, these are not falsified. Uh, uh, I, I, I do not believe. OK, so it looks like Crowder is seeking a million dollars. I don't see a scenario in which Crowder submits fabricated evidence to a court. That's absurd. That being said, this would mean that his ex-wife's father is trying to secure more money than the divorce would allow through Texas law and that a PR strategy would force Crowder to bend the knee. And Jared is assisting in that. Yet yeah, that's not free speech. That is, I guess, I wouldn't, I don't know, I guess extortion. I mean, there, there's lying about someone wanting to cause them harm or, or whatever it may be, or general disparagement when you have a non-disparagement, which could remove a man's children from his custody. And that's your expressed intent. Yeah, we're not talking about just free speech here. We're talking about a legal effort to take a man's children from him. Now, by all means, perhaps that's not a criminal here issue. Here we go. So Divorce dads it. unite. He should, it's, he should be free to say these things. Chud Logic, where are you at? you got to defend it's, Steven it's Crowder. Court. It's kind of wild. Destiny. It's actually going on. Letter with Crowder's lawsuit states the company cannot reasonably calculate. We're getting the, the band back together. Divorce dads. Time, but said it exceeds $1 million. Uh, I, legal fees, right? Matello asserted that he was not complying and plan to fight back, asking supporters to donate to help him with legal fees. The lawsuit notes his intent to not comply with court orders. I'll just say this. I don't know or care uh, who you want to support in this effort. Maybe Crowder's abusive. There's a lot of people don't like him. Something doesn't sit right Wait, with no. me seeing this message from. Maybe he's abusive and it doesn't have to do with the fact that Jared people don't like him. Crowder to see his kids. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs me. Metello message. I mean, I don't he's right, though. Anywhere near those kids. Like y'all donating to a man. Look, look, take a, look, here's the deal. You can. Like, you can say that he's doing this out of vengeance or something like that. That is pure speculation, right? He says he doesn't want Steve Crowder near those kids out of concern for the kids. He doesn't say I want. Crowder nowhere near those kids, even though he's totally a great dad and everything. But fuck him because because I don't like him because he put his penis on my ear or he put his balls on my forehead, whatever he did. Right. This isn't just because of the abuse that uh, that that, uh, you know, not gay Jared suffered at the hands of Steven Crowder necessarily. We, we just don't know that uh, Tim Pool is telling us to be cautious and to not read not to jump to conclusions, not to read intent into um, statements that we can't divine the intent from while doing the same thing on the other side. Because why? Uh, bros before hoes. That's why. Uh, the, the children away from Steven Crowder? I mean, come on. I know that Crowder and his ex-wife are having issues, but this guy's raising money, saying he wants to be able to speak freely when his intent a year ago, working with Crowder's ex-wife, is to take his children from him. There are certain circumstances where people should be should not have to have, have their kids. I don't know that Crowder falls into that category, but all I can say is there's nothing in the public that suggests Crowder should not have his children. What are you talking if about? Something secret and behind the scenes we don't know about. Then I say let the uh, expose. It's not expose secret. Any one of these parents, Hillary or Crowder, if there's wrongdoing. 
And if you've already violated your NDA, why aren't you just saying it? Or let the courts handle it. Right now, on the surface, what I'm seeing is here's a guy who's raising a hundred grand to engage in a practice where is ex expressed a hundred grand chat. Where have we heard that before? Goal is to take Crowder's children from him. I don't get it. I don't get it. Now, look, in, in Jared's video, he says, you know, Crowder's lawyers were, were doing this, trying to take his personal equipment from him, saying he couldn't work in media. Here's what it looks like. If I were to take both of these scenarios, Jared Monroe quits, Jared Mattello quits. Then you get Crowder's company being like, your equipment is ours. You can't work in media. Jared gets angry. How dare you try and claim I can't work in media? This is oh my God. The here are the receipts. Why am Let I me just write some fan fiction for you here. This legal battle. Jared then goes to uh, Hillary Crowder. We don't know who initiated the contact, but of course it appears according to this lawsuit, Hillary's dad wants this team of people who know and have the issues. dream team. So now you have a guy with a grudge against Crowder who makes contact I mean, with the this is like a very Trumpian argument, right? If somebody, if Trump does something fucked up to somebody, then he can come, then he can like Im impeach what they have to say based on the fact of like, oh no, this person has a very biased view of me. What, why does that person have a very biased view of you? Right. In this case, like, you know, Jared's got some good reasons to not, um, like Crowder based on just unbelievable shit that Crowder's done to him for years and years and years. Ex-wife of the guy he's he's feuding with. Now, now, let's just think about this for two seconds. Jared's saying, I had a legal battle with Crowder over business issues, and maybe Crowder's in the wrong on that one. But then he goes to Crowder's ex-wife and says, here's my friend. I don't want him to have his kids. Okay, my- Do you see what he's doing? He's using Crowder's abuse of Jared to impeach Jared confirming what kind of piece of shit Steven Crowder actually is. Personal view on this one is that Jared Monroe wild. has a personal grudge against Crowder for business reasons and made it personal because that's the attack factor. I could be totally wrong on all this. We're looking at a response from Crowder. We're looking at a lot of e-drama. But yo, this is wild. Let me say a few things as I wrap this up. I've been involved in lawsuits and typically the non-public parties know for a fact they can break the law. They can violate court orders and nothing will happen. They have nothing to lose. Here's a guy who's like, I can't work I, I, or whatever. So what's 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 my loss? Steven Crowder represents a brand and a business. And as they already stated, a PR attack would force Crowder to bend the knee in a legal dispute. That's disgusting. Now, Hillary says, I don't know anything about that. But let me just shout this out right now. No, what's disgusting is using your fucking legal team from your company against your wife and ex-employee. That's what's disgusting. I'm 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 sorry that I, I gotta looking at all this, I gotta lean in. What's in, disgusting in is signing people one. into NDAs again, saying, in the no, first place. Sure. But how are you gonna say I'm I'm in a position where I may it may not be possible for me to be a stay-at-home mother saying this two weeks ago when according to court records, Crowder is was ordered to pay twenty five thousand dollars a month. OK, maybe Crowder's not paying it. Fair point. That may be the situation. It may be that two weeks ago, Crowder said, pending this lawsuit, I'm not going to be paying. Fine. Then she may have been like, well, now I don't have any money coming in. I need a job. Fair point. Fair point. I don't think it's 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 fair just to immediately assert she had this money. But apparently they paid a lot of money to this PR guy. Interesting story. It's fascinating, really. But uh, I suppose I'll put it this way. While it may be e-drama and stuff, with many people, 1,500 people donating to Jared Monroe, up to $72,000, I think it's important to know what they're donating to. A man who wants to take Crowder's children from him. I, I, I may be biased. I mean, there's a lot more to it. Okay, so Temple, by your own logic, I'm going to say that you want to take the pittance, because in terms of legal, you know, paying for legal uh, services, like, 50k uh, or like even 100k right is is a pittance uh, uh, when you're up against a team like um like crowder's llc right that's a pittance right so you would take the little bit the little pittance that he has to pay uh to fight against this lawfare that he seems to be have, have been subjected to 
You would take that away from him. I'm sorry, but you're gonna use, you know, you wanna take this man's children from him. You wanna take this man's. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm such a bad driver. I'm such a bad driver. Yo, worst driver ever. Oh um, wait, oh yeah, they, that's right. We put the brakes, the brakes are good. The brakes are good. Okay, we made it safe. That was, uh, that was interesting. Chat, just like, um, just like Maya from Persona 2, I'm the best driver, okay? You, you have to... Oh, yeah, E. You get up and then you jump out. Yeah, wait, no, no, I forgot stuff. Um, jump in. really pissed me we off. won really pissed me off you got a problem with crowder you 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 are friends with his ex-wife all that stuff fine but to I inject yourself into a custody battle between two parents and to take the children from a dad i'm sorry i got a heavy bias there a heavy one and i say how dare you how dare you you got these people saying like i was a part of mug club i now i feel guilty i cut ties with the that pig steven crowder and i'm just thinking like Man, I don't know, dude, but like to send a message saying you don't want Crowder to see his children, that just that just lit a fire under me. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this I channel. Mean, yo, I always I'll say it. Then. But for a bunch of assholes that tell you that facts aren't uh, facts don't care about your feelings, these motherfuckers sure have some emotionally motivated reasoning, right? When it comes to shit like this. When it comes to shit, when it comes to misogyny, when it comes to racism, right? They definitely have some feelings, okay? And their facts don't care about those, uh, th those feelings that are they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, they, they don't care about facts and informing those opinions. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Okay, so like, this guy's got the, uh, the wherewithal to make just not, not just one Steven Crowder video in a day. On. The debate rages on, but two, two videos today. Uh, yeah, this is, this, like, Tim Pool just produces a lot of content, and I hope to, um, I hope to laugh at it one day. Like, all the content that he's pr produced, I, I feel like he could end up in a very Voshian, uh, situation. I could end up in a very, well, no, I probably don't have the same, uh, exposure as somebody like Tim Pool or somebody like Vosh, but, like, uh, anyway, he's got, you know, twice the content. He did, he's he's going back for a second bite of that algorithmic apple on Steven Crowder. It's making him some money, so. Who is in the right? Who is in the wrong? Here he goes Steven again. Crowder versus Jared Monroe versus his wife. It is a nasty legal proceeding. And there's a lot of interesting information that's coming out, a lot of arguments being made. So while I covered this story earlier today, now that many people have chimed in and given their opinions, I think it's worth addressing the opinions of many of these individuals and giving them their time. Because it's, it's interesting. There is certainly a uh, pro Hillary Crowder side and even among conservatives and people who uh, I would consider friends. We are arguing. And I think it's worth having this debate. In divorce court, one big question is, as Lauren Southern responded to me, should a man have to pay the legal fees of his wife who is suing him? It's an interesting question. We'll take a look at the opinions of some ind individuals who are uh, putting out their thoughts, and we'll take a look at the evidence, but we'll break down a little bit of where we've gotten so far. After publishing this story, so yeah, Lauren Southern. story about the lawsuit between uh, uh, Lauderth Crowder and former employee Jared Monroe, many people have chimed in, and Gerald Morgan of Lauderth Crowder has published an article, gone on uh, Lauderth Crowder, and said, here's what you don't know, running this source. I'll go through a bit of what he posted, and I believe I have it here, and uh, he does have this video. It's 32 minutes long, and we'll show you the argument made from Crowder. I'll then uh, respond to some of these posts, and this is the, the, the argument here is about father, father's rights, child support, the current legal system, and who's at fault. 
we, we have many people who are defending Hillary Crowder who are saying that Stephen Crowder is, is abusive. He has a rage problem and he, he has a he very heavy handed business practice of trying to restrict and go after other people. Jared Monroe clearly has motive to try and uh, cause harm. Again, do you see this? Do you see this? You're using the argument. And this is a very Trumpian thing. They do this with Trump all the time. You're using the argument that person A has has done something fucked up to person B to justify suspecting person B's story. It, it's it's so weird. It's such bizarre logic. But I, I don't think they even question logic. Anything that comes out from under the beanie is just like, According to Jared's own state, you got to trust the beanie. They are in a legal dispute for business reasons. I think that alone makes it inappropriate for Jared to contact Stephen Crowder's ex wife you're and work able to leverage what a piece of shit the person you're advocating for is as a reason to distrust the person that they fucked over. That is such bizarre chud logic right there. And yes, I am using it in its original sense, not in the with her in any capacity in a divorce. Other sense. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it outright. Disagree with me if you'd like. Comment below. But if Stephen Crowder is in a legal dispute with Jared over business issues with Jared, Jared says that's his his video. He he had issues pertaining to ownership of equipment that he that was his and Crowder's trying to take. That's his view. I don't I don't have the receipts. I don't know who's who's doing what. But this is the, this is the argument. He's in a legal dispute with Crowder. And then makes contact with Crowder's ex-wife. That is teaming up in two separate legal situations. And then you have the statement from Jared saying he doesn't want Crowder to see his kids. Now it looks like a personal vendetta for business reasons. And it's not just using teaming up divorce proceeding. It's teaming up with a femoid. Crowder. That's just how it appears. Tell me I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I'm it's not, when he's saying teaming up, that's what he's using, right? It's the bros before hoes, right? You're teaming up. How could you team up? With a woman against a fellow man. Why would why would he get involved in this? Maybe because this man is a piece of shit that has treated you both badly. And uh, or maybe just because I don't know, like Chad, let's it's like let's not get in let's not try let's not let's try not to get into the head of not gay Jared or anybody else in the Crowder team. I would rather stay out of their heads. Uh Steven uh or Temple thinks the beanie gives him the power to see from another person's perspective to see, like you can look in the beanie and divine people's uh, intentions but so of course I'm not buying it Gerald I'm not buying that it Hillary's father says he's trying to destabilize Steven Crowder Hillary and Jared met in Atlanta to discuss like their strategy and took this picture you can see honestly Chad I feel like Steven Crowder's already a little bit destabilized by it on his own he doesn't need he doesn't need any of that Uh, a text message saying, I have tickets to the aquarium. We'll pick you up. Sweet. It's thanks. There's, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that a cake or something? Something that says, how he changed my mind. And they have this photo together. Jared's text. Oh, I didn't it. even see that. I didn't even see that. But Chad, that's going to be the name of the book. So uh, Hillary uh, Crowder is writing a book about her experiences with uh, tw uh, with Stephen Crowder, you know, kind of like a, a twit longer in book form. It's going to be called How He Changed My Mind. So that's why it said that on the cake. Hillary and I team up as the end of him, Stephen, and it's his worst nightmare. Watch the real fear enter his eye when Tim asks the question. I don't know who Tim is. I don't know what it's referring to. Is it you? <laughs> Just kidding. Jared. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Jared to Hillary. I think there's a scenario where several of us would be willing to attest to all of that. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs it me. It grinds your gears, Why doesn't it? Jared getting involved in in the divorce proceedings because he knows Steven Crowder way too fucking well. I just I don't understand. He, Gerald says the whole scheme was to maximize profits that she couldn't get through the courts. The here, here's uh, some statements from Hillary Cr Crowder. The financial offer was serious and the business valuator, valuator, valuator and both of my attorneys agreed that the financial offer was good. Five million. Wow. Five million. But when it came to the children, his offer was I get all of all of June, some of July, two weeks in August and a week uh, in the fall up north. And while that's better than what I would get in court, I want more freedom than that. Wow. That's more than I would get in court. Crowder, 
This is crazy that people are like, if you look at these texts, I, I get it. This is Crowder's side. It certainly does look based on. No, this. Not only is it Crowder's side, right? But there's more context to that. There's more stuff that got found in discovery. There's more stuff on the, those phones, right? And you're not seeing those. You're getting the cherry picked version. You're getting the very best, you know, perspective that, that would lead you to side with Crowder. And I still think it's not really doing a, a great job on that been reasonable giving her more than she would get in court but she wants more so the women always want more divorce. don't they uh, Tom? Says. the law uh, from per hillary's father the longer the divorce proceedings go on the worse it is for stephen crowder remember the ring footage hillary deleted all other footage from that house and the lake residence which was expressly barred by the court with a quote saying mrs crowder then intentionally deleted all their other footage that depicted the marital home as well as all footage from their vacation like residents while under express orders from the court barring such actions. Again, in certain context, legally, you can say things that aren't true. And just because it's in a court document doesn't mean it's true. But true. there are certainly certain limits. You can't lie and say she deleted footage if she did not delete footage. You can. You, this, is your, this, is the, the, this is what the prosecution is claiming. All right. The defense will make claims too. The judge will adjudicate which claims or the jury or however this works, you know, they're going to they're going to adjudicate which claims uh, they think are more likely correct. That's how legal proceedings work. It's it's almost like a little bit like a bargain, you know, that one side is like, you know, this is my story. And then the other side is like, this is my story. Uh, I guess the only difference is you don't really meet in the middle necessarily. You're just, uh, the, you know, you're looking at uh, the. But but anyway, the overall fact pattern is going to be deduced from a combination of the defense's um, filings and the, and the prosecution's filings. So anyway, granted, that would just mean you are lying to the court. You can physically do it. So I don't know. I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying the likelihood is low that this is this is a falsehood. I got to tell you, man, I've been. In I, I got to tell you, I, I don't trust anything that uh, Tim Pool. I feel like uh, Tim Pool, like he says he's been through it. He's been through legal proceedings. He knows what's up. I, I don't know. I don't think he knows much of anything. I don't think there's a lot going on under that beanie, if I'm being completely honest with you. And it is surprising. There, there's no legal system in this country. I got to be honest. I've been in so many legal situations. I am just surprised where the judges are basically their whole thing is stop fighting and shut up and go home. We don't care who's right. We don't care about justice. We care about you both shutting up. If one side is screaming like a baby and the okay, other side if is you got to told to shut up by a judge, you really fucked up in court, right? Like you were out of order. It's, I don't I don't know. Like This guy does not understand like, right, getting told to shut the fuck up by a judge. Not sure if that's that, that's probably not a good sign for your case. I don't know. To be reasonable, the judge sides with the baby. I've been in way too many legal cases my whole life to have seen anything otherwise. This one's where it gets interesting. He says, you may have seen these public claims about hardships. Fact, Hillary is paid 25K a month by Stephen. Now, this is interesting because in this photo, the judge of the divorce proceedings ordered that LWC has to pay me $25,000 per month pursuant to a temporary order during the duration, duration of the divorce. Stephen tried to reduce that amount, but was unsuccessful. I can barely pay my divorce attorneys, let alone the attorneys in this litigation with that amount. To which I responded. I said, Crowder has to pay $25,000 in child support that his ex-wife uses to pay lawyers to go after him. He has to fund his own destruction. How effed is divorce? Oh, my God. Right. So Crowder is ordered by the divorce dads to give 25K a month. Again, you understand what the situation is, right? On the outside of their marriage, apparently Hillary was actually earning more money than Stephen Crowder is because they are a traditional couple trying to trying to live a trad lifestyle. Right. Um, she became a stay at home mom. She stopped uh, working. So it's a situation like, what would, what do you want? You want her not to have any legal representation because she's the mom? Like, you know what they want? They want to end no fault divorce. That's really what they want. They want to go back to the bad old days where a uh, divorce was very difficult and, and very rare. And often people stayed in marriages that they did not, um, that they were not happy in. His estranged wife, as they go for these, th through these proceedings, and she's spending that money Going to court against him. That money is supposed to be for the kids. harder, Tim. Lauren Southern chimes in. 
And Lauren, of course, is a friend. She says, yes. Yeah, of he's course. launched extraordinary lit litigious lawsuits against her and family that she cannot afford because she quit her job to be a stay-at-home mom. He also then went for full custody of the kids. I, I got to pause right there, Lauren. It looks like according to the documents they posted, he was going for, uh, uh, he was actually giving up more than she would have gotten in court otherwise. Okay, so I don't know where this comes from, like what she would have gotten in court otherwise. But what I read was that she was, he wanted her to get the kids for all of June, uh, part, most of July, and then um, a bit of August, right? She she had like so I don't I don't know did I read that wrong did I misunderstand it so I perhaps it would have been full custody but I don't know uh, uh, what her response to that was so I, I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong I'm saying highlighting that thankfully she was awarded some funds to prevent herself from becoming homeless and having her children taken if you understood how much she's spending on lawyers you'd know she's spending every cent of that defending herself should stay at home wives be able to have their children taken taken from them and left homeless if their husband is extremely wealthy. Well, the answer, that, that's a loaded question. I'll answer it. I'll finish. It. Or should they be given a sliver of the money their husband is spending on lawyers to defend themselves? The answer to that question is no. Uh, I would say the first question is framed, uh, I would argue, uh, outside of the merits of logic and morality. So does Lauren to Southern? Or to the market and law. Sorry. Is, is Lauren Southern team Hillary? Should stay at home wives be able to have their children taken from them and left homeless if their husband is wealthy. OK, well, that's a very, very broad question. Wow. Is, mom, wives should not have their children taken away. From Listen them. to this. Lauren Southern arguing with Tim Pool from Tim Pool with the divorced dad mindset. Lauren Southern with the trad wife mindset. And they they don't agree. They don't agree. This is the culture war. I mean, be left homeless. Just this is the real culture well. war. That is to say, if a wealthy man has millions of dollars and divorces his wife and then all of a sudden they go, well, your husband's wealthy. You no longer have a home. Well, no, obviously that shouldn't happen, but that's not what is happening, right? What's happening is that Stephen Crowder has money and she doesn't have money. There is no argument, period, where someone with no money should get free money from the person suing them to use to sue them back in any circumstance. You phenomenal piece of shit. Tim Pool, what the fuck? What the fuck? She has given up her career to live in some semblance of a trad lifestyle to be a stay-at-home mom because that's the fucking, you know, bullshit that they they propose to purport to believe in, right? That's that's what she did. She put herself in a vulnerable place and what he says is, "Oh, you did. You did that. You put yourself in a vulnerable place. You're the you're you're, you know, doing all this labor in terms of the kids and the home and everything like that." You're devoting the, yourself to that full time. So you, 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 then, therefore, when you, if you want to get divorced, well, um, I, you know, your family better have some money because you sure as fuck don't. And you're definitely not allowed to use like the, the, your, 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 your joint, you know, assets, right? You, you get cut off because it's so gross to him. It's so icky, uh, for him to think about a, uh, a man having the money that he earned at his, uh, job or, at, you know, in his business used against him in court. I'm sorry, fucking cry me a river temple. Cry me a fucking river. Circumstances. Let's try this. You work for a company and the company is it, it fires you. You say, I accuse company of wrongdoing. And the court goes, OK, company, you now have to pay him the money he needs to sue you. What? That's insane. What if Crowder was poor? It's he's the company and she's the employee. Is that how you see a traditional marriage? Is that how a red pill jackass like Tim Pool sees a, 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 the traditional, you know, marriage, the stay at home uh, mom, you know, kind of arrangement? Jesus Christ. It's a ridiculous argument that because Crowder has money, he is subject to having that money taken away from him. Well, if he was poor, he would just lose his kids. So that argument doesn't make sense. Let's invert it. Should a man lose his children because the wife found a new husband who can afford to sue him into oblivion and he can't fight back? Well, this is reality. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, a stay at home wife or otherwise. Circumstances in law, if you have cash and you can afford, afford the battle, you are more likely to win.
The idea that because crap and he, that's money. just the way things are. That's just the like look, these motherfuckers will think about abolishing no fault divorce, okay? They'll think about something like wild like that. But they they're no they're never they're, it's never gonna cross their mind that oh yeah, you actually that is unfair. Wait, wait, you mean so that like the rich person gets another tier of justice that's like way better? Uh, you know, if you have money and the other person doesn't have money, basically you win. That's okay. That's acceptable. You can't think about changing that. Oh, no, we can't. We can't because it. He should have to pay for her legal defense is too communist. That, that was my response. It's too communist. I don't know if I have my, my it's response. It's communist. Oh, for me to my God. Now Sky. you can certainly say, but it's not fair to the moms. Then don't get divorced. Then don't get divorced. Get Look at this motherfucker getting rid. That's. This is where he's going with it. Fault divorce. Divorce should only be in the most serious of circumstances, criminal actions. And she shouldn't be able to divorce him. What a monster. And then when it came for Crowder and Hillary with these problems, the judge should have said, you will go to counseling and therapy. You will not fight in front of your children. You are married. And this is a choice you made. And neither of you will be allowed to to break that. Now, should should there be evidence that Crowder's physically abusing or Hillary's physically abusing anybody or whatever? Now you're talking about criminal actions, threats and abuse. I don't I don't know the circumstances of Crowder and his wife, but it does not. It does not fly, in my opinion, that Stephen Crowder's wife can say it's not working. I want a divorce. Crowder says, OK, fine, we're getting a divorce. And then she goes, and you have to pay for it. Well, well, you're separating from him. But she chose to be a stay at home mom. She gave up her career for Steven Crowder. Welcome to the real world. That's it. I'm not playing this because she wanted to be a mom and wanted to get a, 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 a get a divorce. Crowder has to fund litigation against him. It's just, wild, chat. That like, am I reading this correctly? Like Lauren Southern is the reasonable one in this in this conversation. All right, so I think we got a sense of what Tim Pool is about. He's just, you know, doubling down on it. Like, I mean, he's just he's making it more explicit. I'm glad I watched this, right? I, I was like, do we have to watch two uh, Tim Pool videos? Yeah, I guess we do. Um, who else did I promise to you? The quartering, the quartering. So we got one that Steve uh, Crowder hit with brutal allegations, brutal allegations. Crowder exposed, and then we got um. Crowder responds. Okay. Oh God, we got two quartering videos. Let's see if we, do you think we can get through this chat? What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here. It's the quartering. quartering and there have been it's many the quartering. filling up my mentions All right, this let morning me... as apparently a new video was released from a former employee of Steven Crowder that is making some- Lawrence had a divorce with kids. The serious claims about- uh, some sin asks a very good question. Has Tim pool ever had a partner? You know, I was just thinking about that while uh, we were listening to him that he's kind of like an overgrown, like fail son frat boy. Like that's the vibe that I get from Tim pool. And I don't think he has, I think there we, if, am I correct in that he hasn't had a relationship or, or am I mistaking that one? Uh, yeah, no, we do not know that he was abusive. There's a recording, Tim, there's a recording. Um, my God. Rich people own the poor's ergo no divorce Tim Tim Pool. Fundamental misunderstanding of how legal fees are handled in lawsuits. Legal retribution they've faced in trying. Yeah, yeah, ex show. exactly. MS Stream. He's really just saying the quiet part out loud here. Many I mean, they've been going at this hey, for a while now, bro. It's no fault divorce thing. Daily Wire. Then you've got to cover Crowder too, which I would say that I always have, and that I just try to be upfront. And say that I am friendly with Steven Crowder. It's not like we go out to dinner all the time or anything, but um, he's never done anything wrong to me. He's never, you know, I've never experienced any bad behavior or anything like that. Um, there was at uh, one time this summer, a video came out where he was having an argument with his wife. It did not look great. It was for an him, argument. But at the time, and I stand by this, understanding the context that, it was a perfectly selected clip of a fight between two married people whom were going through them and released at the perfect time while they're going through a divorce. Okay. I'm not saying that automatically disproves anything, 
But I'm saying if you've ever argued with your significant other, perhaps you've also... So yeah, the claim that his legal team made was that, um, so there's a ring camera, right? A, you know, Amazon ring uh, camera, and uh, it took footage ostensibly of, of a lot of things, right? Um, according to the prosecution, prosecution, is it the prosecution? No, according to Steven Crowder's legal team, um, there is, uh, like, like it was, she destroyed, she destroyed all the rest of the, um, footage of that. And she had had a court order to not do that. So, I mean, if that's true, she's going to be punished in the, in the proceedings. That's going to, that's going to, you know, that's going to be a big deal, but I'm not, this is just, this is just, you know, Steven Crowder sides, uh, legal claims. And some things you regret, perhaps releasing that video to the internet in the middle of a divorce proceedings might lead me to believe that there's additional context or perhaps there was a motivation for releasing that. But I want to be fair. And, uh, you know, um, I I'll try to dig deeper into this, by the way, when I'm live later, I'm live at 530 Eastern, both on YouTube and Rumble. Both channels will be linked in the description. It's a separate live stream channel on YouTube. Um, please do tune in. To yeah, that. yeah, exactly. Pajamas. Um, Perfectly normal married couple argument where one party keeps insisting the other should risk poisoning themselves. Yeah, yeah, and should stay at home so that he can uh, he can go to the gym and work out if he wants. Right. Uh, and we'll talk. We'll watch his whole video then, and we'll talk about it. But I want to kind of get the broad strokes right now. So of course, because I didn't jump on the hate train for Crowder, everyone thought you know everyone's like trying to call me out or something. I feel like if you go back and watch the videos. When I covered the situation, it's not like I ignored it. Did I provide benefit of the doubt because I actually know him? Yes. And I will do that again here, but I will be honest with you about it. Okay. His former employee. <laughs> this is another thing that I like. It, it, this is what's weird about like him. Like his screen is just so trashy. Like it's, it's almost as bad as Adam and Sitch's, right? That like, I mean, I've tried to, I, I try to keep my, you know, space kind of, you know, well, I mean, it's a little bit messy today, right? It's a little, we've got Steven Crowder's head, but other than that, it's pretty clean. It's pretty good. And look at this trash over here. Look at this fucking garbage. I don't know. This is part of why I don't watch it. He's not even, a, is he a streamer? Does he do live stream? Does he do, is it the Vosh model where he does live streams and he t cuts off, you know, um, segments and, and puts them out? I, I don't know. Right. Cause like, if you're not, there's no excuse to have an ugly ass streamer set up, right? Unless you yourself are an ugly ass streamer. Boy, you may know him such as, as myself. Not gay Jared is making some claims that, um, you know, are not great. You see anomaly between not allowing your former co-host to work in media after leaving is diabolical and beyond the pale. So Jared Monroe, you might again know him as not gay Jared, releases a video that essentially is 15 minutes of saying very little other than Steven Crowder has applied significant legal pressure to him um, such so much so that it has essentially ruined his life. That is the claim he's made. He made several other claims in this video as well. Now I want to point out for people looking for the T I have reached out to Steven Crowder. I haven't heard back yet, but I'm pretty sure he's live right while I'm recording this. I'm pretty I've sure quartering doesn't have the tea. Monroe asking for any specifics. That was four or five hours ago. I've not heard back to this point. I have reached out to several other people that DM me this video and claim to have been affected by Steven Crowder and his legal tactics, and they have not provided me a single solitary specific. That said, that does not disprove anything. I just want to point out that I have dug... I'm sure Stephen will watch this later. I asked around. I asked for any specifics. Can you give me a specific of this, that, and the other thing? And I haven't gotten any. However, that could be perhaps because of various NDAs. Now, in this video, Jared Monroe claims that he has been barred from working in media and that he continually gets these various lawsuits sent to him by Steven Crowder's lawyer, and it has essentially destroyed his ability to work. And such, he has launched a GoFundMe. And of course, you see many people in the replies yelling at me, saying that I'm supposed to automatically sign with this. It's frustrating. I feel like I've been doing this for a very long time. You know that I'm going to cover things fairly, as fairly as I possibly can. But when I have a bias, I'm going to let you know ahead of time.
Now, what's going on? What I find more interesting is the timing of all of this, right? Everything that's going on with the Daily Wire, everything that's going on here with Jared. Now, Mediaite is covering this and saying, ex Steven Crowder staffer claims he's being legally abused after quitting toxic and abusive show. He made several claims in the video, including one that he had to go on medication because he was so stressed out or there was so much stuff going on with the show. I have no reason to refute that. I have no reason to disprove that. A former employee of right-wing pundit Stephen Crowder accused him of fostering a toxic and abusive work environment. Now, to also be clear, you know, I know there will be people that are pissed. They'll say, well, why didn't you just immediately? Look, there were several pieces that came out back in May that detailed some pretty bad behavior, stuff that maybe bros would do to each other at a sleepover when they're teenagers, like teabagging somebody or something like that. Um, look, look, there's there's what? there there's that kind of stuff. And maybe if like somebody acts a little bit mature on the job, like as an adult, maybe it's not the end of the world. OK, well, we're talking about us. We're talking about a pattern of this and we're talking about doing it in a way that doesn't seem like, you know, this is two bros having fun with each other. It sounds like there's one person with power who's living what Jared said was a secret life. And another person without power, power who's essentially being used as the, the outlet. The unconsenting outlet of this sexual expression, if you will, right? It do, like I don't buy that this is just like a bros being bros thing. Like there's too much of a pattern of this. Uh, Steven Crowder was getting something out of forcing his employees, which he could because he had power over them, to, you know, just be like like I said, the the recipients of, of this shit, right? That sh they shouldn't have to deal with. This isn't just two bros at a fucking basketball game. Like I don't know. Like I don't. The, the, showing like one of the claims was that uh jared had been in a meeting with steven crowder and was sitting in a way where steven could see his uh genitalia and uh you know steven's trying to concentrate he's trying to answer questions he's trying to you know talk and, and you know seeing like right so you know like i mean that like that's one thing right but what we've got here is you know yeah it does sound like you know like what um it does it does sound like um Catalina Gearbox, do you have the is the meme posted in stream suggestions? It's easier for me to get to, from Discord if you if you have it in Discord. But thank you for the 50 bits. But not for the workplace. You know, X Steffers claim that he would regularly berate them and threaten to fire people on the company's Discord channel. He even went after his own father, Darren Crowder, per one source who claimed Crowder would yell at his dad in front of employees when Darren was working as his son's booker. Um, you know, again, I'm not shocked, but it was pathetic what he did to Hillary. A former employee said regarding of the Crowder video yelling at his pregnant wife. That might not be the Steven you see on a show, but that was the real Steven. So there, you know, were numerous people who have come out to now complain and say that Steven was essentially a monster to work for. I don't work for him, so I can't speak to that. But what I can say is that's a lot of people saying the same thing. Either it's a coordinated effort or some aspect of it is true. Oh, um, shit. Catalina. Here, I'm Jared Monroe. I didn't even see what this was. I thought you were just posting like a random old uh, video game. Uh, so, so like, look, this is a meme, actually. I didn't even see. OK, I just thought this was like I thought you were literally showing me like a video game that the like that the angry video game nerd would post or would play. Right. In fact, I think this is something I've seen AVG. No, it's not just that. It's Steven Crowder. Dr. Jekyll and bisexual Mr. Hyde. I get it. That is a good meme. That is a good meme. I'm sorry. I didn't understand uh, what was going on with this at first, but. This is what uh, Steven Crowder is, is dealing with, apparently. Bisexual Mr. Hyde always rearing his head, always trying to come out. Former employee, my f a former employer, he's nice not meme. saying louder with Crowder, probably for legal reasons, it's obviously Darren, uh, it's obviously Steven Crowder, everyone knows that. 
um, and trying to intimidate me into silence. The fees to protect my family are now in the tens of thousands and rising every day. I need your help to stop this. Help me protect my wife and children from financial ruin and fight back. How? By dissolving an unconstitutional NDA, non-disparagement agreement. I didn't choose this battle, but if I do not fight... I always thought an NDA stood for non-disclosure. Oh, non-disclosure. Oh, it's a non-disclosure slash non-disparagement. Okay. Now I understand, maybe. Back, I fear I'll be subjected to legal harassment uh, in perpetuity. Simply do not have the funds to fight this battle on your own. So I need your help. Every donation, no matter how small, will greatly help me and my family. Now, I don't have any problem with him fundraising for this because I have to, I have to presume he's telling the truth. You know, at least, you know, I, I give everyone that same. I've never worked for Steven Crowder, so I can't say, oh my God, I've worked for him and he's totally fine. But what I can say is that several of his current employees have come out to basically say like, that he's totally know. fine. You know, so was it um, the tool man? What is that guy? Tim the tool man? Um, oh, wait, tool Tim man? Pool? Tim Pool? Tim Tool? I forget. What did I do? I pressed the wrong button. What? No! It turned into Pearl! Welcome to the Just. Oh my God, what did I do, chat? And welcome to Pearl Daily. Where I cover Look, we probably have to change anyway. Craziness. We probably have to change anyway. We probably, I probably need to move on from the quartering. I am so sorry I'm late today, guys. I went to volleyball practice today, and I was just, I just had a lot of stuff to do. But I I'm glad you had guys, fun. Always. And I ask when we start the show, please, please like the video. That is the most important message. Okay, now she really means when she says like the video, she means like my video. She also wants to remind you that there are many different ways that you can support me across the platforms that I am on, whether you're on Twitch and, uh, you know, it's it's things like um, subs and uh, bits and, uh, and, and donations and stuff like that, or whether it's on YouTube and we're talking about things like super chats and super stickers and uh, memberships and uh, gift memberships. Yeah, gifting a membership is a great idea because it not only helps out me, it helps out somebody else in chat to receive weasels on the YouTube ch side or to avoid the top of the hour ad break if you're on the uh, on the Twitch side. So, um, you know, and I appreciate all the uh, support uh, that I'm given. Uh, also, uh, Patreon and the link is uh, down in the description uh, for the, the, the Patreon thing. Um, I just... Uh, uh, and also um, likes. Likes are an underrated form of supporting the stream. And I know a lot of people are not in a situation where they can financially contribute. Um, don't worry. You can still contribute through liking the stream. And it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. It's invaluable and irreplaceable. And uh, you are the algorithm. So uh, hit that like button. And make sure to uh, subscribe if you have not already. Uses to push out these streams. I always forget also, to do those like calls to action or, support or whatever. The Please, please, please send a cash app to Pearly Things or a Venmo to just no, under not... Pearly Things. We are currently demonetized, so every single donation helps. This is like a live stream, isn't it? Did I did I get something wrong here? But no, no, I don't. I this case, this case, this might be the hill I die on. This might be the hill I die in. Okay, so today, guys, today, there is a video going viral on X. And this video going viral on X is from a former employee of Crowder. And move the mic closer. Can they not hear me? Can they not hear me? One in the chat. Can you hear me? They can hear me, right? Okay. So this was from a former employee of Crowder. Okay, Steven Crowder. For those of you that don't know, I covered the Steven Crowder case back um, about a year ago now when Candace Owens had a... I'm sorry, guys. I came from practice. I got to start over. I got to start over. So I covered the Steven Crowder case about a year ago. And I'm gonna show you the original video that went viral. Now, mind you, I'd like to reiterate, I am a fan of Candace Owens. You will never catch me not saying that I'm a fan of Candace Owens. I grew up watching Candace, Candace Owens. Candace fan. I love Candace, like I, I think she's great. But 
I don't think Candace understands the depth that women will go to to destroy a man's life. Oh my God. I was also shocked and appalled. I love Candace Owens, but I gotta be honest with you, she's a little bit too much of a feminist for me. A little too much of a feminist. <laughs> Not I feeling that. This all out, guys. So if you don't know, this is just pearly things. Some people call her the female Andrew Tate. It's not because she's like a mega Stacy to Andrew Tate's mega Chad. It's not that she's like, you know, a stand up kind of gal. It's because she is agreeing with all the fucking misogynist stuff that somebody like Andrew Tate would say. She is here to be picked. She is here to, uh, you know, get th that audience of, of guys that think that women should be doormats and being like doormat here. Please wipe your feet on me. And while you're at it, wipe your ass on me, too, because that's all I'm here for is to be used by you, my superior uh, males. I was, I was shocked. She's kind of pathetic, in other words. I couldn't believe it. Candace is not in the red pill about this, as far she's as- She's not I, red pill. You, you, you. I know she's covered some of the Me Too stuff, but I, I don't think she knows the depth of family court yet. Now I'd like to it's family it court. There we go. Like, network. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding where I say that this is one of the radicalizing forces on the right. Uh, the animated forces in the body politic of the right wing of these days. This I'm day, not, this day and age, every, you know, I I know more than I would say 95 percent of people, but I'm not. A legal I'm pretty expert, pilled, but I'm not. Advice, I could be more pilled. I just I do interviews. I report the you know, I report the news. So about a year ago now. Candace Owens had this video, and can you show my screen? And in this video, you know, uh, and I might have to go over so much today that I'm just going to show the, the clip. In, in this video, when Stephen got, Stephen Crowder, one of the biggest conservative political commentators, got divorced, Candace covered it. And Stephen came out and he said that he was getting a divorce and his wife divorced him. Now, maybe Candace knows her, I don't know. Somehow she got private ring footage from years ago, okay? So somehow Candace got her hands on private ring footage. I, being an outsider, I don't know, came to the conclusion that someone from the ex-wife's camp leaked this footage, okay? I don't know how else now, to I mean, me, this I think the story was it was somebody in her family, actually. It was suspicious. And it's suspicious because I, I've done so many cases or interviewed men where a woman leaks a piece of footage completely out of context, okay? That's Just what so women do. That's how women are. Pearl's letting you know. This is a thing that the deceptive femoid uh, will do if left to her own devices and not prom uh, properly dominated by... Uh, by her man completely they don't show anything leading up to it they don't they don't say what exactly happened and so when i saw this footage and I, i've shown it before i i just knew this wasn't the full story i knew it 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 for a couple reasons and i'm gonna hose be lying go through them with you okay oh shoot sorry guys yeah yeah the wifely things I forgot about this. I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I have steaks. Wood pellets. My grill. I know it's not a What about his grill? But I'll go do it. What about his gym? How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect Yeah. I'm the man. 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 No, no. I'm the man. No, you're not taking the bus. You're not taking the car. You are not. Then I will ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, is that right? It's not even that, Stephen. Get an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. D feeling some constraints? Mm -hmm. Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, so to me, this just seems like a couple's fight. This is normal. This is normal. Maybe none of you guys have been in a fight. Maybe. Oh, my God. Pearl, I'm worried about you now. I'm worried about you. It seems like a fight. No, this is not nor This is not okay. Become somebody who's worthy of a wife is not fucking okay. I just thought it was weird the way she had her belly out. It, it just looked like Why she is was it... acting to me. She's acting. Oh, my God. Again. There we go. Because...
I don't know. I was be lying, but I guess. I know that it is not uncommon for women to plan divorces years ahead of time. To hold on to any bad argument from year. I mean, blessing, didn't it blow she your mind? She is so disgusting, divorce? chat. She is so disgusting. Do you see what she's doing? This is who Pearl is. This is who not pearly things is. Or not pearly, just pearly things. Sorry, not, I'm no comment chick. She's not, she's just pearly. I'm thinking of not gay Jared. I'm thinking of a not, not gay Gerald. And I'm thinking of no comment chick. And I'm trying to put that on her. But no, she's just, she's not no pearly things. She's just pearly things. Documentary. Oh, yeah. When when you're like who's like I I mean I interviewed one chick who one chick. or not chick one guy who the woman said that he she was great like she said that he graped her you catch my drift yes I catch your drift so it's suspicious to me when you know chicks are. It, it just looked suspicious, okay? Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my Okay, friend. so they're arguing about a car or whatever. I can't, go, I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary. And, and again, as a conservative, the first question we should be asking is, ma'am, why aren't you listening to your husband? Because Yo! marriage, biblical marriage is submitting. Yo! To and I'm sorry, guys, not that's why she the sees it like this to walk the dogs. That's not abuse. You might not like the tone, but it's just it's not abuse. And I, I'm cautioning women. We being really told to deal with medication that you are not supposed to handle while you're on pregnant uh, or while you're pregnant. That's that's they got to stop throwing this abuse term around. That's feminism. That's feminism. feminism. Don't do feminism. Change the definition of Don't abuse. do a they feminism. Financial abuse. They added in coercive control. They added in all these terms. All this don't stuff. Like a abuse is one side. And you're just going to be happy if you're like head Again, empty. These are strong claims, all right? Think of how boxing you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. <laughs> I, I, do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you going to the back on back? They're yeah. arguing about a car. <laughs> the only way out of it is discipline and respect. It's the only, only way out of it is discipline. Oh my way. god. Because you can't have any discipline and respect. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I mean, imagine like. <laughs> Imagine making millions of dollars and busting your ass to become one of the biggest names in conservatism and your wife can't even listen to you about driving a car. I, I'm crazy. What the fuck? Crazy. Yo! Oh my god, chat, we are seeing this right in front of our eyes. Like, Pearl sees this and instead of seeing, like, abuse, she sees a woman failing to listen to your husband. None of this would be a problem if you listen to your husband. But you you get what she's saying by listen to your husband? Like, this is like, listen to your husband in the way that your parents tell you to listen to your parents as a kid. Listen doesn't just mean listen. Listen means obey. That's what she's saying. This would, none of this would be a problem if you obeyed your husband, right? You know, you're living a trad traditional you know like lifestyle you know you're a stay-at-home mom but you're not trad enough for pearl because you're not just becoming you're not you're not making yourself a goddamn welcome mat for your husband to wipe off the dog shit from his shoes right the, the, you listen to your husband you just do you don't have to worry about anything you just do what they say and you would you wouldn't get in trouble you're getting in trouble and this is because you're doing a horrible job listening to your husband which is your duty as a wife become somebody who is worthy of a wife she wow wow we are looking into the dark hole that is trad culture right now and it's not pretty it is not pretty at all that that is scary shit right there that is so scary You, know, you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse, okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, you're a beast. Okay, and so this is what women do. I've seen, I've seen this. 
That's what women do. They'll, they'll start talking to the lawyers, okay? And the lawyers get in their head and, and tell them, oh, that's abuse, that's abuse. So, again, they change the definition of abuse. They add in financial abuse, emotional abuse, all these things that aren't, aren't real abuse. And then the woman goes and tries to get evidence of it. I don't know. Again, this is my take, okay? Watch it. Watch it. So now that, that's what he's saying. He's, he's clued into what's going on. See, he's warning her. He's he's you being so such a good abuse. husband. It's not actual abuse. It's not abuse if he says to watch it or else I will abuse her. And then if the abuse happens because he said watch it, it's on her. It's her fault. Oh my god. And he's right, guys. Not uh, ladies. Like we we have to get the No, Pearl. The guy telling you no. How is how does this content it's exist? It's just not. Okay? How is, does this content even exist? Watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need to do with And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit. Okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And if now, I know on, on paper. Now, I know that sounds bad, but. Men receive. If the husband love, says. So, it, he's saying here, again, I, I just want you to listen to me. That's what he's communicating. Women and men don't receive love in the same way, okay? Because when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D. You just be disciplined about it. You go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right. Right in the past. Become someone. Here we go. Day in and day out, worthy of a wife. Worth no matter the Become wife. someone who's worthy of a wife. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get text I mean, you. I'll get you to you. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. What a nightmare. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm not engaged. So I'm he wants her to put on gloves. You're not committed to anything. He wants You're her to put on anything. gloves so that she can handle you this just said I love you. I'm committed to that. dog I'm medication. That you're not supposed to handle as a pregnant person for his dog for joe lewis his dog okay no there's no hitting so therefore oh my god oh my god that's that's her that's her like look that's her bar but i don't even know if that's her bar right i don't even i'm not even sure if like were there to be some hitting she wouldn't say that was justified because you are supposed to listen to your husband you didn't listen to your husband therefore of course you get hit I don't know. Pearl is fucked up. Beyond even what I already knew she was, right? Which is pretty fucked up. She's Pearl. Pearl is fucked up. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dog? Okay, so again, Stephen gets angry and angry and by his own admission screams, I'll F you up with his pregnant wife, Hillary, who then flees the home. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up something else. Now, this on paper, this on paper looks bad. This would but look again, bad, I always, but... I, I, I have oh, seen too many of these cases. God, the same no. way, you know, Candace had this, um, no. I, okay, she was so fly. See, I love Candace, that's why I hate, I hate having to go through this, but I just, I got to. Um, you gotta I defend Steven, her, I, you gotta I defend Steven. Oh my gosh, and I was so nervous, guys. It was 3,000 people watching. I have never done public speaking. I wanted to die. I was like, I mean, I know I've done it with you guys. Okay, I know I have, but it's different. This is a camera. I'm not seeing you guys, you know. Anyways, so, so, okay. You know, I later, and I, I covered this in a different stream, but we've been cutting so much stuff um, because we're trying to, get remod you know we just cleared pretty much the whole channel so okay then i get this what is she saying i don't understand don't share the screen because it's just audio okay that is the context of that saying if you go to your friend and you know that it was not meant that way I and you marry it with me. stephen threatened to hit me dr I walker I'll be exactly. threatened to hit me. you want to play those so they're arguing, and I know, I know this, I've just seen it too many times. They're arguing about her going around saying that he's abusive. 
And that's what they're arguing about. And he's saying, you know, I didn't mean it that way. Right? Because we all know conversations have context. If I come in and I say blessing, <laughs> blessing, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fight you. Damn, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's blessing? You know, there's a completely, just my tone. I, I don't know who blessing is. Completely, are you scared I'm actually going to fight you, blessing? Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some girls say that in a way to be flirted. You know, some girls say that in a way to actually fight. <laughs> All conversations have context, right? So, this this is what I'm, what I'm trying to explain, okay? Those games? You want, okay, you want to play those games? I'll play those games. I will fuck you up. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Hillary, I didn't mean it that way. So now he's saying, he's saying. He means, like, rhetorically. I play those games. I will. You up. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, he was talking about in the battlefield of ideas. Yeah, he was going to fuck up his wife in the battlefield of facts and reason. Okay, I didn't mean it that way. So now, no, just I, I want to. I want you guys to understand how I'm processing this. He thing. put the mask back on. Oh, okay. I'm he put the mask back on. How could you fault him when he put the mask? Look, I know the mask slipped. I know what was underneath it was totally ugly, but he put the mask back on. Wasn't that nice of him? Isn't he a good husband for giving her a chance to listen to him, for giving her the warnings that she's in danger of getting fucked up if she proceeds along the course that she's... All she has to do is listen to her husband and she'll be fine. God damn it, Pearl. Thinking, huh? So I have a girl that that's already lying. I mean, she's leaking out of context stuff to the press. And it, because, sorry, how else did you get that? You know, private ring, that doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, oh, all of my footage is going to be on my website, guys. We're working on it. That's, Way too exactly, far. that's exactly what happened. I will actually say that what Steven is saying right now is exactly what happened, okay? That terrified me. And that is way too far. And it can't happen. But it's way too far to claim that, I, that I've ever been violent, and threatened you, violence. And you, and you, you know what? I, this is, let me tell you something I appreciate. And this is gaslighting. Because again, guys, if he wanted to be violent, he, he's a 6'2". Yo, she'd be in the wall. That's what she's saying. If he wanted to be violent, she'd be fucking embedded in the wall. Holy shit. This is gaslighting. Okay, this is, this is, this is ultimate gaslighting. This is terrible. I am being I gaslit. That the way that he just communicated what happened to you is exactly what happened. Okay? I was louder. No, you were louder. Now, what you need to understand was you are a big man. You have never said anything like that to me before, okay? You've never said anything like that to me before. And it truly scared me, okay? And I need you to understand that it truly, really scared me. I understand. Can you imagine living in this gaslighting? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is why I believe in divorce now. <laughs> no, I'm just, okay. But you guys, so, so this is... This is how I'm processing this, maybe, you know. You're not processing it. That's the problem. All right. So then, you know, we're going to go through what I have noticed that women tend to do in divorce proceedings. Okay. Yeah. They said he could have handled it differently, but not abuse. Okay. So I, I'm going through this. Okay. So, you know. The first way that I process information personally is I look for patterns and trends. Now, the same way the FBI profiles serial killers. Now, please do not say that I'm saying these are the same thing. They're not the same thing, but it's the same process, right? Many times, FBI profilers can figure out who a serial killer is because, you know, they have things in common. I have found this with divorce cases. Many from completely different backgrounds, from completely different 
parts of the world go through the same thing. So what women tend to do in divorce proceedings is they not only try to legally rob the man and steal his children. You know, most men, men take L's a lot better than women. So what most men tend to do is, you know, they'll take the L, they'll move on with their life. They just want to be left alone. But whim for women, it's not enough. That is not enough. They not only, they not only rob him legally and, you know, also, also they rob him legally and steal his children. They go a step further and ruin his reputation across the town. Many times the man has no idea. He thinks that he's in a happy relationship and unbeknownst to him, many times she tells her friends that he is an abuser and does not give the full context like we just saw. So mind you, this woman has probably been going around to all of the Daily Wire people for years. And so here's the theory about the Daily Wire. Now imagine, I'm going to pretend, you know, I'm going to pretend Blessing was the victim here. Sorry, Blessing. <laughs> so, so the victim, now, me, meaning the man, Blessing brings in his his little his his girl to work, right? You know, and I say, "Oh, hi, hi, how's it going?" And for a couple years, she's like, "Oh, it's good." Plays victim, and then says, "Yeah, he just he hit me yesterday," and I say, "Or he he put hands on me yesterday," and I say, "Oh, he put hands on you." Well, that's not good. Well, well Chat, but don't say anything. This is too much. And so, you know, then I would start to look at Blessing like, what's going on with you, Blessing? <laughs> you seem pretty chill, but maybe this is he's way too much. Know. Please don't did me. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. But you guys get the idea. So my guess is this woman's been going around telling these stories for years. That's my guess. Um. All right, you know, chat. And I'll give you an example. And, and Look, so we're almost at six hours now. Sorry to cut uh, it off so quickly. Uh, yeah, I have like one more minute uh, until it's officially six hours. And who knows? Like, I might get in trouble with uh, for that Sneeko song I played at the early, uh, the beginning of the song, uh, the stream. So uh, thanks for being here. Much appreciation. I may be back tomorrow. Do you all want to hear more about the Poppy and Xena? One in chat if you want to hear more about Poppy and Xena, because there's more to cover. There's actually a lot more to cover. And uh, I mean, like it is another example of what kind of bullshit the Vosh network allows. So if people want that, I'm going to do an extra day of streaming uh, this week. Yeah, one. So people are saying, yes, I got to go. I got to go. Much appreciation, much love. I will see you either tomorrow or Saturday. Look for me.